Aurora, Bad News Crank Group. We've also got In God's Reign, of course, the Indian qualified team and the Gorada Winsu Voyage Squad. One of five frags required to close this one down. Getting that bomb down. Rotation's coming through from mid. It just doesn't seem like it's happening. Seven lines up two, gets one of them. Kennedy's there for the closer. And that is series done and dusted for Aurora. It's time to get into our second match. Got their AKs out, back sight, spray, very awkward on the AK. Cure to the back sight, slow creep in for one good shot. 13 to one, God's reign. What is up ladies and gentlemen? This is day two and the action is just about to begin. Relatively protected, it's the one on three now for Addict. One on one, AHP for the last individual! This is God's Reign take on Aurora. Catches those two fantastic headshots. Four versus two situation. Kenzie is caught for one. Barbie is left alone. And there it is, the 13 0. Perfect second map for Aurora. Ladies and gentlemen, aap sabhi ka swagat hai Kai Sports Grand Slam 2024 ke aakhri din mein. Passive crossfire is held. Play for contact. Kill found onto one. Transfer in the second. Now joins 16 seconds to the clock. Smokes in the way. Spray back on the first. Adjustments right there. And God's rain make it happen for 13 to 9. Gets Rev and fired up, and it's all left to R2B2. The Sky Esports Grand Slam. That honor goes to Aurora. Number Bengaluru.
So I think the main uh, idea behind the Sky Sports Masters wasn't to create a big event per se, but it was to create a sustainable ecosystem for the esports organizations of India. I've seen the esports scene in India evolve. Uh, the first gig that I did was 10 years back probably, and that was very small. So this um, is a testament to the fact that esports is growing and especially for the Counter-Strike to come back uh, and how. It was beautiful to be a part of the whole scene and the stage was a beauty to say the least. Jeez, two crore, huh? Yeah, it's a, it's probably the biggest prize pool for Indian Counter Strike ever. It, biggest in South Asia as well. I think this land it being so big, it being the biggest in Indian history, is going to be really, really important for the growth of the scene. Because you know, you come here as a young kid, maybe you come here as a PUBG Mobile fan, or you come here as a fan of a creator, and you see a huge stage with your fellow countrymen up there and they're performing in front of these people and they're competing for such a large prize pool. I think that can only inspire these young kids. I think if we are just making new fans with events like this and just inspiring the younger generation, I think it'll only do good for Indian Counter-Strike and you'll see these young kids come up and aim for glory. Everybody in Sky Esports is brothers to each other. We say Shiva bro, Vijay bro, Nyana bro, everybody's being called like this and I think that's like a family we've built. So it started with Shiva bro ideating it, then he bought in Muktu bro, Nyana bro, Vijay bro. All these people started making, uh, joining hands together and built Sky Esports to where we are here. Uh, you have to give props to Shiva for uh, getting such a fabulous team together. Uh, Vijay on the back end was phenomenal. Hari was fantastic. Everybody knows uh, Lucifer. So it really shows the kind of work culture there is in Sky Esports. They bring their boys up and they give them the pedestal uh, to perform. I don't play so many land games compared to CSGO. This land is my life's first and big event land. I hope this is my starting career. I have given everything to this team. I stick to it. We made a team. Uh, we dominated three years out of like 10 events. We used to win nine events. So that's how my journey has been till now. But when the league announced uh, Sky Sports, uh, a major, I think, an upset happened with me. 2021, I got a proper team in which we pros. Like we made a team at that time, I was a defaulter, which is playing in Marcos. I was Gills, Marcos, Killswitch, which is playing in my team, and Fired Up, which is playing in Revenant. And this team has dominated for two years in India full dominate in India. But in the team, there are some issues outside the game issues that we had to break the team. And Fired Up left the team. We took four people and took Revan because Revan's skill is Fired Up's level. So we took Revan and we also played two or three tournaments and we also won. After that, there was the ISF qualifier, which we called international. So this year, it was in Romania. So we took that qualifier and we took the final. So we got to win from which team? Fired Up's team. Which was our team. So we took the final and then we had a lot of sad things. So when we came to the final, we were very sad that we couldn't perform the players. And in that rage, we broke the team. So I stuck the core of Killswitch and Revan and we stuck the team with Defaulter and Miggles. We said that we didn't play with you. I am the ideal for the team. I formed the team. I made them who they are. Then after getting kicked without even letting me know, then I took a break of 10 days. Then I thought, should I pursue it as a career or not? Out of nowhere, how can I form a team? Because I've been playing with these guys for last three years. There was a chemistry, there was a bonding, friendship, everything just shattered away. There was McGill's, he's a big bro to me. We have been playing constantly for last 15 years. So I told McGill's we'll make a team and we'll definitely do something. Then I contacted Org, started texting them. Uh, are you interested in Sky Sports? Are you making a team? Finally, I got a team, Marcos Gaming. Uh, they told me that you and McGill's come in, you make a team. Then we started scouting players, but it was very difficult. To be honest, uh, they are not really good teams uh, or players right now, to be honest, because the three teams that are strong were Seven Seas, Godrin and Revenant. Their roster was already formed. 
we picked rider zero cool and ghost we have never played against them we have never played with him fir bhi humne gamble liya humne team form kiya humne start khelna kiya fir jaise ek tag ka lane aaya hum bombay pahunche tag ka lane aaya humne seven six ko without practice hara diya aur hum event jeet gaye to usme confidence aa gaya ki nahi ye team leke kuch kar sakte when you playing any any sport for that matter not just counter strike you can't give too much respect to your, to your opponent you can respect the fact that they are a good team you can respect the fact that maybe they have a couple of really good players and all of that but you can't walk into a game you can't enter the server thinking you're going to give them that respect you're going to play safe you need to just kind of take the bull by the horns so to speak and just take the fight to them and that's exactly what crazy gamer and uh, god's rain did yesterday मेरा ना हमेशा से एक पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू रहा है कि मैं ना कोई भी ओपोनेंट के सामने खेलूँ मतलब मैं अगर सी एस गो के बेस्ट टीम के सामने भी खेल लूँ ना तो मैं उनको त्रैश समझ के खेलूंगा मेरा एक मानना है कि जब तुमको लगता है ना कि ओपोनेंट अच्छा है और जब तुम रिस्पेक्ट देके खेलते हो तो तुम तुम्हारा नेचुरल गेम खेल ही नहीं सकते जब तुम डर के खेलते हो ना तो तुम खेल ही नहीं सकते गेम तो मेरे को लेजिट फर्क नहीं पड़ता तो मेरे को लगता है कि बाकी टीम्स को तो हम लोग से डरना ही चाहिए क्योंकि हम लोग के पास कुछ खोने के लिए है ही नहीं हम लोग वैसा गेम खेलते you know sounding a little cocky some people might say but i love it the, the, those are fighting words honestly i want to see more from him today i want him to walk into the grand final to just be like yeah it's going to be an easy to all again bangalore are you ready an indoor stadium in bangalore packed after pandemic and the worldwide audience looking at the action happening here sabse best thing kya hai ki inhone land finals bangalore mein rakha hai aur bangalore hum log ka home ground hai kyunki gods and bangalore ki team hai number bangalore it doesn't matter i like to shut the crowd ruk ja bhai ruk ja It started in internet cafes across the country in India, and obviously transferring into the online tournament, being played in a league format. You've got to play round robin. It's a very, very grueling task to have to play that many games, secure enough points to get here, and now it's all coming down to one best of three. Wow! SK Wow has fired up a dub, four kills. What a start! It is Velociraptor in his hands. And he needs to rattle the kills quickly. Here's the first run out of ammo. Defuse is coming through the knife pole. He's got it. He got him off the defuse, and there's no time. There's no time for this. The knife has done it. Surely at this point, oh, just about, just about the last tick on the defuse, and Revan secures it. He would need another one here from behind the cage. It won't be the position of choice. A crazy game, a right for the fire, right for the flames. And God's rain, just like that, flipping back in their favor. Bomb getting planted as well, and this is everything for Revenant Esports. Three v four, the retake is on, and it's looking good for Gump. Nice shot, but he's alone. He's alone in this world, and he is the only remaining player. And it will be God's rain taking the first map of the grand final. They are one away from calling themselves champions. Here comes this mid fight. A couple of bits, which is. Being the point for Revenant, and it's Gump that comes out on the double, but the kills are coming back. It's an absolute massacre inside of A Main, and the bomb has actually made it out alive. It's going to get that cool render of timing perfect for Finn. Well done. Playing with the food right now, and unable to do nothing about this. Time is ticking on, and so will his chances of winning this round. Give a slither of a chance right at the end, but not anymore. Finn closes it, and God's Rain will win the pistol on the second map of the grand final. Somewhat of a conversation around who is the better opper, who is that player in India that everybody should be getting behind and getting excited about. Is it fired up on his AWP or is it Revan? And I think throughout today it has been Revan that has yep. come out on top of that. And the shot from Revan, the hero for them steps up, the hometown hero delivering. It's tournament point for God's way. They have to make something magical work with Hill Switch. He's gonna find the first crazy with the second of 4v3. Oh, crazy start, but it's all coming to a close. Months of Counter Strike, starting with the WAN cafes, into the online stage. 
God's Way and a team that no one predicted to win this competition. But the local heroes in Bangalore are just moments away from lifting the biggest trophy in Indian Counter-Strike history. And for Revan, you will confirm his status as one of India's best. God's Way and have done it! Presenting to you officially your champions of Sky Sports Masters 2023. Give it up for God's Rain! So, hello guys, this is the trophy that we have done easily. We have to do some work. We have to kill a dog. We have to kill a dog. Welcome to Sky Esports, a leading gaming and esports organization known worldwide for our top-notch tournament IPs and engaging gaming content. With over 100 tournaments and 10 successful esports IPs under our belt, Sky Esports has amassed over 700 million views and 3 billion impressions. But we are more than just numbers. Sky Esports is proud to foster the largest community and content distribution network boasting over 2 million community members and a portfolio of 200 plus gaming creators. But that's not all. Sky Esports is dedicated to bringing the best gaming experiences to audiences worldwide. We ventured into reintroducing Counter-Strike to the Indian Esports scene and have successfully hosted global teams. Our flagship tournaments including Sky Esports Grand Slam, Sky Esports Championship and Sky Esports Masters have become synonymous with excellence in Counter-Strike. In 2023, Sky Esports made history by hosting India's largest CS LAN event, Sky Esports Masters. And now, in 2024, we have taken it global with closed EU qualifiers. Sky Esports is more than just a name. It's a commitment to elevate the gaming and esports industry to new heights. In the wake of Sky Sports Masters Ignition last year, the tournament has gone global in 2024. It all commenced with the intense EU close qualifiers, where 12 teams poured their souls into securing a spot in the main event through a grueling single elimination bracket. Fnatic, Forze, Betpoom and VP Prodigy made it to the top 4. In the finals, it was Forze vs Betpoom, where Forze emerged victorious with an insane comeback match with a score of 3-2 triumphing over Betboom to clinch both teams' qualification. Following suit were the Indian Open and Closed Qualifiers, where amidst fierce competition, God's Rain, True Rippers, Grey Fox and Marcos Gaming stood out as the top four contenders. In a riveting final showdown, God's Rain orchestrated a stunning comeback sweeping True Rippers with a mesmerizing scoreline of 3-2 to secure their berth in the main event. In the main event, five invited teams Ents, Aurora, OG, Big and Ninjas in Pyjamas were slated to compete. Joining this prestigious lineup are the victors of the EU closed qualifiers, Fose and Betpoom, and the triumphant squad from the Indian qualifiers, God's Reign. This diverse array of talent promises an exhilarating competition as they strive for supremacy on the gaming stage. The Sky Esports Masters 2024 is set to unfold from April 8th to April 14th with a staggering prize pool of 350,000 US dollars up for grabs and the winner gets a direct invite to Sky Esports Championship 2024. Who will emerge as the ultimate champion? Tune into Sky Esports on YouTube and Twitch to find out. Respect from one expect respect from one expect respect. From
from one expect respect from one expect respect from one expect respect from one expect respect respect from one expect respect from one expect respect from one expect respect I would love to play against Indian guys, Nib and Big. Yeah, that, that's the three teams I would like to play against. It would be fun to play against them. And who are screaming? Because uh, when you win a BO5 with three insane comebacks, it feels uh, it feels like some magic. It feels like not uh, reality. So. I think the biggest opponent is ourselves, and uh, if we play our game good, we're gonna win this tournament. We work hard, we give our best, and um, we will succeed with it, I'm pretty sure. And just for everyone who's supporting us, our fan club, um, you're the best guys, and yeah. Go big! I think what's uh, like what is good for us is that uh, we have a new lineup, a lot uh, more like new energy. Everyone is hyped. Everyone really wants to play, wants to win, and uh, I mean there is no. You can't anti draft us, right? From uh, the other team's perspective, so they don't know what they're gonna face. They don't know how we're gonna play, and uh, I mean that uh, that could be good for us. I'm usually not think about that at all because, like, uh, it not don't really matter how you played in the past. It's really matter how you you will play in the future. Yeah, like things are looking great and it's just a matter of time before we get into the groove and start winning things, so yeah. Like these tournament matters a lot. Even if we get, get to play like four to six maps, it will be very helpful for us because we are we are playing against a tier one team and that's never happened in India before. So yeah, it's crucial for us to gain that experience and so we can, you know, use that in the next two to three years and uh, become like them.
Welcome to the final day here at the Sky Esports Masters, powered by AMD. My name is Dinko, joined by Blair for the final time. We've got a best of five today, Blair, and just inside of this 1x bet mug. What is, what is the feeling coming into the final day? The feeling I'm feeling right now, Dinko, honestly, it's going to be. Let's try here. There we go. I'm feeling great. I'm feeling very oh, happy. happy. I'm really happy. It's been a long day. It's been a long, sorry, it's been a long week, yeah, so to speak. Yeah, it has been. For, for a lot of us, for us as well, for, for the production team, everyone involved in all the teams, and now... Here we are, Dinko, smiley in our faces, in yes. our hands. Yes, That's the five grand finals. I think it's going to be a very fun time. We've got OG, obviously, making it through the lower bracket, but it's been a very different story for Aurora. They haven't yeah. had to battle the whole way through, going through that lower bracket into the gauntlet. They, they didn't drop a map yet, but now we're playing the best of five. Surely this is where maybe we see that streak come to an end. Surely you, you, you'd, you'd, you'd think so, but I think they've been playing some really good uh, CS overall. The best Counter-Strike we've seen so far is Sky Esports Masters 2024, yeah. powered by AMD. And, and I feel like for uh, the side of Aurora, I had them pinned as one of my favorites. And they're living up to it. Yes, they definitely are. And OG, I think coming into this tournament, I wasn't really sure what to expect from them. But we can take a look at the format and how we ended up at this point. It's quite a long journey. We started with the India Open Qualifiers, which is open to all. Uh, a single elimination format. Top two teams advance to the closed qualifiers. And we then see God's Ray make it through out of there. Then we have the EU closed qualifier. 12 invited EU teams, a single elimination format. And the winner qualified to the main event. So we've seen Forza, we've seen Bet Boom qualify both of these teams. Did not make it through into the grand final. And then from the five directly invited teams, two of them have made it to the grand final, proving they deserve that invite. OG and Aurora, and the winner gets crowned champion in a best of five final. And it's also one of the most classic of esports uh, formats, right? We're talking about double elimination, best of threes throughout. Not a single best of one anywhere in sight, best of threes from the get-go from day one eight teams duking it out we can take a look here you know we, we lost ends early on which is a bit of a shocker there were the other front runners for me to potentially lift the cup over here we lost nip as well later on big uh getting knocked out yesterday as well but let's take a look at og look at og's journey they started off against aurora in their opening game got 2 would and in the lower bracket the gauntlet they ran taking out ends taking out nip taking down big and finally in a close fought well, a close fought one map, uh, they were still able to make quick work Their of map bedroom. pick of Vertigo. Yeah, which was a little rough. Yeah, so basically we started the tournament with Aurora Gaming versus OG, and we're closing the tournament with Aurora it's, versus it's, it's OG. Full, it's full circle, I love it. It is, it is full circle, and hopefully for, uh, for OG's sake, they have a better performance. I understand why you maybe would... Uh, have a tough time in your opening game. Heavy Gods just returning. Moda was reading HLTV comments. <laughs> Why would he do that? <laughs> but he's no longer reading HLTV comments, and Heavy yeah. God has had some time to warm up a lot more officials through that lower bracket. They're yeah. getting themselves in shape. I think there's going to be a very different OG than Aurora face at the start of this competition, and of course, a best of five. Now, when we comes down to the players, the individuals inside of these squads, for Aurora, everybody's had their moments, but for me, Kenzie is having one hell of a tournament. And for OG, for me, it's it's Modo and Fiku that have actually been more of the standout players uh, across the board. Yeah, I have to agree with you on that, right? Which is so surprising for me, because when you mention Modo, and who's a new uh, new kid on the block for the OG side, coming in as, a, I think, a, a temporary standard, at least for, for the time being, coming in from Regali, last minute call up, Horrible day one, and he's just been so consistent, so good for his team, but Heavy God has been kind of missing. We can talk a little bit about Aurora to start things up. As you pointed out, I think Kenzie has absolutely been blitzing this entire tournament. And that's uh, not an easy task, especially when you have Deco alongside you, who's also been looking very lethal as well. Yeah, Lackey's had some standout performances. Norvi's multi-call potential, and obviously Resol is just serviceable. So this is a, a team that has a lot of options for firepower, and I think they kind of clicked very well coming into this tournament. Deco in the offing department is going to be an interesting conversation about his head-to-head -head against Moto, and if Deco is going to be able to deliver on that grand final. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, obviously, we've seen more from Deco. Uh, we have more data to work with from the side of Deco, but I think Moto has definitely been trying to, you know, vie for that uh, the title of being the best opera we've had so far in the tournament. I think it's been very, very uh, solid, very serviceable for, for the side of OG. But yeah, Aurora, you look at these five players, I don't know who's a weak link over here. And you go to OG and it's like, 
the the obvious player you want to you want to look at is Heavy God, but he's been having a kind of a by his standards a very average, a very pedestrian performance coming out from him. But the good thing is that the, everyone else is stepping up to the plate. Well, that's because Heavy God had a month out of professional play because of an illness, so he's back into the server and obviously taking some time to warm up. But Moto just brought into this tournament a couple of moments before the tournament began. OG made the official announcement that Regali was benched and they're bringing Moto in. Mm -hmm. so we've got Keto having some great maps here and there. He did go a little missing on Vertigo. I'd say actually very missing on Vertigo, but yes. other maps in the series yesterday, he was popping off, top fragging. So I think when Keto is having a good day, this OG team just gets an extra boost, an extra gear. They do indeed. Uh, but 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 for me, it's you know the the trio of Fiku, Nexus, and Moto who have been just consistently performing every single map, every single game we've seen from them. Fiku, as you pointed out earlier, he's been uh, what we've seen Heavy God go a little bit missing. Fiku has been the one kind of stepping up to the plate. Uh, we can take a look at Rasol as well. He was the pickup from Fours. Uh, which Aurora picked up before the entire lineup of Forrest got benched right there. He's been okay, obviously still a few teething is issues coming to this new team, new lineup. You saw him struggle a little bit on Anubis, for example, on that on that on its CT side. Uh, he was a, a bit of a liability, but overall, I think he's got his you know he's doing his job. Nothing too crazy, nothing too spectacular. But I feel like the more time he spends in his lineup, in his team, he's going to get even more better. Yeah, definitely so. 1.16 rating player performance presented by One X Bet. I'm sure we take a look now at one of those OG players to to highlight and for. For me, looking into this tournament, it's hard to like pick one of them, as you mentioned, because it feels like more of a team effort across the board from OG, which is a, quite a nice change in conversation, because quite often, over the last few months, we've been talking about really just Heavy God. Yeah, and, and that's such a good thing, right? The, the, the fact that even though Heavy God's not performing, the fact that OG are not just able to be competitive, but also taking on some pretty well-known names that we saw earlier in the, in, the, in the bracket, where we had Big losing to them, taking on NIP, taking on Ents, and a lot of... Very well-known names in the world of Counter-Strike. And, uh, yeah, let's see who we got here. And, yeah, Fiku. I think he is, uh, for me, the player of the tournament for the side of OG. It's like whenever Heavy God's having a quiet game, whenever Moto's not really feeling it, Keto's having a, an off map, this guy consistently delivers. And I think if this young Pole can continue this form and just maintain his level of consistency, then that's when I start to sit up a little bit and pay attention to OG. Yeah, definitely. Fiku... Finding consistency would be a dream for OG. And you take a look at his stats in more in depth. He does have a slightly worse rating than that of Result, but OG have had some losses, whereas Aurora have just been getting double queues, less maps played. Yeah, uh, and, and the fact that he's able to maintain this despite the amount of maps uh, he's played thus far, I think is very impressive. I'm looking at certain maps where, you know, when, when you have a Heavy God going missing, speaking of Heavy God, there we go. Uh, he's been. You know, it, it's an alright performance, the, just the fact that usually when we saw him on OG before he had to take a little bit of a break, he was just doing massive heavy lifting, just outfragging everyone in the server, even if it's a losing effort. On the other hand, even though not, they don't necessarily make sense when it comes to the roles, because obviously it's Deco with the AWP and Heavy God is the, the star rifle, so to speak, I think if you came into this tournament and be like, who are the two players to watch from OG and Aurora, it would be these two guys. Yeah, it definitely would be. Uh, but you're looking at the stats, you know, Heavy God doing a lot of work still, but obviously a lot more maps played, remember that. So, you know, he's got more opportunities to get more kills. So that's why you, you see uh, maybe some of the numbers inflated in comparison to Deco. But, you know, looking at the series overall, we're going to be in a best of five. It's uh, the first best of five, of course, in this tournament. And we look at some of the maps that OG have struggled on, it's, it's Vertigo. But other than that, I think they've looked quite comfortable. And, 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 and luckily or unluckily, here's the thing for OG, they like picking Vertigo. Yeah. But guess who bans Vertigo? Yeah. Yeah. Aurora. I think it's actually quite good for them. It's actually good for OG. <laughs> so we don't get to see OG's Vertigo, which I, honestly I'm not a big fan of at all. Yeah. So uh, I feel like they've gone for, I think, Anubis or Vertigo every single time. So I believe it should be maybe an Anubis. I think we're guaranteed Anubis. It should be, right? Series. Uh, we, we should have Vertigo and I believe Nuke is the map that's not being played by OG. Is it? I think so. We'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. The I'm, video's I'm, coming I'm, out. I'm not too sure about the video. Plus, I'm not on the desk here, so I don't know about the videos, right? But uh, I'm, I'm expecting Ancient coming out. I'm expecting to see your... Uh, maybe even an Overpass coming in. Haven't seen too much of Inferno from both these two teams. No. So that's up in the don't air. Don't that. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll have to wait and see what that video comes up. I'm sure it's only a few moments away from being presented to us, but I can almost damn guarantee you Anubis is going to be coming up early in that video. It's a map that both of these teams have, have liked to play. Aurora, I think at times, have looked really convincing on it, and then at times have looked rather weak. So, I think it could be a bit of a, a coin toss. Yeah, I feel like if Aurora are playing their A game here and they don't make any weird 
the rotations. We saw it yesterday as well uh, in the upper bracket finals because Bed Boom on Anubis, right? Some some curious decision making coming out from them on a CT side. But when they do play cohesively, they play aggressively, they play with such good synergy, which you don't find in a lot of these teams playing here in the Sky Esports Masters, right? And yeah. uh, if they're bringing the A game, which they really should be to grand finals after all, I just don't see a map where I look at the map and go like, yeah, OG have the edge here. OG to have the edge. Wow, that's definitely something that I don't think anybody would have been saying coming into this tournament. And Aurora could be back-to-back -back Sky Esport tournament winners, right? They just won the Grand Slam uh, not so long ago, and now in the final again, this time of a much larger tournament, Sky Esports Masters. Much more money in the line. Uh, yeah, and, a, and championship also, as well. Yeah, it, exactly. That's So you, you're going to be winning a lot of things. And on top of that, like the, the land they won here, I do believe it was in Pune itself last month, right? It was like God's Reign. It was Bad News Kangaroos. Not exactly the most well-known teams. Here doing it against some of these top teams over in Europe. I think it's pretty impressive. There we go. No nuke comes right, of course. And Vertigo getting banned with Aurora. Anubis. Mirage. Marora. Now, both it's, both these two teams looked really good in Mirage yesterday. But it, was it Bed Boom looking super bad? I think it was Bed Boom looking pretty bad. Yeah, well, they look kind of rough on Mirage. Uh, but o OG going with the newest pick early on. Aurora probably feeling pretty comfortable about the map pool here. I think both teams kind of share a lot of similar maps. And Aurora coming out with that confidence, having already beat them in a the head-to-head in this tournament. And yeah. of course, Inferno, as you said, we didn't see it too much from these teams, but it's left over at the end. I, I thought OG picking Inferno, maybe not super comfortable on it, but but I feel like overpasses, Aurora's overpass is really, really good. I really like their overpass, so I feel like that's not going to be something uh, that's going to be easy for the side of... Uh, for the side of OG, I thought it might have just gone for the Inferno pick and leave Overpass as a decider, but nonetheless, I agree with you. Uh, I think Aurora should definitely be feeling super, super happy with this map pool. And a, and a real possibility, I don't want to put any spoilers out there, Dinka, but it does feel like it could potentially on paper still be a 3 0 for Aurora. Yeah, you feel that way? You know, I'll go with you on that too, Ply. We've been in kind of disagreement on purpose throughout this whole tournament, but uh, I think now on the final day for a best of five. I'll agree with you. 3-0 for Aurora coming into this. Uh, tournament favorites for many as we started there, our first day here at Sky Esports Masters. And now one week later, they're in that grand final. In a grand final indeed. And just the fashion in which they do so, even though some maps might get a little bit close, they don't falter, right? And that's, I think, very impressive. Now for OG, uh, commendable job, right? They've taken out some very big hitting names, but then you got to you got to look behind the brand name. NIP, what are they? They have a stand-in coming in. It's a brand new team, right? You lo they beat an end, so it was looking pretty rough from day one. Even against Forza, they looked pretty rough. Then they take out, take down uh, Big, which was, I think, a very solid win overall. Bed Boom, again, a lot of issues we saw from them yesterday. So they've been taking out a lot of teams who have problems, have stand-ins, have issues. But now they're going up against a team who look very very solid here yeah and what would this mean now for og's future right a team that actually looks very solid we don't know if heavy god's going to be uh sticking around on the team for very long obviously mm. a lot of people probably interested in him but that's just pure speculation uh as always happens when they're really solid players inside of the ranks uh, but you know you look at this team overall i think they've actually managed to put a, a great piece together yeah i mean I, I think even without heavy god i think the pieces are there they've been yeah. able to perform the way they do moto's been a great find so hopefully hopefully it works out well the grand <laughs> Final is set to begin here at Sky Esports Masters, powered by AMD. It's been one week of Counter-Strike, and it all culminates now in a best of five between OG and Aurora. It is yet to be seen who is going to get that Champions Cut of $350,000, but it is certainly going to be five individuals that have been on your screen in the last few seconds. And Fiku's forehead is ready to go. It's shining. It's golden, baby. He's going to go for this one. And look, I think it's been an incredible run for OG. But if they're able to pull off this upset and get the win, it would be one of the most memorable runs I've seen so far recently, at least this year. If you want to turn your grand final casual viewing experience into a whole new thing, high odds for tournament matches await you on the 1xbet website and mobile app. You can scan that QR code on screen to download the 1xbet app and have a quick, smooth user experience and registration. We get into play though. Aurora start on the CT side to kick off this grand final and OG will show us what they've got on the T side. Plenty of utility here for OG and it's a heavy lean into this B bomb site. So many forces ready to try and deal with him though on the Aurora side of things. OG looks so sharp on pistols yesterday. He would love a start here on Anubis. Flashes and smokes right in. Norby through the smoke with a double. OG down to just three players instantly massacred upon entry into this B bomb site. Moto and Keto trying to get the bomb planted, and Moto locks those digits in. OG at a minimum have a 
Force Buy available to them in the next round, but it is looking good for Aurora to pick up the first here. Yeah, 4v2, smoke deployed as well, and they can just try and tap this. No kit, though. CT is getting closer, realizing they're going to need to take some fights, and Norvi goes out into P main. They clean up the last two players. Aurora will win the pistol, and they do it in a pretty strong fashion. They do like starting on the CT sides, don't they, on Anubis to Aurora? Yeah, they want to just know how many rounds they have to, to get in the second half. Yeah, they want to make it quick and easy instead of having to operate with a little bit more pressure later on on the CT side. But yeah, that's a good start coming out for Aurora Gaming for OG, though, to get the bomb down. So it should be a buy coming in from Kito and his men. I guess it's like the philosophy of eating the frog first, right? Dealing with a more difficult thing in front of you. And that CT side certainly can be a difficulty for a lot of teams, as we have seen many a time in this tournament. The pistol round on the CT side, we mentioned it multiple times throughout this event so far. Bly, we call it the most important round on Anubis. Aurora have picked it up now. But a great thing for OG is that despite losing the pistol quite significantly, they got the bomb plant, which means they have rifles to play with coming into the second round force by. Again, Aurora sticking with a three-man play towards B. Yeah, it's quite weak towards this A site, isn't it? You're, you've got a lot of reliance on Resalt not to make a mistake and perfectly play his utility. And he's he's been... He's had a bit of a rough time towards A main. We saw it yesterday as well against Bedboom. He needs to be careful here. Definitely needs to be careful because he's jiggling in the open and he's dead. And now it's panic stations for Aurora. It does feel very good for OG, but they don't commit. They do not commit. They now pause. And this gives Aurora a better chance because they can readjust that defense. There was a window there. Piku trying to come past the window. He's now joining them, but Aurora stick to their guns. They stay committed to this rotation. And OG have actually given Aurora the best possible chance at stopping them. 50 seconds remain in the round. There's still time to go elsewhere, but they're trying to set up an A split. They don't want to funnel through A main solo. They want to come through camera. And now that's being addressed. Fiku loses his life to Deco. It's a good start here for Aurora on the defense itself. And now the attack, the final legs of OG as they sprint in towards the site. Heavy got for a second in the round. Plenty more defensive plays that came from though, and that split is now dead. Aurora are so lucky there that OG decide to just stop after getting that first kill on Resalt. A massive mistake being made by Aurora right there. They were just waiting for the mid flank to come in to make this pincer a little bit more effective, but then they obviously didn't know what we did. The fact that it's only one defender on the day bomb side, and he was kind of out of position as well, which was lackey. Yeah, mistake from OG, obviously, but, uh, you know, looking at the money, they don't have a lot available, obviously, not getting a bomb plant, so it's about to be that idyllic 3-0 start for Aurora. I do really like the decision-making for Aurora, even though a lot of teams would probably just, you know, push out to its B mains, get a little bit of information before they started funneling players back towards the A bomb site. Instead, the, the call to rotate was instant. It was instant. Heavy Gods, big deagle, crashes down upon Kenzie, but instantly taken out by Aurora. And these pistols don't look like they're going to get a lot of wiggle room. In fact, trying to wiggle away from Norway. He'll just drop back down the stairway to safety. Obviously, OG is looking to do as much damage as they possibly can in a round like this. But Aurora are full of confidence in this tournament. And you can't bet against them because they have looked so good. Lackey's just being aggressive on the CT side. We've seen that on multiple maps and multiple series. And it's a great effect a lot of the time. But that's Aurora, 3-0. OG will buy again. They'll get their AK-47s out. But Aurora have built up a lot of money on the CT side already. And that is exactly the kind of win conditions you want to be setting for yourself here on Anubis. OG's map pick, remember. Yeah. Um, Aurora, again, just, just they always seem to have this very solid CT, uh, CT start. But you do have to remember, like, uh, they did struggle a little bit on their CT side against uh, Bedboom. They were only able to net four rounds of memory so we right? Now we got three already against OG to kick off this grand final. Fast. Nexius trying to make his way through the double doors. It's a one for one fight. Nexius has a great read to turn back on the dime and take out Lackey. Now 4v3 set up off the back of those early skirmishes. There's so much time for OG to work this map and they've got the obvious player advantage. Spread quite thin. Waiting for a reaction from Aurora. What do the two players towards B do? They can push out towards Canals, but... You almost feel like you have to make a move right at some point here for Aurora. You can't just sit back in this 3v4, but... but it's not much util remaining either. It's like a smoke and two flashes. That's it. Here comes that play then. Resalt taking a risk. Oh, the splash. The, splish, the splash from the Heavy God. He won't know. And Heavy is the step. 
into death. It's results that will take him out of it. 50 seconds left. They probably the think it's two players. The bomb is now coming into the B-bomb site. Norby's playing at the back of Glyph. He's just silent. Oh, silent now, OG Nick. The signals that they're committing into the bomb site. Norvi peeks out perfectly, flashed that. And OG, remember, started this round with the advantage. They're about to clear out Dark. Kenzie has no idea. He thought he would have been protected. But in fact, it is perfect from OG to be able to recover this. And again, it's Nexius that is putting OG in a strong spot. Result has a 1v2 blind. This is a winnable scenario for Result. Double flashes here for OG. If Result had a smoke, if he had a molly, then perhaps this round it gets a little easier for him. But I think now that it's no utility, and time ticking on. And it's going to be OG's first round on the board. Not going to make any mistakes, surely. There's no B-man peak. Result still looking towards Dark, realizes that time is gone. No peak from Nexius. Get the off. And Nexius actually secures the round win. He gets the double opener in middle. And then the essential kill through Dark. And Result unable to save. So Nexius, the hero, the MVP there for OG. Huge round to be won there by Nexus, and I'm, I'm a little surprised the, the hole towards B just netted one kill. Good stuff from Nexus nonetheless, though. I thought Norv Norvi gets one and then tucks back in cover. I just don't... I thought Kenzie... I think Kenzie probably thought that Molly was saving him. Like, they weren't going to come in and check, but... Be, I'm actually kind of surprised he checked through that angle. Yeah. You see the far being spread, you don't really check that Nexus. deep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, leaves no stone unturned, it would seem. Or we're able to buy back again, but it, it, you can see it's instantly pretty weak. The, the CT side is really tough to get the money built up. Despite having a 3-0 start, Kenzie has to go down to the Eagle. His rifles out across the rest, and a good boost up from Modo into the mid tech. Gecko has to try and stop multiple players coming his way. He gets one kill and a dink off. It's not enough to make Aurora feel comfortable on this defensive effort, though. The two kind of low players, Keto, internally hemorrhaging, and Modo down to 43 HP. Still very dangerous here. Two places towards Heaven, Dinka. They are charging on in. Nice flash. Norway. Resol together. Looking to get the kills. Resol has to go for the reload. Op holding the angle. Will land attack. Won't finish it off though. Resol oh catches a jumping moto. Now it's all in Heavy God. Well, Heavy God, watch. This is the kind of play you want in the grand final. This is the kind of play that can deliver you moments when OG expect it least. And Heavy God will head to the fountain. 45 seconds, plenty of time and plenty of health for Heavy God to try and work this one. And Resort has taken damage, and Mackenzie's still on a pistol. This is a very doable scenario for Heavy God, and he's just trying to wait it out. See if there's a mistake presented, but Aurora stay disciplined. They stay committed behind the corners, and Heavy God's job is now to try and find them, but they confirm his position with a sound cue on that grenade, and a peek from Resort. Fantastic round, and Aurora up 4-1 thanks to Resort. 4-1 and 4 kill to Resort. Yeah. Lovely, lovely hold coming out from him. Even though Modo getting the opening kill. It looked a little, a little shaky at first, and despite the fact that he got legged. Great work from Result. We did say he was a bit of a liability on his A-bomb side, but this time around, nope. He's going to be an absolute rock, and with that, with no bomb planted either. It is going to be OG with just a few pistols, a couple of nades towards mid and they're gonna come charging on in through the fire and flames Dinka. Through the fire and the flames the force of dragons try and charge them down and they fall back. <laughs> Komodo dragon himself still on the server. Oh gee you're gonna be sending a couple players outside of A main now leaving Kido in middle. And this position could be effective here for Kido but he is pushed and Unfortunately for Keto, taken out by Lackey with Amen. quite a swift headshot. Amen is the, the one gap, but Resort's got the heaven in time. He really should be cleaning these pistols up. They really should, being the operative word. Because he doesn't. He has to rely on his teammates instead. And damage with the dunk. Heavy God's gone. Five rounds CT side. Starting to get worried for OG. Yeah, five rounds is probably one more than what you need as a minimum. Uh, and we know how good Aurora's T-side can be on this map. So things, that's a scary thing. It spirals so quickly out of control here on uh, on this map. But it's not like OG, OG are having a, you know, it's their map pick and they get to start on T-side. Yeah, it's kind of what you want. It's kind of what you want. And yet it's not <laughs> going your way. It's 5-1, and one, first tactical timeout getting called here in AWP. In the hands of Modo once again, the Komodo. Yes, we'll see how that sniper changes the server. Maybe this is the dynamic shift. 
that OG required to start getting some round wins on the board. Nexus was the player to step up. And the only round win that OG have seen here on Anubis, those odds from one expert certainly heavily favoring Aurora in this matchup. No surprises whatsoever. Still very early, very, very early in the uh, in the day here. Uh, very early in the best of five. It becomes a marathon, a best of five, but Aurora wants to make it a sprint. Well, yeah, people got places to be, things to do. Yeah, spend that money they earn today. Oh, yeah, maybe buy a watch. Maybe save it for a rainy day. <laughs> Imagine save. <laughs> yeah, imagine a forward save a few rounds in this tournament. Maybe they maybe they would have <laughs> been a little further in the competition. <laughs> Still burned into my mind. Yeah. Let's not let's not let's not talk about oh, it. Oh sorry, it's just trauma. All right, five one though. No. OG after a timeout, ready to get going with motives all peaking towards dark. No one from Aurora giving him the opportunity to fight just yet through dark. Resault's very proactive, and I think OG would have seen that when they do a little bit of scouting into this tournament and see some of Aurora's CT sides. Quite often, Resort can be there alone, but he's not this time. He's got the help of Deco and the Flash. Beautiful. It's uh, not going to work out for Resort. He goes down, and Deco trying to trade it back, staying committed. But Utility is going to force him back, and Heavy God does his job perfectly. He just manufactured a kill so very well. Flashback to force Deco from his position, swinging out wide, clearing the cold, close angle. Resort caught looking into the corner playing the anti-flash. Deco's sticking around though, he's not dropping back. He wants to get information on this A-play to find out how many players are really there. Norvi's mental, man. He just ran right into the fire. Keto sustaining heavy damage. Grenade just about misses out on taking that kill. Beautiful. And Kenzie is lined up through the smoke by Fiku. Lackey going into another level, though. Through the darkness, he will run. Deco delivers the kill on the heavy guard. And Lackey just drags them back into the round again. It is Nexius with a clutch ahead of him and everything to do. He'll draw that kill back on Lackey. He knows that Deco is A. And Deco, oh Stop. my god, he's running into the open. Oh. And that is a huge clutch for Nexius. That is massive. And what a round for Lackey. Why always. is Deco just like, not? he doesn't actually think about the clutch. He just runs out with a grenade in his hand. That's how he plays. Not thinking. He was trying to nade him. He's trying to nade him down. But yeah, but he yeah, wasn't it's low. Risky. It's risky. <laughs> well, I'm not going to be too happy about that one because Lackey did absolutely everything everything possible to pull back what looked like to be a dire round for Aurora that's suddenly winnable. Uh, but the clutch just gets away from them because they've got Nexius to thank again. So two rounds picked up for OG, both of them won by Nexius. And here's a scary thing for a side of Aurora, right? Like, you're five and two CT side. Yeah. And, and we know how annoying their the CT side plays are when they have the SMGs, when they have the FAMAS, how aggressive in your face yeah. you can be. Are OG going to be ready for it? Because I have a feeling Aurora is going to end this half in mid seven push, rounds. There we go. There Lackey. we go. He's confident. He's aggressive. He's done it many a time. And he's gotten away with it over and over again because he's not alone. He's got Deco to back him up. And Keto looks up towards Deco inside of middle. He peeks into the window for just a little bit too long. And the German will take his head off. So a 4v3 established off the back of these early fights. But Lackey will maintain his advanced positioning. And that is a strong area of the map for Aurora to have this early into the round. The bomb is dropped. The bomb is dropped on top next to towards T-spawn and that's what the CDs haven't fallen back yet. So despite the fact that if you look at the radar you can see Heavy God has made his way towards the A bomb site, but it's going to take too long for him to go for the flanks. So he's not going to fall on back, regroup with his team and try and extricate themselves from a very very uncomfortable spot here but they need to find the kills. 35 seconds now Denko. Bomb on Kenzie. He's got eyes on it. OG have such limited time to get through the defensive players that are now sitting like a mother goose to the egg. And that bomb is being watched. Occupied 20 seconds and Kenzie, well, that might just be the chef's kiss of the round. And well, maybe even the kiss of death for OG because 6-2, to two, they were unable to string multiple rounds together. And because they were just barreling up towards T-spawn, the flashbang completely neutralizes Moto and his AWP as well. And... I, t I hate to be the uh, Prescient, so to speak, Dinko, but I am the, the soothsayer, and I just said it. These half buys from Aurora, these force buys on the CD side of Anubis, it usually is aggression. 
Yeah, it is aggression, and it's calculated too. It's not just lackey going alone. Oh no, he's got Deku in behind him. It's what, got good timing through that mid smoke. While they had players pushing on B main, it's what a slight delay, right? Trying to catch the the. the the B main T players off guard while they were duking it out with Lackey pushing up towards so mid. So it's an interesting economic decision here for OG. So Keto is fully invested. He's going into the Galil. But everybody else is leaving some cash in the bank to get a buy into the next round. So Keto will be lacking some weapons in the next, but he's hoping he can make this Galil work. Lackey bullets banging off the wall close to his head. Very close indeed, but Lackey is dodging the lethality of those. Resalt though. Opening up the affairs here for Aurora. That's heavy goal that's gone down towards A. Kito's got close. He's got very close. And unfortunately for Kito, Lackey was able to compose himself. And now he's cleaning up the rest of OG. Seven rounds will shortly be added to the tally here of Aurora. And they're playing disciplined, intelligent counter-strike. Smoking out middle, making sure that Moto is unable to take any kill away from Aurora. They know they want to build this CT economy. They want to build that extra cash. They're making their way through the canals. They could even flank to close. The B bomb set's empty, but... <laughs> oh, maybe now. Fiku's walking in. He's having a little look around. Uh, but this flank, it will just be Fiku alone in this round. They, they haven't even detected the flank because that kill from Resalt. So they don't even know that they're that close behind uh, him. Doesn't matter, really. The, bomb, the bomb's dropping double doors as well. Yeah, so Fiku is not going to win this round, of course. He's just looking for a kill to pad his stats. Just get some confidence, get the ball rolling, get warmed up a bit in this grand final. But this first map has been a bit of a disaster for OG. Their map pick of Anubis, the most T-sided map we have in the pool. They get a T-sided start, and they are struggling to find a foothold in the best of five. Yeah, <laughs> when you're like just two rounds, two to seven and on T-side Anubis, your map pick is starting in the first half, and we keep talking about the, the CT pistol. They go. Even if you win the CT pistol, it's not looking great. No. Oh, Mirage up next. I'd like to see them probably try and test the V-bomb side a little bit more. Still a chance for five rounds here for OG. I feel like they need those five rounds. They have to win every remaining round in this first half. Kito again. Did mention the last round he went for that hero, Galil. Didn't really net him too much, but it does mean now he's on a tech nine where the rest of his teammates have their weapon of choice. They're looking to be contact. They're looking to go explosive through the smoke. But Deco just starts spamming down through the smoke. And Fiku, well, he's gone. And OG are losing members left, right, and center. It is now just down to three players here for OG. Moto will do everything he can. Kido using distraction to come through with that Tech-9. It's a good first kill, but there's no one else working in tandem with him. And OG are suffering. A 2v3 is not impossible. The problem is they know where both the T's are. There's a flank coming. Yep. A long flag, and they are aware of it as well. Result, he doesn't need to overaggress; just needs to hold the angle, cut off the rotation. Yeah, that's it. So now he can plant himself here. Just watch, make sure they can't go middle, make sure they can't come through T spawn to the A bomb site. And they know they've got them trapped outside of B. What do you do? OG realized they have no map control or presence anywhere else, so they know that they can't really fall back. They have to stay committed into this B site. As long as Aurora don't overaggress here. Oh, gee, they just have to wait for them to come on in. Or they have to try and brute force to be bombs. Or save. <laughs> I don't think they're going to be allowed to save. Yeah, that's the thing. You, you have, you're have you on the risk of dying after the time. One flashbang. Well, unless the contact play. They're getting into the B-bomb side at this point. Heavy guard at the front of the attack. Your head. And oh, it's sharp. It's Deco. Cut open. We still need to now come back. Lackey is so disciplined, so intelligent on how he maneuvers around that obelisk. And then Resalt is activated to come in with the information and clean up on the flank. And Kenzie's having a, a chuckle. Everybody very happy over in the Aurora camp at the moment. They know the CT side is spelling disaster for OG. Yeah, this is looking disastrous. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Best case scenario now is OG leave the half of four rounds. It's incredibly unlikely considering... The weapons they have in this round, it's Tech Nines, but sometimes, sometimes these are the ones you can win. Some speed, some momentum, trying to overrun one opponent, but Lackey would not be it. So they drop down off the bridge to try and get into Dark, to try and get rid of Kenzie. And it's a good setup, actually, from Aurora. They're not playing oh, the within defense. the choke points. They're playing a retake setup, passive, against the, uh, the sort of Tech Nine purchase here. It's a smart decision, oh. Kenzie defending his teammate. They will suffer a bomb plan. Post one's still very uncomfortable though, unless these Tech Nines can do something. 
I like this from Aurora though. They're not getting too ahead of themselves. And Deco, nice two kills, no one to final two players. Oh, oh heavy gun with the decoy. Has to get a little bit more, but Fiku's Tech 9, Woo. a double. Suddenly it looked like OG were about to win the round, and then Aurora fortunately had a flank. They always have a flank. But Heavy God trying to hype his team up with the kind of energy, the, the, the sharpness there in that round. But they needed it. They needed the victory. It's not good enough at this point in the half to be coming close to rounds. you got to start winning some of them. We head into the last round of this first half of OG's map pick. They've got two rounds on the board. This could be a very quick first map of the best of five. She's nine and two. That's a that's a that's a T side scoreline, Dinko. They're just running away with this. And apart from a couple of close rounds, you know, we had the resolve four K go to A bomb side, and then it's one v one. Apart from that, it's been extremely convincing from the CIS side. And oh gee, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna need this round, the pistol off of this, and a miracle. Yeah, a lot of steps that need to be taken perfectly by OG, and if you misstep any of those. You're out here of this first map. Have we got? Trying to construct something. Ooh, I love this from Assault though. You know, up on the table, around the smoke. Ooh, pretty close to the shot, but unable to connect it. OG fortunate to keep all of their members intact. So they're going to be going back into B with Nexus pressuring middle. Do some damage to the double door player and have to descend. But Kenzie, he's locked away dark. Kido is down. There is a split coming into this B bomb oh, site from play. OG. Look at the mid push coming in from Lackey, dude. Yeah, he's just so proactive in this position. It's so powerful, but he's going to go around the other way. Can clear out the top of the stairway to try and get into the B bomb site to help his teammates here on the flank. Moto creeping out of dark, feeling uncomfortable. That Lackey flank has now come to fruition. And OG realized there are fish in a barrel and Aurora are having a field day. Nexius with an important activation on towards Kenzie. The bomb can head towards A. Yeah, and Heavy God is the carrier with Nexius and Moto to try and pull this one Lackey. back. 25 seconds, Lackey caught, Moto looked up, he predicted it, he had a little look, and he catches Lackey off the top rope, so suddenly a 3v3, and just enough time to get into the bomb site. No. It's Deco trying to get here, trying to deny. If he can stop them, there's not gonna be enough time to plant the bomb, so he's gonna buy some time. Bomb is down on the ground, just enough to try and recover it, but nope, just like that, there's no time for the round. Oh. OG run out of seconds. And it's 10 to 2 at the turn of the first half. Aurora dominating OG on OG's map pick to kick off this grand final. That is actually so heartbreaking for OG. He just needed their one kill, as you said, Dinko, despite the fact the trade took place. And I don't think they picked up the bomb. I think he missed the bomb in the smoke. Yeah, it, even, even then, when it goes down, he has six seconds when he comes off of that fountain on the timer. I don't know if he even would have had enough time. I think he just would have had enough time, no. but yeah. Coulda, woulda, shoulda, and uh, this map pick but from don't. OG. <laughs> but don't, yeah. Man, uh, this is a painful, painful start for OG. But for Aurora, man, they, they, they woke up. They woke up right out of the bed. Yeah, they woke up. Uh, they went out and got their sunlight, little uh, protein shake, little run outside. You know, vitamin D, to vitamin doing C's, everything right. potassium, bananas, right. aimbots. Yeah. Or or even arms race is, is what Brook is doing nowadays. I love arms race. I play probably more arms race than normal. Dude, I love just launching myself off the uh, the baggage. Yeah, know, the baggage is so much Dude, fun. Dude, I, I remember playing, when it first came out, Henry G and I were playing some. Yeah, he was on the other team. And most people have bots in Arms Race, right? So it kind of just becomes a competition between you and your friend. Your friend, yeah. It's, no. like, it's, it's, it's like PvE co-op. Yeah. Except the E, the environment, like the, 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 the AI actually bad players. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I would find all the little tricks and spots where you can't you can't actually kill me. I've seen you. I've seen how ratty you can be in uh, in Wingman, Dinko. Yeah. You are the Rat King after yeah. all. I've seen some of your. I feel grimy playing Wingman with you sometimes. When someone is newer maps coming out, you're like, Play. crouch here, <laughs> see this, and I'm like, well, you you can see them and they can't even see you. You yeah. little rat bastard. I want I, <laughs> I want more maps in Wingman, dude. I agree. The, uh, like. I mean, how long has it been? How long is it going to take? We, we have like default maps like Vertigo, Nuke and all these and these aren't made for Wingman. Wingman no, maps not. are very simply designed and we have so many good maps. So many good Wingman maps. Just put, put the ones in that were in CSGO at the end. You know, just give us something. It, they're literally there are, there are dozens. Others. There's other priorities at the moment, sure, but come on. Surely I can't be that difficult. You'd think so, right? Because the mode exists. You just have to put a map there. You have to pay the designers 
a royalty, I believe, every couple of weeks that the map is improved. But it's Valve. You know, they're a small startup. It's true, small startup, yes, that's true. Small indie dev. Well, we can get some of the halftime highlights and we wait for the second half to kick off. I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe a tech issue to be resolved. Maybe as soon as I get word on that, I'll let you guys at home know. No. Well, no player tech issue is what I'm asking about, but uh, no, it seems like we're ready to go. Second half underway. And OG sitting back with all the work in the world to do. Yeah, this is uh, this ain't gonna be good. On on the bright side though, the uh, the mirage coming in from OG was pretty solid yesterday, so maybe they could put up a fight. Come map two. Well, putting up a fight is faster, easier, and better with the One Xbet mobile application because it's waiting for you. Download and register right now. One Xbet, your esports bookmaker. Hell yeah, brother! All right, here we go. OG. USB's out. Got its flashbang. Hands a keto. And for Aurora, it's nothing too how complicated. Never mind. Drop one down. Lucky finds Nexus. Yeah, Lackey also finds Modo. Four players, Dinko. Oh no. Oh no, OG. It's all coming crash. Pack it up. Around GG, them. go next. VQ is dead. It's 11 rounds for Aurora. These pistol rounds looking so good. But Bomb plants in and Heavy God, he's so far removed from this. His teammates, they stacked out the B bomb site. They had everything going for them. But they just couldn't land the shots. Lackey is looking so good for this team right now. It's so sick to see him play this well for Aurora. I know, <laughs> he's just been having his pop-off games, pop-off maps. And this one, Dinko, I don't need to be an Egypt Egyptian... Egyptologist? What do you call it? What do you call someone who studies Egyptian history? Like, I don't have an Egyptian history professor to read the hieroglyphs on the wall and the writing says, Dinko, this map is over. The writing on the wall. Egyptologist? I don't know. I'm going to look it up. I'm curious now. Yes. Egyptologist. Egyptologist. There we go. Egyptologist. I'm not an Egyptologist. Imagine getting a degree in a city. <laughs> well, a country. <laughs> Oh, sorry, on a country, yeah. Or it's, it could be civilization as well. I was like, what do you specialize in? India. <laughs> no, but the, yeah, well, yeah, I guess that that's pretty cool. But that is pretty much me. No, but the cool thing about the you know Egypt at the city of Alexandria, who had kind of like automatic ATM kind of systems way before. Yeah. Their time. So. That, that that's someone sitting inside the uh, the machines counting out the cash, <laughs> yeah, yeah. or <laughs> counting out the tablets <laughs> rather. <laughs> Rocks on the other side. And oh, uh, oh. Orby dies himself. All good. A little bit Ooh. of one G, but uh, all good indeed. Lackey. All good in the hood for Aurora Gaming. But Heavy God, he wants to pull this one back for OG, and they still do this, of course. But it's not going to happen. They're not giving any mercy today. Aurora Gaming, 12 rounds to two. This first map of the grand final has not delivered the competitive nature that we have come to see throughout this entire tournament. OG looking outmatched by Aurora, and this did start the tournament with Aurora versus OG, and it was Aurora winning that game pretty comfortably 2-0. to zero. And We thought maybe, maybe the OG that we've seen grow, build, the character arc, blood, all led towards a finale. Where OG were given them one last so rally. So close, and then just to fall flat, that's... Uh, yeah, I'd be disappointed. I think I've been really enjoying this run from OG, right? It just makes me believe in that, in that underdog, you know? It's like... Rocky. Have you watched the Rocky movies? I've watched all the Rocky movies. All the Rocky movies? Yeah. Even Rocky Five. Yes. Wow. You're, you're a brave man. Yeah. Had the box sets. What's your favorite? Uh, what's the top three? Obviously Rocky One. Rocky One, Rocky Four. Oh, when he when he when he uh, won the Cold War on his yeah. own by the Cold War one. That was one of my favorites. Mr. T was also great. Rocky Three. Yeah. All right. Uh, I think actually I'd have Rocky Balboa as my second favorite. That's a good one. Yeah. I also like the Rocky and Rambo. That was good. Yeah, th that's actually really good. Like a little Rambo play from Heavy God. He's going on a rampage, and the MP9 takes out Kenzie. Oh my God! <laughs> Heavy God is Rambo right now. Look at this Whoa. rampant display. And we have another one here onto Lackey. Goes around the corner. Heavy God with an MP9. A dream <laughs> has made three kills happen out of nowhere. Dude, the second kill was so disgusting. Like, yeah. Well, Deco is his Arnie. With 35 seconds left, that goes recover that bomb and 
30 seconds, not a lot of time for Roy. And you can't really go backwards because Keto's there now with the rugs. And this is now such a little bit of time. It's done for Aurora. Heavy Goal wins the round, man. He keeps OG on the map. He keeps the, them in the game. The, the one time Heavy God's actually fragging out and everyone from OG disappears. Yeah. It, it's so unfortunate. It's so cursed. Oh. I, I think Heavy God's probably very happy that finally they've come to my bomb site. He's just been sitting like in an impossible retake scenario against four yeah, or five players every round so like, far in the second round. Like, come to me, guys. Come to me. The pissed around. Four players on the beat bomb site. Heavy got over a day. Everyone's dead in a split second. Uh, now it's going to be... And uh, they walk towards him with rifles, and he kills him with an MP9. <laughs> Aurora, they're down the pistols. It feels like OG might have just been able to extend play a little bit here, thanks to Heavy God. He's really fragging out, isn't he? He is. But you know who's not really fragging out right now? Fiku. Fiku. And he needs to frag out. Good. Wow. Good luck dealing with that eagle. And through jail. Next is trying to step up in the stead of Fiku. Lackey with another big shot on Keto. Sprinting through Temple! Why are they peeking the Lackey Deagle? Got another one. And that bomb goes down. OG, we're up against the pistols, and if you can't win this kind of round, you ain't gonna win many. Oh, Deco. And this map is going to come to a close if that Deagle can find a kill at the temple. Now the AK goes in, but Moto finds a conveyor belt of players delivered right to his doorstep. It's now Kenzie to try and close this out. Tech 9, time ticking, just over halfway gone on that bomb, but there's a smoke and a lot of flashes here. For OG, so he'll smoke that bomb. The Tech 9 now detected, but Kenzie's got the kill. And that defuse is being stuck around the corner. He can't get to it in time, and the defuse is through. OG survived the scare, and they do prolong play. The rounds ain't easy, though, Blah. It's not easy at all. I wasn't a big fan of why Deco had to go and sit in the smoke right there, because the smoke's going to clear. He just had a pistol. And if he was going to be sitting there, I would have liked his teammate to be sitting there with him. Yeah. But oh, yeah, oh, smiley faces all around for OG here. Yeah, it's not very smiley. It's not very happy. Uh, but uh, I just don't see this comeback happening. No, no, I don't. But you, you do want to see OG be able to at least win some rounds here towards the end of this yeah, map and then go into map two feeling like they actually got something in there. Well, at least Heavy got to warmed up, so that's a good sign. Yeah, that's a positive for sure. Yeah, but everyone else seems like they're getting out deal by Aurora right now, and that's worrying because Mirage, we know how Aurora likes to deal. Yeah, they just like to fight. Show their might. Lackey 22 and 9. One hell of a performance here. CT side, anti side. It was a full investment in the last round. They come close to winning it, but don't pick it up, Aurora, which means they have to go to an eco here. Their buy comes in the next round. Uh oh. As long as they can keep the CTs under a lot of pressure, keep the boot to the throat, their money won't be able to. sustain too many casualties here. We'll see weaknesses in the next round for OG if they drop a couple of players. And the AK-47 is watching towards the dark peak. Keto up on the red table. Fiku getting a little bit itchy. He moves forward, impatient, as Fiku goes down to resolve. Will that end up costing OG? The answer is no, because Keto gets a double at A main that will confirm the round, but at least a little bit more expensive uh, for Aurora. But it will be now 12 to 5. OG taking another step in the right direction. Resolve's able to get another kill here. That could really hurt the money. For OG. Because again, you know, the spider round have strung a few rounds together. It's coming down to the 1v1s. Coming down to the wire. Alright. Never mind. Moto. 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 He's really good at just hitting. Shots. Just, ho just holding an angle, hitting shots. It's, it's, it's wild. Yeah, he's really good at that. That's what you need from an alper. <laughs> some alpers, though, I, I say that, but uh, some alpers hit the... the Brokey had one kill yeah. in, in, I think, the final map or something today. With the alp. With the alp, yes. Yeah, so he was an MVP, wasn't he? Was with every, he was an MVP. He, he got killed at every other weapon, which is why he said in an interview. I've just been practicing a lot of him. <laughs> Arms race. Arms race. <laughs> uh, I love me a Brokey. Yeah. And right now... OG, a bunch of broke boys with rounds. Only five of them put together here. Although, it's still not pretty for Aurora, you know. Lackey's still on the Eagle. Yeah. They did go for that uh, hero, Galil, or was it an AK the previous round, so. Not a lot of you tell here for the T side, so it's not going to be a very strong execute. They're going to brute force this, Jenko. They're going to try and brute force this. 
Heavy guards here, though, with Keto. Good volley. That's been heard. Flash is coming in. Might be a perfect flash as well. No. Heavy guard not affected. Or affected by that flash. Heavy guard and Keto is a wombo combo that take out Aurora. That round didn't seem to have direction uh, for Aurora. It did look like they were trying to, yeah, you know, go for that A main brute force control, but good utility deployment coming in from OG. And yeah, the flash is not deep enough, and then I love the, the, the peaks coming out here. And like that peak. first piece of the puzzle goes against Aurora. Tough to find a way into the round, and OG surviving here. Putting up more and more of a fight with each step, and I think Aurora now just needs to take a full eco, get that money on board, get a full buy round, and try and close this first map out before you let OG back in. 12-6. Time out for Aurora here. So yeah, I'm sure they'll probably upgrade a couple of pistols here and there. You know, Norvi can get like P250, mm -hmm. Tech 9, maybe a Deagle. But you would imagine it will be the majority of players saving everything they've got for the full buy round into the next. And for OG, their money is starting to get a little bit more comfortable. Seating arrangement has changed on the cameras. We got have it got in the middle now. Fiku's forehead on the right. Fiku's forehead, yeah. Still sounds like an artifact you'd find in an RPG game. <laughs> Fiku's forehead. Fiku does sound like some trickster god from yeah, some yeah. Mesopotamian. Like a kind of thing. Yeah, but like a Mesopotamian mythology or something. Here we go. Here we go once again as OG looking to pull off. What some might say would be impossible. Stringing four in a row right now. Sorry, three in a row, I believe. It's going to be a B pincer. And this has been a problem against the pistols for OG. Fiku needs yeah. to step up. Lackey's been able to get a lot of shots going with his B split before. Coming through with the main this time. The teammate's trying to get through with that dark push. Keep up, spamming down. Lackey's dead first, and they're handling this pretty well, OG, until they don't. Norvi and Kenzie coming in with a couple, and the overrun Keto. And now they can get a bomb plant uh, if they would desire. Norvi might just try and win the clutch on elimination. He'll go to that plant, secure that extra cash in the next round at the minimum, but Norvi has eyes set on a 1v2 to try and close out this map. And he could do it. They're coming in from the same position as CT. Norvi separates them into 1v1 fights, and now it's just Modo. And he's coming back in with the AWP. Norvi has a real shot at closing this one out. X-ray off. He could have got past. We have no idea. Norvi has to try and detect it. He's worried about so many different angles. But Modo, time's ticking, buddy. You gotta get back in, and he looks the wrong way. Norvi will close. The pistols do it for Aurora. And map one of Anubis goes the way of the tournament favorites. OG are not here to play. It was inevitable there, Denko. Honestly, it would have been such a Herculean ask of OG to bring it back all the way from that massive deficit. And his V bomb site, there was so many, uh, so many holes. And again, Aurora realized we were able to get a bomb down last time and have a 3v2, which you kind of threw away a little bit. Let's close this one out, boys. Yeah. I think for, uh, for Aurora, it's definitely going to be uh, be all smiles, but for OG, it's uh, upside down face because their uh, their world has just been turned upside down. That's their map pick. That yep. is their showing on the T side, and he got two rounds out of it. So. Yeah, it's it's kind of rough when you pick Anubis, you get to start on the T side because we keep questioning Aurora. Why do you just keep starting CT side? That's why because they get ten rounds on your CT side, and sure there was a bit of a. Uh, as Pimp likes to say, a cosmetic comeback coming in from the he side. He also likes to say dark underhorse. <laughs> I love that. He also calls Connor Corner, Corner, yeah. Corner which Corner. is great. I love Pimp. Love you, Pimp. Uh, but apart from that, it's uh, yeah, just Aurora all the way, right? Now, the only silver lining here for the side of uh, OG is Mirage's pick coming in by Aurora. Mm. And both these two teams looked really good in Mirage yesterday, albeit it was against a common enemy, which was uh, Naphne and his boys. Yeah, Naphne and his boys. We did see that happen yesterday. It was uh, rather... Uh, rather back and forth for a period of time then Aurora were able to... Uh, In the first five rounds. Yeah, and yeah. then Aurora just took control of the whole game. Yep. So, Aurora feeling pretty confident to go 2-0 and zero in this best of five. Uh, and I feel confident that they're going to be able to do it. we got to go to a break, though. And when we come back, we've got Mirage waiting for you. And we'll break down Anubis a little bit more.
world is changing, but one thing remains the same. Victories with one x bet. Welcome back to the Sky Sports Masters. It's grand final day and it's all powered by AMD. We've got ourselves our second map of the best of five coming up, Mirage. We've just seen Anubis and we didn't see much of Anubis because Aurora kind of dominated. We saw a real good Anubis where basically, uh, yeah, Aurora just ran over everything, right? Like OG didn't really put up much of a showing on the T side. They, they picked it. It's a map they looked very good on it, by the way, because we saw it against Big as well, where they put up a, a good comeback. They know what to do, but against Aurora's CT side, they didn't really seem to have an answer. And Aurora were, were very, very solid. They're going to take it away from them. I think Lackey was having a great game. Everyone chipping in, everyone having moments. And when you have a 10-2 CD side, the second half, let's be real, doesn't really matter too much. Yeah, does not matter whatsoever. But uh, Lackey's performance presented by 1x bet. Absolutely outstanding performance from Lackey. 1.56 is another big numerous performance from him. 22 kills in the short amount of rounds played is incredible. Yeah, I mean, 22 kills, uh, considering, you know, we, we had uh, Norway having moments as well, Deco popping off at the same time. So, yeah, Aurora just getting done with business, and and I do start to worry a little bit for OG here, because while we did say 3-0 for Aurora being a potential final scoreline, I'd expect OG to at least try and take a map, maybe, you know, make things a little bit more competitive, but this was completely flat coming out. Even though, you know, at, at the very end of that game, we saw a few few moments coming in from Heavy God, I think it was looking pretty reasonably solid, but everyone else just kind of went missing. All the players are talking about it, talking about the Fikus, we're talking about your Motos, Nexius is not really getting anything done. Yeah, it was a really slow start in the fragging department from OG, and they didn't warm up in time, they didn't warm up at all, it felt like, and Heavy God having his game, we talked about, you know, how quiet he's been in the tournament by his own standard, and now he's finally having one of the standout performances, 19 kills, he was the second highest striker on the server, <laughs> only best up by Lackey, and it still wasn't enough to post more than six rounds here for OG. Yeah, um, I mean, look, I don't think it's really, there's not much need to really further delve into this map. This one's pretty pretty much kind of Aurora just dominating them in a very convincing fashion, right? Uh, he heading into Mirage, I think that's when things are going to be very... could get interesting. It's a map coming from Aurora. OG are going to be starting on a CT side. And what OG... Uh, how OG felt very comfortable yesterday on a CT side was the fact that Bedboom didn't try anything too crazy, right? Bedboom's T side was very, very one-dimensional. We saw... I think it was... Uh, I think it was uh, uh, Magnages. He was the guy who was trying to, you know, be a little bit of a guy, trying to make an entry and whatnot, trying to make things work for his team. But apart from that, we saw nothing coming in from Bedboom. That's not going to be the case with Aurora. Aurora has way more better protocols. The way to work together is so much more cohesive. Talking about mid control, the utility, the, the, the utility, uh, the, the utility layering coming towards mid is so much more uh, interesting and so much more varied as well. So I don't think OGC decide is going to be having as much as an easy time as it had yesterday. But if they're able to survive this early test from Aurora's T side, we might have a map in our hands. Maybe not a game, but a map in our hands. Yeah, we might. We have to see because Keto, Mirage has always been one of those maps where he's able to step up, where he's able to deliver um, and have those standout performances. I think they need a better Keto here. He was definitely a key to a lot of their big victories over the last few days. Mm -hmm. If Obviously, uh, everyone else needs to have their... We're trying to do... We're, we're, we're trying to do... Uh, he was a key to yeah, the victory. Maybe. I wasn't trying that, but you know, you could you could go for that, Blair. That's that's, that's something you could do. That was you kind know, of save it, save it for the game goes live. That's terrible, but all right. I'll, I'll, <sighs> anyway, uh, yeah, he has to be the key to yeah. victory uh, for this team. But no, I don't. I don't think it has to be keto. I, I feel it has to be 
Fiku, uh, and I think it has to be Nexius and Moto, the, the trio I spoke about, because they just went missing here uh, on, on Anubis, right? But in Mirage, you saw them pull off some pretty impressive things. Heavy God's going to be towards A. Keto's going to be towards A ramp. That A defense, can it hold? Because it held well yesterday against Bed Boom. Can it hold against someone like, I don't know, Deco running at you, you know, running and jumping with an AWP? We're going to find out. Yeah, we're about to find out. Second map of this grand final underway. Best of five. And of course, presented by 1xbet, which is faster, easier, better on the 1xbet mobile application, which is waiting for you. Download and register right now. 1xbet, your esports bookmaker. Let's get into the action, though. It is the pistol to kick things off. Lackey with plenty of utility. Norvi with his. It's a simple play into the A bomb site. And OG have selected three defenders to play this side of the map early doors. They're going to try and stop this attack coming in. And Aurora delve out of the palace. It is one headshot from Keto. Triple from Heavy God. And smashing them into the ground is Deco. And he's trying to get rid of Heavy God. Close at the ninja boxes. But Heavy God will step up in a huge way with four. And stop Aurora from even getting the bomb plant. I you see it from his POV. That was filled from Heavy God. He must have had a distraction set up from the rest of his teammates around the bomb site because those headshots were coming in one after another. I don't think he even needed any distraction because he was looking lethal and near the uh, near the end of that map on Anubis as well. So good to see he's continuing his form here. And Aurora we'll go for the force pipe, but no bomb plant means they don't get the premium weapons, right? They don't get the Galils. They yeah. don't get the rifles out. So it's Tech Nines on the majority. Deagle on two. And we know that Aurora can win these kind of rounds. We've literally seen them close the last map in a round like this. They do tend to get a little overeager uh, sometimes. Not often, but sometimes, right? Just go for the eco. Uh, just go for the eco. You're going to have AKs come the next round. You know, maybe a couple of Galils in the mix. It's going to be a very solid buy indeed. But going for this full spy could potentially gift the 3 0 for OG. A nice flash. Well, oh, I think it was a team flash there. Meanwhile. Aggression to its ramp. Yeah, we've seen a lot of this That's from the OG. Bomb. We've seen a lot of this from OG yesterday. That's the bomb down. Deco does well to get one, but traded out, and it is a 4v3 in favor of OG. And Nexus takes a step in the correct direction. And he's now to Lackey. And Fiku finally gets some work done with that UMP. He buys it every map, and we get we didn't really see too much of it on Anubis. Well, OG survived the scare of the four spies. It's gonna be the full eco now. No bomb plant again here for the side of Aurora. And OG, they have the start they needed coming into map two. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, for OG, the the sort of A aggression we're seeing from them from from them here is what we saw from them yesterday as well. That's where they were able to construct a very solid CT side. So hope to see more from them on this. Moda's going to be uh, just an attack nine. Fair enough. It's going to be the few upgraded pistols coming out from Aurora. That's their way, their opportunity to go for a full fledged buy. Uh, this sh w this one should be any. For OG. So much better start coming out from Keto and his man. Yeah, definitely a lot better from Keto. And you know, he is a player that uh, loves Mirage. We, we mentioned that. And even calling on this map, he's probably going to feel very comfortable. This is a great chance for OG to build some confidence and actually feel quite positive about this best of five. Nexius chops up Resalt. Really shouldn't be getting out of hand at any point here. And Roy don't have that sting to them at the start of this round with any pace, so... Oh, gee, look, he just crack the whip. And Fiku, UMP to try and hold the B-bomb site. Fortunately for him, it is only one player up in the apartments. And uh, Fiku deals with Norvi, or as, as Henry likes to call them, the Bartmans. The Bartmans. Yeah. The B-apartments. I know Henry tries to coin a few things. Some are a little bit more hit than misses, but some are massive misses, and these, this one... Is a miss. The Bartmans. The yeah. Bartmans. It doesn't quite land. The Bartmans. Well, it is now a 3 0 start for why, OG. Why, why, not, why not the Ballas? Because they have a Palace and a Ballas. The B at Palace. There is no Palace in B. Look, your apartment, your home can be your own Palace, it's all right? Alice. On the A-bomb side. All right, here we go. Byron coming in for Aurora. It's AK-47. It's no AWP for Deco. Breaking the name. Bra sorry, <laughs> breaking the, the smoke. Oh, well, the grenade did break, too. That's true. That's true. The Don't fragmentation worry, grenade. You're all good. You're all good. And I like this for Fiku. UMP still wielding it, pushing up deep to its apartments. Or apartments. Apartments. You're, you're, you're welcome, Hank, if you're watching, which I doubt. What's up, Hank? Hey, Case. 
out across all of Aurora. And we talked about some of the fast plays that they like to rock. We've seen that on map one. This is not that, right? This is quite slow, taking the map control. And the time is ticking. Fiku is actually pushing through the apartments. He's not alone. He's actually emboldened by the peak, the deep angle that AWP is taking in Moto behind him. So Fiku is gathering space and information and now trying to get through connector. Aurora have lost the first player. Nexus gets rid of him. There's Norvi dead first. Lackey has to trade it. Resmoke coming out of the palace now. Keto under the wood. Resmoke's just come in at the right time. And Aurora trying to come through connector. I'm sure Resalt will try and time this play from Palace with that connector push. But Fiku, in the meantime, is sprinting through T-Spawn, trying to get the flank in quickly. Oh, I like this. The double push. Ramp. That's a terrible lineup. <laughs> it did not work That out. is terrible. And Fiku's pushing Palace now. Yeah, he's coming around the back. That's information gathered. But Lackey starting to clear some more sandwich. He's got a decent position here to fight it. CT knows there's a player in ticket. Keto's on the ramp. Remember, the flank is here. That should secure the kill on Resalt. And the trade will be in in just a second here. Fiku, oh, just about getting the job done. A 4-0 lead for OG. That round was all on Fiku. Just run completely won single-handedly by Fiku, pushing in towards B apartments. Had Moto there to, uh, to set up the op and try and trade him out if needs be. Once he figured out there's no one there. And also I love the fact that one of the CDs pushed ramp while Fiku was pushing into its palace, making sure there was no possibility of the T sneaking in from uh, one of the two avenues of entry into the B bomb site, and with that, Aurora Gaming, these slower rounds aren't quite working out for them. In a the first buy round, it's going to be a bit of a, a flat one. Here we go. Ooh, Moto. That's a big shot on to Resalt. Resalt gone. Smacked out of that. Another commitment into the bomb site. Aurora sprinting, trying to flow over the bomb site itself with his pistols. Quite got close to the site, yet that bomb is still stuck at Tetris. It doesn't look like it's going to find an easy escape path, but who says they need easy? Aurora get through the jungle. I'm going to try the mind games here. Norvi diving down through underpass, making a lot of noise. Sick of and the bomb is coming through market. He's got eyes on Lackey. So there should be a kill here for Fiku. Ooh. Not so clean on it, but he knows that player's in apartments. And Norvi's just sprinting, dodging most of the utility, but Fiku is having a far better time here. He's also a 5-0 flawless start. Twelve and a half thousand dollars in the bank too, because, or twelve and a quarter, because he's uh, been getting most of the kills of the UMP. Yeah, money, 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 baby. Let's see. What's the last one? Is in a P90, right? Is it still like a hundred bucks or fifty? Hundred bucks. Mm, yeah. It is the the worst SMG for that. Kind of miss a P90. An Aurora. They've got the time out here. Five zero down. Yeah, OG proving that their CT side yesterday wasn't just. Uh, you know, something which was made to look good by Bedboom's T side. It is actually pretty damn solid. Much better coming out from them here as compared to the first map. Yeah, Aurora really struggling to figure out how to get into this map. Moto's got a ticket. Oh, that was close. That was close. Very fast, Moto. I really, I'm really enjoying watching Moto's uh, T side, sorry, CT side opping. Honestly, I've been saying it again and again throughout this entire week, but I feel like this is guy. Um, we're going to be keeping an eye out and on for for the future. For the future, one for the future. There yes. we go. Yes, this time the team solo mid does not count, as Launders would say. Man, someone save Valde. I feel, still feel he's got a few years remaining. And I don't Who? Think Valde. I thought you said Alu. Not Alu. Not Alu. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I thought you said Alu. Uh, Valde. And I just feel like uh, his final years could be being just wasted in the TSM project. Yeah, could be. Get, get, get Kirby back. Kirby's going to uh, GG Howl. Yo, yeah. Man, you're going to be seeing Apparently. the wild rosters coming out with Chinese orgs in the next few months, I'll tell you that. With a Shanghai Major on the, on the horizon, they need to, like, you know, like, making the Shanghai Major for every Chinese organization is, like, priority number one. Mm. So you're going to see some crazy stuff coming out. But then when you have Mongols, you have uh, Tai Lu, and then, of course, you have FlyQuest now. It's not going to be easy, but here we go. Modo playing a little bit more aggressively oh, with AWP. It's a weird position for the AWP. You don't often see it here, and that could yeah. actually be the element of surprise, but Norvi's seen him, and it's now a, Modo can't feel too comfortable because that bomb is going into the B bomb site. Heavy Guard and Fiku stepping up for the defense, and Fiku yet to die. The immortal Fiku has actually scared them off. Aurora now down to just two players. That grenade is perfect. Flank. Kenzie's flank's being watched, though, Blur. Being watched. Nexus. Oh! 
A lot of damage, but unfortunately for Nexius, unable to take that kill on Kenzie. They don't know. They, know. they don't know. They have they to know. They know Fika was there. They have to know the Fika's there, man. They've got to know the Fika was here. Deco! <laughs> oh! That is disgusting from Deco. Now he's going to watch along with 10 seconds left. Modo Sniper is quicker, more accurate, and OG yet to lose a round on Mirage. Quicker, faster, stronger, better is Modo. 6 and 0. Oh, I can see for the very first time a little bit of signs of frustrations on the faces of Norway and a couple of the players in Aurora. And to be fair, apart from a couple of the, the A executes have done, a lot of these default spreads spread outs they're try trying seems very discombobulated. There's no real timing in the way they're working with it. Sprinting down middle is Aurora with their forces. You think when you look at Mirage, you expect a, a much better team side of Aurora just for some of the players they've got here, but they haven't actually gotten into any jewels with the OG that seem favorable. I'd actually like them to just work with a pack mentality. I think that looks much better uh, from rather than what I've seen so far here. Every time they're, sp they're splitting up, like we saw them trying to take the fight towards A in the previous round with Moto playing towards default. At the same time, they're taking a fight towards B. Like, what's the reasoning there, right? If they're trying to go for a fake, if they're trying to, you know, throw a bit of a ruse. Then the timing's all over the place. As uh, well, an A get picked up. Hands of Kenzie. Let's regroup back towards A. This could actually work out. The problem is no utility, Dingo. It's got to be contact. Yeah, you mentioned the mob mentality, and that's certainly what Aurora are about to deploy on this A bomb site. Whether or not the mob will be effective. Mob rules. Yeah, we'll have to see. 40 seconds. Keto sees them, throws the utility out, overcommits at ticket. He's dead to resol. Looking a lot better here for Roy. The bomb plant is down. And it's going to be a retake now for OG if they want to win this one. And there has been like one recovered AK, or rather, one AK available, and the Deco on the scout. So, not exactly the best weapons here for Roy, despite having the extra the player. The plant, Dinko. But the plant is the key. It's not planted for these ramp players in the post plant situation. So, if they get the kill quickly and they oh, get on that oh, defuse, oh. it doesn't really look like that's going to matter because Resalt is digging them elsewhere on the map, and then he switches out to the rifle. Resalt does everything. How does he point. get those kills? I have no idea. That's filthy. All right, well, uh, six to one here. OG. Uh, they, they didn't have they any utility. First round to pistols. They didn't have any utility. The AK did nothing. It was a scout and the dig. Yeah. just destroyed them. And all they had to do, Dinko, was just work together and just get the bomb yeah, down. Yeah, maybe they'll understand that now. We'll see what they. There's a change up in the play style here for Aurora in the second quarter of this half. Yep. There we go. To charge out ramp quite quick. No util, just the going decision. in. Kito is standing in a perfect spot to try and deal with multiple players, and they've applied them with utility, and it's not a good look here for Aurora. In fact, the look is over until Resalt comes out swinging. Nice little double from Palace that draws them back into a round that's within touching distance, and that Deagle, oh, ho, ho, ho. oh, so close. It would have been just one bullet enough to anywhere in the body, and that would have been the kill on Modo. And Modo, better luck. Oh, thank his lucky stars because he's still alive. And look at the heavy god flank. It's the one that wins it here. Surely Resort can't do much more. He's in CT, gets cleared by Fiku, and Aurora unable to put two rounds together. It is OG dominating now on the CT side. Well, I did. Well, I was a fan of them going into the A-bombs together. I did expect them to use a bit of utility, Dinko. Uh, I don't know what the swing was coming up from Tetris, one by one by one. And OG would be very disruptive as well. Yeah, loss bonus, bomb plants. It all means there's lots of money for Aurora, but there's not a lot of rounds left. And remember, the storyline coming into this grand final was the fact that Aurora have gotten here without losing a map yet. Yeah. This is looking like what their first map loss, unless they can switch this around very quickly. And if they do lose a map, right, it's going to be OG looking at each other, channeling the inner Dutch, saying, if it bleeds, we can kill it. Predator, great movie. Yeah. Watched Alien the other night. Alien or Aliens? Alien. You know the scene where uh, the the chest monster comes out? Mm -hmm. uh, no one no one in the cast knew it was going to be happening? Yeah, I, heard, I read about that. Freaking great.
Well, well, you know what's a, that could be a bit of a jump scare, just like Fiku's flank is coming around the backside. Minute 20 seconds. Unexpected, unpredictable, and good night to players. Good night the round for Aurora, really. They're put to bed. Fiku's doing to, or rather, OG <laughs> is doing to Aurora what Aurora were doing to them. Yep. On the first map, and you'd love to see it. Yeah, it's great to see life in OG in this grand final. It's starting to get very worrying for our chances for a competitive best of five, but it looks like we've got one on our cards. Lackey's been unable to take over the server like he did on Anubis. He's now got his fourth kill. Four players to find in 45 seconds for Resalt and Lackey. I think once you lose two players instantly at the start of the round, you realize maybe this one ain't for us. Yeah. <laughs> Save those AKs. Maybe it's it's, it's the fact that they're being so... Like, how many flanks have we seen now from the V bomb site? Like four? They're actually going for this fight in middle. But you're right, yeah, there's been so many flanks through B. They just need a default one player out there, perhaps. Just watch for Fiku. I think they have to now. You have to commit a resource there. Now Fiku's showing he's going to do it over and over again, and he probably won't stop until you forcibly stop him. And it's not doing it like the same way any uh, you know every single round, right? We've seen him like different moves, yeah. different moves, slow things down, work with Moto, for example, push on it a little bit deeper. Sometimes just hold an angle, sometimes continue to hold W. So, oh, lucky, lucky. But even if they do, they they, they are running out of time. They are running out of rounds as well on this T side. Best case scenario now is eight four, and that seems very unlikely. You know the old, the old OG when they had Dexter and uh, yes, who else was there in the lineup? This is before Keto Flames, Flames and those guys. Their T side and Mirage before every like before Dexter left, I would have hazarded saying it was one of the best T sides in the world on Mirage. It was super super good. Obviously, pretty much a whole new team right here, but Fiku was a part of that lineup as well. So maybe you know Mirage could be a. Uh, could be a home map for them. This looks very solid. Yeah, Modo especially looks very, very good. 11 and 2. I don't think it's necessarily going to work against, let's say, a Virtus Pro style for Mirage, um, Virtus Pro's T side. Mm -hmm. But when it's doing these early fast plays or like, you know, we are not using Util properly, it's just the fact they're getting so much information. Every t every site Aurora's heading towards is like four CDs lying in wait. You can't, you can't, you can't play like that. Yeah. Look at this from Heavy God now. The Heavy God changes up the play. He's coming up through the underpass instead of down it. And it's Keto chopping him up inside of Ramp. It does not look like this round is going to be competitive until Deco and oh. Resol have something to say. Two kills through Ramp from Deco. He trades out his fallen comrades. And then Resol leaps out of Palace once again. He'll be towards Ticket. Fiku oh. is still alive though, and he's been an absolute nuisance to try and deal with. He dives off of the stairway. Sound cube being made. No assault can't turn in time. So it's all Deco. It all has to be Deco. And he doesn't know where Heavy God is. Surely communicated now. He was spotted last towards underpass or middle. And now confirms that he's on top of the stairway. And Deco is fighting him. But Heavy God has the high ground. Heavy God descends down onto the realms of the oh. mortal earth. And it's Deco with an immortal play that gives Aurora a must win round. Came down to the war, but what is this aggression from OG? We have Heavy God pushing underpass, taking the fight to his B apartment. The double. The double aggro hole coming out from Keto, and I think I think it was Nexius towards Ramp as well. And in the end, Deco having to go hero, surviving under Measly. I think it was like 13 HP or something in total, barely staying alive. But the thing is, the rounds have been kind of close, Denko. A few of them. So OG, you can see the money isn't that great. Great opportunity for Aurora though to get a fourth. Not again. Oh my God! Surely God. not again. He's coming around the back, but this time Kenzie's watching for it. This time Kenzie has eyes on the prize, and Heavy Guard has fallen. Modo commits deeper into the apartments. Will it pay off for the trade kill? Oh my god, Lackey! <laughs> Lackey from short takes Modo out of the round, and there's life in Aurora yet. They somehow find a foothold in this half. A third round will be collected. They will now break the money of OG, and heading into the last round of this first half, Aurora have the best chance to collect four on the T side, and that is doable. That is enough. Dude, we had X-Ray on, and even that looked like cheats to me. Yeah. That was insane for Lucky. Yeah, through short. Perfect <laughs> refire. Yeah, it's kind of crazy he got that while running up through short arches, just straight up into the apartment's window. 
kill with a UMP. Does his best work with his little weapon. But it's taken out of his hands quite quickly. And Aurora Gaming have had a lot of close rounds of OG, right? Coming down to the wire here and there. That's kept the money at modest. And then when finally Aurora get a couple of round wins here, they break the money swiftly for OG. So the last round of this half has to go the way of Aurora. And they'd be very good at the start of halves. So we've mentioned that, especially on their CT sides, right? They're really good at getting the ball rolling quite yep. quickly on the CT sides. So they could quickly shrink that gap if they win this fourth round and then the pistol going into the second half. 1M4, oh. it has a heavy guard, that's about it. Uh, it seems like Aurora finally have made the correct adaptations to expect some aggression from OG. Different look of aggression this time though. Keto, aggressive top middle. Is there a flash from his teammate? Is he going to go into this one dry? Reese, oh, Reese's looking away. And oh, they line up. Keto gets a double out of that play. Distracted as they were turning into the wall for the flash to go up middle. And Keto catches the perfect timing, but it's about to be play now for Aurora. Heavy guard is the one rifle that they had in this round. And it's now down after one single kill. Deco and Kenzie keeping them in the fight. And it is Modo coming through T-spawn. It is so touch and go for Aurora, but Deco over these last few rounds has been the shining light, being the hero that they need. This half will end with Norvi not getting a single kill. He will go 0 and 11. And perhaps OG will still go 9 3. Kenzie gets the confirmation of the position of Modo, decides he's going to leave the B bomb site and head his way into A instead. This is a winnable round for Modo, who's had one hell of a half. Kenzie has not, and Kenzie's overthinking it. He's really overthinking this. Moto getting closer. Kenzie making it rather obvious now, and he feels like he has to plant, so he's going to go over towards default on A. Moto's in middle, which means he has a fast rotation to either bomb side, but which will he decide to go to? Will it be short first into B? He thinks it's B. He thinks it's the B bomb site, and that's going to waste crucial seconds here for Moto. He will then find out that it's not B and get over towards that A bomb site. But this is given time for Kenzie to get into Palace, and it's a power position in a post plant. Moto has a smoke. He has a kit. This could be the move blood that gets in the round win. That's going to cause Kenzie to come out of Palace. That's going to cause him to panic a little bit. And surely Moto will have a shot at this. He's going to stick it. Kenzie doesn't think he's going to stick it. Post don't fake. Post don't fake. Kenzie can't get it done. And Moto holds the stick. And a little round of applause for himself. Because that is a heartbreaking round. For the side of Aurora to let slip right at the end. They so desperately needed four. But it's OG that will leave the first half of Mirage. Nine to three up. Yeah, I can't, I can't believe uh, he just overthought that so much. It was a 1v1. He was in a bomb site. He just planted the bomb, played it so many different ways he wanted to. He complicated things. And yeah, so of course, having the smoke really helps out as well. But, but he jumps out of Palace as well. Like you can spam that from Palace. Yeah, because I, I don't know. I just don't know. It's actually easier to spam from Palace as well. Yeah. So a bunch of shots coming out of the pistol. A reminder of how the half went down. But uh, it's just OG racking up rounds. All right, a uh, bit, bit, bit of a break for the, the halftime. We are about to wait. Uh, come back to desk, guys. Uh, some technical issue. Just wait for it. I'll call. Uh, all right. Um, Your audio sure is uh, going live. Going live on uh, I don't think so, man. Uh, uh, Blay, I'm uh, What's going coming on? to desk. Uh, I have no just, idea what's happening. I'll just come back to desk. I, I Give me a minute. I'll come back to I desk. What's <laughs> going on? I don't know what's um, going on. Yeah, well, we'll try and keep ourselves composed. The halftime break. Fortunately, the technical issues do happen. Guys, can you please call for a tech break? break. Uh, we're we're going to uh, go to a break, I guess. So we'll, we'll, we'll be right back when the action's ready to go.
Guys, I'm not able to control the systems. How? I don't know. What is this? Hello. Can you stop streaming? I have been surveying you guys for a couple Guys, I don't get this. Now. I'm trying to shut down the stream. The numbers have been... Hmm. Commander. My ego wants to face more. As you're aware, I... I'm trying my best, guys. I think we are hacked. Control. All I ask is for more. Do you agree? Yes, we do agree. See you in 2025. Guys, I'm coming to desk. And you can... You're going to be the game? Because the fact that OG, they're giving Aurora a taste of their own medicine from map 1, a 9-3 lead for Keto and his men. Magnificent stuff on his CT side. Yes, indeedy, Blur. Yes, indeedy. Uh, well, we have got ourselves Aurora with one hell of a comeback required. With four rounds, they could have done it. I don't know about three. Yeah, and also, Aurora are on a 15-map streak on Mirage, by the way. Well, that's about the end, isn't it? <laughs> it's looking very likely. It's looking grim. Oh. The Grim Fandango here. It's OGT side. It's going to be... Bit of a slow death. I thought it was going to be a fast B play. We do have one all the way towards top mid and one lurking towards ramp. We've had a variety of pistol rounds and one expert has a variety of markets and high odds awaiting you. So place your bets on the website and mobile app right now. One expert. Good game. Well paid. In round 13, this pistol. He's off to a slow start. A slow burner here for OG. They know if they win this pistol round, Mirage is nearly in their back pocket. The commitment into the B-bomb site is through. It flashes into the middle of the site. Resort going for a headshot. It's clean. And Kenzie, even better. Whoa. It's a shutdown as OG do not get through to the B-site in the fashion that they would have liked. Kiku now with Heavy God. Dead to the Kenzie headshot. Yeah, and Heavy God, I don't think can do really much here. Is ooh, able to find just a one. It's all very low as well. If you can isolate these duels... But to cross on over, he can do so. We've seen clutches from this position. This heavy guard. It's going to be so hard though, Dinko. It's going to be very difficult, but if there's a miracle to be had, perhaps you look to the god. He'll come out of the apartments. A couple of steps being made. And heavy guard held back at the window. There's half health now, but 52 left in play, and... He's doing all that he can. He is a competitor with a fierce competition streak, but it's not going to work out for him in this one. OG don't get a bottom plant, so a pretty weak force bio we're coming up here. And this does allow Aurora to get this start they absolutely require in the second half. Oh, yeah, they absolutely needed to get this one going their way. And, uh, yeah, it's a good start. Uh, nor uh, nor Norway? Norway? It's Norway, right? Nauri? Meowri? It's different. It's different. Yeah, but anyway, Norway looking good. I thought I was getting dyslexic there for a moment, Dinko, <laughs> but uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm not well, saying. It was in that cup of 1x bet you had. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you, it's something. It's a smiley face for you. I'll give you a smiley face. Oh, it looks like it's going to be sad faces for OG in this round, though, unless Piku and the D. Lucky! And Deco. A wombo combo on this A bomb site. Looking to try and keep their 15 map win streak alive here on Mirage. And it's all cleaned up here for Aurora. As you would expect. Nine to five. Quite a discipline round for OG though. They didn't spend too much money. Yeah, just losing just one player. Ooh, rifle picked up. There we go. Just one SMG. But OG didn't go for the force, right? So they want to get the buyout as soon as possible with rounds to play with. Yeah. I think that's the right call. Like you said, right? Not investing anything much at all whatsoever. And uh, now... Aurora CD side was actually quite dominant as well, but I don't think here's a problem with Aurora CD side here. It, it, you, you you are facing a deficit of four rounds. You don't have that that mental luxury of just being too aggressive, too hyper aggressive, right? You have will stop to be a little bit restrained. Fight being taken towards mid. Lackey, oh, that's not much you can do with MP9 from that range, buddy. But good trades. 
Yeah, back and forth. It's sick that Resort's been able to keep his team in this, but he needs to be Ooh. careful. Commits into the open with grenades in his hand. There was a little bit of a swing coming around that corner. Resort stepping up. Oh. It's another kill. He goes back into the fray once again. And the grenade, ooh, just about misses out on Nexius' head. That would have been a dunk that would have taken that 30 HP player out of the round, putting it all onto Kito. But instead, a 2v3, and plenty of players damaged up here for Aurora. The symbol of boost, put up one player inside of that boost in the bomb site. It's Norvi, who has yet to get a kill, but I hate to point it out, but it's a detail that you can't forget about. It's essentially 4v5 at the moment. He's going to be needed in this round. And he's given the perfect position to get at least one. I think I just Come on, Norvi. He's going to find both. Come on. He's going to find both. Yeah, he's got his first kill here on Mirage. And you said he's going to get both. I don't believe so. Kito now with a clutch. Smoke goes down to the window. You need to be careful here, Aurora. They don't give him 1v1 fights. They can go together. Utility over the top. Flashes decent for Kito. Oh, he's drawn it into the fight. And now it is just Deco, and he's been so good, but he's got an AWP. And getting out of the market with an AWP is not a comfortable position. It's quite claustrophobic, and Kito knows. He can just hold this angle. He's got the favor. Oh, God, what a shot from Deco. Holy hell. <laughs> Oh, I can't. I can't even. Like you, there's so many angles you have to worry about. That is so instant. When you, when you when you have to come out of that market, he didn't even jiggle out. Oh, it was just bang, instant headshot. Oh, you know, like shit. I feel bad for him, man. Like we have to get him whiplash checks here because that is just unbelievably fast from Deco. He played that so well. He read it. He read it as well. Like, what do you do when Deco comes for you? You die. Yeah, you get absolutely right. Whiz pass with the USP. Well, that is OG at least getting the bomb plant. Kido making it expensive for the CT economy, too. And they'll have a good buy here, OG. A decent amount of utility. That's a. And it's going to be a heavy A play and a missed shot from Deco in middle. Oh, Kevin. Ugh. He's been so good at this tournament. This is that spot oh. mid. Unfortunately, Deco nice. and Resold have started to become unplayable. Aurora have some heroes here, and Deco oh my God. may miss the opening kill of the round, but he's not missing much else. Miku slipped down into the sandwich. Easy, Deco, buddy. Don't do that. Don't do it. Oh, my goodness. He actually goes for it, <laughs> and he insane. wins it. He wins the fight. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't give a shit. He's no, he really doesn't. He doesn't at all. And now, ah! God, he's gone down. <laughs> Deco wins the fight with the USB. This is more like it. I love watching Deco play. <laughs> it's like he just literally got so annoyed, so pissed off. He's like, okay, that's it. There's I'm no done. risk management for Deco. There is no management. No. <laughs> Forget risk. How could I forget risk? I, miss, I, I saw risk. Yeah, we've seen him in Copenhagen. Yeah, he was great. Deco actually got that kill somehow. Then Heavy God having to walk out of Palace. Just players everywhere for him to deal with. And decision decisions here for OG. So they're going to go for a half investment. But boy, the scoreline's about to be 9 8. Yeah, how quickly the tables turn. Wow, you went the other way this time. The correct way, some might say. Nine to seven. I imagine never use a turntable. I should buy one. What would you use it for? To turn tables? Mm. Yeah, could, you know, I'm sure you can find other uses for it too. Grenade into middle. Kenzie blows open the smoke. Has a little look towards top mid to try and Ooh. drop one of these early players of OG and Deco stands on top of the stairs and oh, oh Fiku, that's a little too wide. Yeah, his his pelvis just shattered to a million pieces. They're coming back into the eight play here, OG. Remember, this is a half investment. They have thrown everything into the mix. Mm -hmm. They're gonna go for this play into the A bomb site, and I don't know. I feel like running into the A bomb site while Deco is here is almost a death sentence. And that probably will be the reality of the situation. Great flash. Deco. It's Kenzie this time instead. Get out of there, Kenzie. Heavy God takes down Lackey. Need to be careful, Aurora. You don't make too many mistakes here. You have to win this round. You haven't given yourself a good first half. There's not a lot of wiggle room. And they've let OG into the bomb site now, so it has to be a retake. Norvi, his second kill of the map, this time on Keto, and that plant is denied. Ooh, that was close. So it doesn't have to be a retake. Not yet, anyway. Smoke's gonna dissipate, though. 
How do you get the bomb down here now? They could try and manufacture a kill. Kenzie is very low. But I love what Kenzie's doing. He's, he's just not giving them anything. Oh! Alright, Modo. Uh, Don't be at CT goes down. Next is the Deagle Strikes. And suddenly what? OG are now in a 3 versus 2. And another shot will connect this time on a restart. 12 seconds, limited time, they just need to hide, they just need to survive, and now it is Resalt, surely he wins the round by just running away, the bomb plant needs to start right now and it won't, oh well my God. played for Resalt, just about getting away, that was a half buy for OG and they come so close, but time, time is the loss, time is the limiting factor. That was actually so close, so close, how are we able to find these kills, great job from Moto by the way, but... Pushing into the murder hole, like Aurora need to be careful they don't get too far ahead of themselves. Like uh, aggression is good, getting co being confident is good, but especially taking, with this comeback. So much damage done, to them. they don't even have the alt for Deco anymore. Uh, I know. OG still in the fight here, despite losing momentum in this game. They still have a small lead of one round. You know what they say, Deco, live by the sword, Die by it as well, Blaze. Is that what you're looking for? That's exactly what I was looking for, Dinko, you know. And Aurora, despite the fact they've come back into this. Ooh, nice nade. They are up. Uh, hands up, bloodied. Thing is, if OG win this round, they go to 10, and they also break the money of Aurora, which would push OG to 11 rounds. But Resol is confident, and the mid fights have been perfect. The CT side is so beautiful to watch for Aurora, and OG's T side has fallen flat. Biku having to make up for it. Drop her to the B bomb site. Solo! So close to that second kill. It's short, but it isn't there for him. Heavy Guard. Sprinting. Utility dodged by Resort. Does Ugh. detect Heavy Guard. Not clean on that first spray, but he's allowed to stand, allowed to fight. And no longer can we do that because Heavy Guard's might is too much to handle. And Heavy Guard keeps going forward. It's just Modo. And I say just Modo. He's got a chance at a 1v2 here with this AWP. He'll jump out of the apartments. Steps will be heard. Short flank. Short flank is the key here. Modo will have to have his back turned to it. And will he be caught by Lackey? Not instantly, anyway. Modo has a chance to turn and try and fight them, but it's tough here. He's stuck in a sandwich, and he's the meat. And it's delicious here for Aurora as they've tied things up 9-9. Nine to nine. OG, do not break their economy Flawless. Here. Yeah. CT side so far, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't say flawless overall. I like, mean, I mean, yeah, <laughs> technically but, flawless. But, but technically, the rounds have been flawless in the streak. And that, that will start to make OG feel a little deflated. Because you had such a sick first half, and that huge lead that you had is gone. It's completely dissipated into the ether, and you blink it and miss it, I, I guess. I mean... We saw a little hack happen to Sky Esports Master Studios. <laughs> it looks like it's happening to OG's PCs as well, yeah, Dinko. Yeah. They've crashed. <laughs> the blue screened. The BSOD. Yep, the BSOD of death. Yep, it's come through. <laughs> OG, need a restart. Oh, man. Need to reboot in safe mode. AK-47 in the hero hands of Heavy God. One expect odds favor Aurora now. Aurora are showing why they are a great team at this level. The fact that they can have such a terrible first half and still find the tenacity and the ability to come back into this half. Lackey under the wood. OG trying to steam into the safe on site. Lackey, oh, they line up. They melt at his fingertips. And Heavy God, with his heroic hands, must pull off one of the most unthinkable unfathomable clutches here at Sky Esports Masters. He stands on default. Oh, Another oh. headshot. No way. And perhaps the unthinkable can only be completed by a god of the heaviest fashion. He'll look for another headshot, but a result will crush him. And it is now 10 for Aurora. They take the lead on Mirage. I can't believe they pulled this one off. I, I was, was a 9-3 half. I was writing this map off. I thought it was going to be, you know, things tied up. It was a 9-3 half, and Aurora with the first team to hit double figures. That's actually insane. This team just, just doesn't seem to get phased by anything. No, like, they don't. Doesn't matter what the score line is. Doesn't matter. Because they were laughing about the, like the, the they were losing. Thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay, that's the moment for me that is a little worrying. <laughs> like <laughs> for OG, it's, these guys aren't even shaken by that. They're actually unhinged, Dinko. <laughs> unhinged, yeah. 
one minute. The door of OG is blown off his hinges. Nexus has got himself under the window. Kenzie was looking for a peek over the top of the smoke, but couldn't quite see anybody. Perhaps he'll detect Modo. Sniper rings out through the smoke. A lot of dangerous engagements going on early in the round here, but none of them actually netting a kill. First blood will be drawn now with Moto taking that kill over the top of the connector smoke onto Kenzie. Minute 10 left in the round. Aurora to show that they're capable of winning 4v5 conversions if they want to head to 11 here. As it's finally the first T round for OG. Looks like it's going to be a B finish, a split through the apartments. Don't Lackey, do one for one with Nexius. And the bomb now goes to A instead. So we're looking over there. Who's defending it? It's none other than Deco the Destroyer. Fiko in the apartment. Smoke clears. Norfi dead. Deco must destroy their world. And the bomb is planted. Not quite the atom bomb. But still Deco could be a destroyer of worlds. Modo. Results on the other side of the map, man. He's still thinking that this is the David. flank's going to be coming in. Oh, I don't think... The money's not great. Yeah. Oh, Deco. He's going to go into the murder hole. There is no save to be had. That's the weapon worth saving. It's called a murder hole for a reason. Yeah, everyone goes in there. It doesn't come out. Creepy. And after uh, seven rounds in the eighth, OG, find a tenth. Yes, finally. Finally, they push through to that 10th. Terrorists win. Well, the lead is short-lived from Aurora. And because OG have been doing damage throughout a lot of these rounds, we'll take a look at the money for the CT side of Aurora. I don't think it's going to look too pretty here. Let's see here, yeah. It's not pretty at all, Blood. <laughs> Three players on pistols, two on rifles. Yeah, do you think they're going to... Eco, because they do have a bit of breathing room. Nope, they bought already. Full eco. It was a Full rhetorical oh. thing, oh, but oh, all right, thanks. Yeah. Well, I was like, all right, Bly, I know you. you get I got money. eyes. I can see. Can you see that? Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. Yeah, they they bought. They full invested. So Norway's having a mare of a game. Like 20, 20 rounds in, has got two kills. Yeah, he had a whole half without a single frag. So I don't think he's having the best of times here. So hydrating. That's point one kills per round. Yeah, I think he's probably aware of that. <laughs> he probably doesn't want to think about it too much, though. Aurora can win rounds like this. We've seen it too many oh, times. They can win rounds without rifles. Yes, they can. And now we've got two of them, so... To be fair, um, like, Mirage isn't necessarily the sort of map where, you know, you can kind of mess with the uh, the defaults of the T's, like, let's say, Anubis, for example, where you can just, like, push a lot of areas together at the same time. Mirage is a little bit more tricky. Has to be a little bit more... Restrained with the aggression, and this could be the perfect call from OG Dinko. Yeah, the MTB bomb site, it is a perfect call. It might actually just be a safe call right away from Aurora. Yeah, brilliant read. Brilliant read. All the conditioning ending in a, just a fast contact B play, and it this should be the save. Yep. They nice. don't have a kit either. Mm, do you want to hunt if you're OG? B could kill because he has money. Maybe not anybody else. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I guess you could allocate a couple of players, maybe. It'd be worthwhile trying to get some of these weapons out of the hands of Aurora. But that's 11 rounds for OG now. Mirage looks back on again for them. It looked like it was complete and utter collapse. They have expelled the hackers from the PC. Yes, finally. They did. They rebooted in safe mode. Yeah, installed Norton, and uh, here we go. We're ready to go. Other antiviruses are available. Or the best antivirus, common sense. Yeah, true. Don't download any viruses. It is so annoying how. Oh, here comes a fight. So you lose Lackey. Is that it? Yes. There's no need. <laughs> there was no need for Lackey to peek there. Like, there was barely a like, couple of seconds remaining. And he had a deagle, he had a full purchase spider. He just like swings in. Like, oof. Well, now he doesn't have much. Like, why? I don't think he should be investing behind this. One exit bet now believe in OG. Odds favor them to close this map, and I favor them to close this map too, because look at the weapons. Oh, look at the start. Resalt good for one, but then traded instantly by the AWP of Modo. Essential kill from the sniper. 
M4 retrieved, however. Bomb well, getting picked up, and now it's going to be rejoining Fiku. Oh, is he going to aggress? Oh, Modo. That would be insane if Kenzie actually walks up, <laughs> considering he knew what the op was. That would actually be mental. Please don't, Kenzie. Don't do it. This is so crazy when Kenzie, he's alone. He is alone. Playing anti-flash, looking down towards underpass, Bro. and they're creeping up behind him. He's about to peek up, and Kenzie can't get a single kill. No trade either. <laughs> Why are you sticking around there alone for this I guess long? you can't fall back anymore when you have no one with you. But so he had, like, a long yeah, time yeah, ahead of him. Yeah, falling back. All right, Deco boosted up on the double stack. It's short. He's got Norvi, who's been a bit of a pacifist on this map. This time, he's delivering some impact. The Tech 9 coming in. Deco moves with him. Norvi needs another. And absolutely will collect that. So, Bomb is now down on short. He knows it's B. Yeah, and Fiku is trying to get by. But Norvi, what a time to strike. What a time to have impact. And now he must clutch alone. Fiku, grid awareness to check connector. 30 seconds remain just under, in fact. And oh, Norvi spamming down through the smoke. Finally, Norvi arrives to the server. That was such a scary <laughs> round. For uh, Aurora. Oh, that that's so heartbreaking though for OG, man. Because that's like one of the most important rounds of the game. And that three plays so coming up short. And yeah, you, are, you have such better weaponry. You're in such a good position. And Aurora is still able to come out on top of the battle. I mean, you had three players short. They had Fiku dropping out towards B. But I, I like the heads up play from the short players. So like, Alright, we, we're just going to take the fight here. Can't and play it safe. It was all tricks. Pushed up top middle. This time has support. Has people looking through window. And Kenzie's getting very aggressive, clearing out the boxes soon. And that smoke is up, signaling there has to be a player around it somewhere. Kido's aware. Oh, Kido is aware, but dealing with a threat is another problem in and of itself. Because the smoke, uh, sure, it will fade away. And now he's exposed if he's dead in the open to the window player. And Kenzie is passive inside of that smoke. Not clean. Not clean with it at all. And Kenzie's looked pretty rough over these last few rounds. This map hasn't been a good one for him. Fortunately for him, his teammate in Resalt has been incredible. 24 kills. Lackey. Play for OG coming to the Zay bomb site. Smoke erupt. Spam through the smoke. Nexius connects onto Lackey. A 3v4. Disadvantageous position here for Aurora despite having some favorable fights. Nexius is committing towards CT, but he's so low and he's not alone. Flash goes around the corner. Nexius with a quick reaction. Deco in the AWP. And it is now just Deco. And one that he will not win. Aurora collapse. OG head to 12. And it looks like we're heading to a 1-1 tied scoreline in this best of five. Unless Aurora will pull off something with whatever they have remaining here. Frustration written face of Kenzie. Yeah, he's really had a rough go of things in mid. Yeah. Back-to-back -back rounds right now where Kenzie's just being a liability at mid. There's no other way to put it. An OG. He has such, the, he has such a great advantage on Keto right there. Yeah, he did. But I think the two reliant and individual hero plays uh, are Aurora. So when two times. players go missing on the map, it's it's they're still here on like the last round of regulation. But yeah. Imagine if Norvi's having a better game. Imagine if Kenzie wins a couple of his mid fights. It would have been enough here for Aurora, but it looks like that 15 map win streak here on Mirage is about to come to a close. This is what they have to bring to the battle, to try and get it into overtime. Seen stranger things, Denko. If overtime happens obviously the reset of the money comes back yeah and aurora then will have a great chance of it but this does not look good for them they go for a risk they go for a palace play resalt dead heavy god defense palace with everything he's got and aurora down to three players this best of five has got legs now it turns in to a 1-1 one -one. we're at least guaranteed four maps today if og can take these final three kills This will be the first map that Aurora have lost here at Sky Esports Masters. First time they've lost Mirage in 16 times they've played. This is looking unlikely. Kenzie can at least pick up the MP9, perhaps. But Heavy got still looking around. Ow. Fiku. It's a fake. He's faking it out, gathering information on V. He'll confirm to his teammates, oh, there's presence inside of the B bomb site, go into A. 
And Kenzie, he has a chance here to redeem himself. The last few rounds in middle. If he can have a polished moment from Palace. But the Molotov goes in, they consider him. He can't peek, he cannot deny the plant. And Aurora Gaming must retake in a 3v4. Heavy God is still lurking around ramp. And Kenzie's caught, chopped out, and Aurora will fall on Mirage here. Norvi will throw everything he's got back into this round. They have no smoke, no kit, and now no hope. Aurora's flawless streak. Sky Esports Masters comes to a close. They lose their first map. It is OG that take Mirage, and this best of five is now tied at one apiece. Yeah, and I think uh, the, the fact that for OG, considering what a, a massive start it was, 93, you can see it slipping out of your fingers and then get able to get second win and bounce back. I think it's a good statement to the mentality of this team, right? Uh, we, we had our doubts. We, you know, we have Aurora as a favorite over here, but the fact that OG able to make them bleed despite Aurora battling it out. And suddenly, the beast that is Aurora, yeah, they can bleed. They can bleed. OG, show us that. And obviously moving into the next map, it's it's got a feel like OG have, have actually got some life in this series. The first map of Mara uh, of of rather Anubis made it feel like it was going to be a, a one-way street. Yeah, it, it did feel like that, right? And especially for uh, for the side of Aurora as well. Again, I'm not a big fan of some of the way they played some of these rounds. The first half, sure, they got completely shut down by uh, OG just being so very aggressive. But on the CT side, uh, in can see some of the plays with mid. I'm not a big fan of it. Uh, maybe a little too reliant on getting multi kills time and time again, instead of trying to play it a little bit more structured, playing in a you know in, in a tag team way, so to speak, to take uh, to steal yeah. something from the wrestling parlors. But uh, yeah, overall, OG they get it done at least in their map two, which is a good sign. And map number three, I believe, is going to be ancient. The pick coming in from OG, where they've seen we've we've seen they can play that. Yeah, we've definitely seen they can play. We'll see how this series will pan out. The best of five now tied one to one. We're going to go to a break. And when we come back, we've got map number three of this best of five coming your way.
Evans. What have you learned? You're watching the Sky Sports Masters powered by AMD and it's Grand Finals Day and a Grand Final yeah. it is. We're one map apiece now with OG versus Aurora. Aurora had this flawless run to this stage of the Grand Final, but as soon as they go up against OG for the second time in this competition, OG draw blood. OG draw blood, they get a little bit of uh, a taste of vengeance, right? Losing in that opening matchup and also after that loss they suffer on their first map pick, which was an Anubis, but also the 15 map streak uh, on Mirage for Aurora comes to an end here. Yeah, R.I.P. F's in the chat. Yes, F's in the chat all around for Aurora, and in particular, two performers for Aurora in Kenzie and Norvi, who really had a tough time, especially Norvi in that first half, and then a Kenzie in the second. Yeah, you rarely get to see 
both these two players have a rough time, right? You usually see Norway really have anti-kill rounds, and see someone coming to the zone as well. And also, by the way, for those of you who tuned in uh, on that in that game, we had a little bit of a, a, a nice little skip thing on my Sky Sports Master announcing the fact that there will be a second edition of Sky Sports Masters in the summer of 2025. I think uh, hopefully this time it should be uh, where it belongs on land. Yes, absolutely. 2025 is going to be packed full of counter strike Guys, Sports Masters are going to be a part of that. So, Heavy God, certainly a part of Mirage. Uh, he he was 100% MVP. Uh, 1.43 rating, 25 kills. Heavy God was an absolute beast. Oh, he was an absolute beast. Just absolutely... He's back, baby. He's back. Uh, it started off with a 4K on, uh, on, on on a CT pistol as well. The first round, getting a clean 4K. And you're like, is this going to be a sign of things to come for Heavy God? And indeed, it was. It was writ in the stars right there and uh, yeah there was a burning bush everything else you know all the holy elements all the yeah godly stuff all that stuff all that stuff the seas yeah. parting and everything well the heavy god certainly going to keep an eye on him as we head into ancient now mm -hmm. ancient a, a map that how do you feel we're, we're going to see aurora play now do you feel like he's going to be a bounce back uh, yes, uh, I, I feel so, but also I, I feel like for Aurora, especially on this uh, on this T side, they're going to take a little too long. One thing we saw from OG where they were not afraid to, on Mirage especially, right, pushing extremities of the of the map. We saw A ramp pushes coming in, we saw the B extremity, B apartments play coming in with Piku multiple times as well. And I think that's something that's going to be happening from OG. I, I, I think we saw only one or a couple of ancients being played by OG. And one thing which we noticed was they weren't afraid, they weren't shy on a CT side from, you know, taking fights with A main gathering information info is everything in counter-strike right and once that happens no matter if you got some really good aimers right on the side of on the side of aurora when you be walking into a bomb stack a bomb site with nexius moto and heavy got lying in wait for you it's not going to really pan out your way so uh 100 i believe aurora should be bouncing back but i think this one's going to be a way more competitive affair as opposed to what we saw in anubis and what we saw in the first half of mirage well aurora lose 13 11 and there was actually moments there where it looked like they could have won mirage and that's with norvi and kenzie kind of being missing from the usual standard is that an, a positive play I guess you, you can call it a positive. I think Result really stepping up was a cool thing, right? He's been kind of middling uh, in his tournament so far. I mean, again, he really hasn't had to do much. He really hasn't had to do much heavy lifting because he's been Leon Lackey and Deco and, and Norway and everyone just thinking stepping up to the plate. But the fact that he's able to deliver and pull off a lot of very critical rounds for his team when things are looking grim, uh, I, think that was a, I think that was a good sign overall. Uh, but yeah, you can clearly see a much more equal fracking distribution on the side of OG. Everyone chipped in. Everyone had a uh, everyone had a role to play in that uh, in that comeback mini comeback they had in the very end of the game. But mm. uh, I think for OG, it's going to be a bit of a bit of fresh air in their lungs and their sails as well. They're like, all right, guys, take a take a deep breath. You know, just forget it's a best of five. Now it's a best of three. We've, yeah. The first map's done. Uh, we lost that second map. We managed to pull it off. Now we just have to win one best of three. We can get this done. Yes, and that is coming up in around 45 seconds time as we're getting into our ancient matchup. Uh, I, f I do still think Aurora going to be able to bounce back in the series, but I, I think the fact that Heavy Goats have back-to-back -back good maps, it's, uh, it's definitely looking solid because he was performing well in the losing effort, and then when anybody else steps up coming into map two, have you got still fragging out, and then you have a lot more output from OG. And, and I think that is the uh, the win condition here for OG against Aurora, right? Like, and that's something which has been missing for Heavy God. Heavy God was looking pretty grim. He's looking, his frown was, his smile was upside yeah. down the past now, few days. But right now, he's, he's smiling. He's actually smiling. He's emoting yeah. in the server as well. He's looking very good. Uh, I hope Valve never introduces emoting in a server uh, at all. Please, that was just an expression. But apart from that, yeah, I think uh, Heavy God being activated is definitely going to be win condition here for OG. And hopefully they're able to pull it off. But that being said, you can never, ever, ever count Aurora out of the game, Dinko. No, and you definitely can't count out 1x bet either. Turn casual viewing experiences into a whole new thing. High odds for tournament matches await you on the 1xbet website and mobile app. As we get into OG versus Aurora on Ancient CT side, it's start here for Aurora. And we talk about how they can get off to good starts in their CT side. We've seen that on Anubis. We've seen how good their CT side was on Mirage. It nearly saved a disastrous attacking affair. And look at this play for OG. So it's heavy into the A bomb set, but there's a flank already coming in. A flank already coming in. Lackey is behind them, and they have no idea. Moto might have heard a step though, must have, because he stayed committed to look at the backside and Reslot goes down. How does it go from hero to zero in a second for Aurora? Just 
just a little bit more patience there from Lackey, and I think that was a perfect move. But now it becomes a lot more difficult, and Kenzie's coming back in with those dual Barrettas. OG put the bomb down, and they're looking pretty good now to try and close out this first round of Ancient. And that's the that's pretty much just the, the tail of this team, right? Hero to, zero to hero most of the time, but sometimes it can be the other way. Heavy got by Norway as well, and yeah, not much against he could do a clean, clean round coming up from OG. And if only if they were looking to take those fights by themselves, if, uh, not taking those fights by themselves, if only was playing the info game, waiting for rotations and fighting together. Those are pretty much five individual duels being uh, taken by every single member of, of Aurora and Dad Dinkle. Let me tell you. Let me open my notebook here. That's uh, rule number 15 in my rules of Counter-Strike. That's not how we play the game. Yeah, well, you know, but we're not on camera. You don't have to fake that you actually had a notebook in your I head. actually have a notebook. I've had a notebook at every desk I've ever worked, Dinko. You can take a look at the camera. You can look at the vaults. <laughs> it's there. Don't you dare. Don't you gaslight me. Damn, all right. All right. I'll, I'll gaslight you back. <laughs> No gas being lit around here. All gas, no brakes though for OG as they go in towards the safe bomb site. Smoking towards CT and Donut. It's quite comfortable there for OG. Mikey on the move Nexus. And that is a pretty good start for Aurora's CT force by here. The second round force in the CT side, it can be sometimes questionable, but we know what Aurora are capable of. And Kenzie through the smoke nearly denies the plant. Deco's Deagle dishing out death, and now we're looking at a 2v4, a retake is on the cards, and Fiku will fall, Aurora with SMGs and pistols comes swinging into the attack, and a force buy on the CT side has paid off. That's a classic Aurora round right there, Dinko. It, really is. it is such a classic Aurora round, uh, Aurora round, beg your pardon. A uh, terrible pistol round, and then just like that, they come swinging and kicking. OG to the curb. Kicking him to the curb. And that never feels good. OG with a Galil, an AK-47, Tech-9s, and Deagles. They're going to try and fight back with a force of their own, and the war has begun. The force by wars. Call it the, uh, the FB wars. Yeah. Not to be confused with Facebook. Dead, of course. Meta. That's a meta joke. That's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> well, oh. Kenzie, good headshot. Moto is taken out without a problem here for Aurora. Oh. Fuku so had to trade and does so. Good reply. Incendiary being lobbed in by the CT as well. And I like the repositioning from Kenzie. Heading straight inside of Cave. Where Fiku. Fiku. Oh. Fiku. Fiku. Fickle. Fickle. Fiku. Picked lackey, up. Lackey. Oh. Yeah, well, Lackey under a lot of pressure, but Campbell's pressure he forms himself into a diamond. Winnable here. Offers himself for two. And the bomb is going to go down, and just about. Keto will escape with limited health. A 3v2 for Aurora to come back in on this retake with both of those OG players being low. It's so quick. Yeah. For Deku and Resol, Aurora back to their CT old ways. I bet Norby wishes he got a kill in the first few rounds too. He's like, it can't happen again. Please, it's happening please. again. God, please. No. <laughs> Zero three. But he will, you know, it's still early days, but, you know, he's probably having a nightmare. Do you have nightmares? Not really. Really? I haven't lived that much yet, Dinko. Wait, <laughs> wait a few years. Thank you. Yeah. It's great. It builds character. No, anytime I feel like I'm going to have a nightmare. Yeah. I like watch a comedy movie or some positive music before I fall asleep. How do you know you're gonna have a nightmare? You you, you sleep, you're asleep. Because I see you some traumatizing stuff, you know, during the day. Yeah, and you think I'm gonna have a nightmare? Right? Yeah. What what did you watch yesterday? Last night. <laughs> <laughs> I watched um, the Forty Year Old Virgin. Cool. Yeah, that's that's a great documentary. <laughs> Yeah, your performance was sick, bro. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> OG down on a three pistols. Yeah, and it's uh, it's not going to really pan out too well for them. Obviously, it would have been a great situation to try to get bomb plant. Lackey's grenade. Perfectly timed. Oh, my goodness. You Holy don't get a grenade much better than that in Counter-Strike. Lackey gets two kills off the back of it, too. Kenzie to close it in a 3-1 score line. He's on the board, but OG now have money again. Are we 0-4? His nightmare continues.
Yeah, his nightmare is becoming reality. Did you know, like, uh, we were talking about Stallone earlier, Rambo. Yeah. Have you watched a movie by Stallone called Stop Him and Mumble Shoot? No. It's one of his, his worst rated movie ever. And you know why he took it? Why? Because Arnie and him used to have a, co like a rivalry, right? right? Rivalry. So Arnie, oh, I remember him ta talking about this in the Yeah, interview. so Arnie actually uh, baited, uh, him, into baited him to picking yeah. the movie, and it was the worst rated movie ever made for him. <laughs> yeah, I remember hearing about that in the interview. Ooh, good util damage here being dealt by the CTs. As it is going to be Kenzie, who is looking to redeem himself from what was a bit of a lackluster performance on Mirage. And Heavy stands towards mid from the rest of the CTs. It's a, it's, it's a pretty standard default setup coming out from them, but OG, so far, I haven't really found an answer. Still early days, though. Zero flash. Oh, the What? Up. Okay. That is devastating for OG. This feels like it's an eco round, but it's a full buy from OG. They've been waiting so long to get the rifles back into their hands, and they're just getting absolutely melted. Heavy God holding the extremity at elbow. Really greasing up his elbows and getting into the fight, but it's just one kill for Heavy God before he also meets the fate of his fellow teammates. And OG not getting anywhere near the bomb site. Never mind getting a bomb plant. So no money really left over to get a real full purchase again. And it's starting to get real rough for OG to kick off Ancient. This just has more shades of Anubis rather than Mirage. He got both his kills at wall bangs. There was two wall bang kills coming in from Kenzie. Holy hell. So Tech 9 surely here for OG. It's a timeout taken by them. Yet to purchase anything, so perhaps just trying to figure out what they want to get out of this round. Keto 0 and 4 as well. To uh, find success. We will see overpass, guaranteed. But overpass is guaranteed, indeed. But Inferno, yet to really come into play. I don't mind Inferno, honestly. It does go over the distance. Inferno, I think, is a very fitting decider. But uh, this has been a, a, a rough T side from uh, from almost everyone. It seems like this game, like everyone's like, kind of had a rough T side. T side struggles. Will they continue in this round? Deck out from the big box. Oh, I thought he would have hit that shot. I thought he got it. Yeah, me too. But uh, just about misses it. Now he's jumped up. back into the temple. Lackey's rotating over to try and help him. Nexius on the deagle. Okay, OG. They're into the side. Bomb plant is secured, but round looks like it's going to be secured too. Heavy God's Deagle. It's a simple call. It's very effective though for OG. The rifle now standing on default in the hands of Moto. OG looking to collect a second, but it's not going to be easy for them. Norby with his first kill. Off this map will smoke off the bomb. Tap that defuse and try and draw these OG players in, but it's not a full stick. And time is starting to tick. Aurora need to get onto it now, and now that stick is through. Jacko holding Ye main run out. It's a good headshot, and the defuse is in. Aurora win the round. But it gets very scary there. OG had a shot at closing that one. Danger averted. Whew, that looks scary <laughs> indeed. The Deagles, man. And Heavy God still showing he is going to be a problem. He's always going to be a problem, no matter what the scoreline might, might show itself. So buy back for OG, finally, they return to a purchase. Their previous gun round did not go well. In fact, they got melted in V-Lane by Kenzie. So they're hoping for a better story this time. Lackey running out. Fiku holds in. What? It's crazy for Aurora. Where's the flash? I don't know. <laughs> uh, Norby's turn. This time, he'll actually get a kill. He's dead. He'll take a lot of damage. It does go down to Moto. Results turn. They don't check this. To season his opponents. He doesn't oh, check this. Because yeah. you just killed two players up here. Why would you expect Result, right? So he walks right in. Nexus nearly gets back to the kill. This is God. Sneaky, sneaky Kito. Crazy from Result. I, I, I Aurora saw have some head scratchers. I, I still don't understand like, what the decision making is. So you get the kill. 
You don't see anyone towards the lane. You know there was an opera towards the lane. You have no control towards the mid and just run out with a knife out. Either some really bad comms or it's a head. I mean, it's still a head scratcher. I, I don't get it. Thirty-five seconds. Deco still hides away with his ult. It would be a nice save for Deco. He's not in a position to really be able to win this round, and Modo has an idea as to where Deco might be, and is just cutting off the position outside of Jaguar in case he has to come onto the ledge. Modo trying to just keep him trapped so he can't run away. And Deco, it's all about patience. And we know that Aurora sometimes lack that. And yep, he lacks it now. Timing though for Moto. Oh my god, the timing is so ridiculous. He literally holds that for so long, and then the timing to move off, Deco decides to walk out. <laughs> it's so wild. Very unlucky there for Moto. That's frustrating. Timing uh, given. Timing taken. Yes. Second for OG, the first half of the pistol. And Deco happy to save his AWP. We'll see if that becomes a key piece in this round for Aurora. OG get their second T round here on Ancient. We've kind of lost the the full steam ahead approach in this series. I think Anubis had just the excitement of the beginning of a best of five final. Yeah, yep. so much aggression, so many fights all of the time. And this is a marathon now. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely become a, a marathon where you're trying to conserve your energy across the game. You know you've got to go into the next map. You know regardless of the result here, overpass will be played. Heavy Guard and Nexius coming towards respawn. Respawn sets up. Nexius dead first. Heavy Guard to trade it. Still good information being gained there. Two, two player lean. Means that Aurora thinking it might be a potential A play, but that's going to force Deco to post himself towards outside of A main. Meanwhile, two players here playing reasonably aggressive for the CTs. It's going to be Kenzie inside of ja inside of Jaguar and uh, Norway onto its pillar. Malaki deploying a bit of utility towards elbow. And for 45 seconds on the clock, they have a lot of utility to go for this retake. Sorry, put put his uh, side take. They have all top though. Kenzie waiting inside of Cape is a big shot from Heavy God. Even better from Modo. And over OG overrun this B bomb site. Kenzie not in a position to deny the plant. Not in a position to win the round really. Fiku coming in towards him is going to be the alerting system, and while well, he deals with the threat quite quickly, Deco once again has to save an OG. That's a more controlled, successful round, and Heavy God delivering the impact. That's actually such a such an Aurora round from OG right there, right? Like, it's a 4v4, they immediately go for the call, just group up together. Uh, and yeah, there was a failed Molotov whatnot, but they didn't really take too long. They didn't wait for like 30 seconds or 25 seconds, they went for that play. Pushing on in, good spacing, uh, good angle being held by Moto as well, just in case there's going to be an extra CT. And I love the patience of Viku not to push into Cave too early on. He was just going to be there as a contingency in case they found out there was a player inside a cave. Well done from OG. One of the better T side rounds I've seen from them so far in this uh, grand finals. And all of a sudden, Dinko, in spite of the fact it was 5 and 1, it was signs of life. Looking a little bit more competitive again here. Definitely a lot more competitive. One expert have the favorite still as Aurora. He doesn't have the lead, but how long would that lead be there? Because this round is the same thing Fast man. And that's about it. Nexius on the edge of that elbow smoke. Finds out what that saved AWP is and feels the brunt of the damage done by it. So Deco with that kill early doors. They can retrieve as well, Deco. Remember, this is pretty much a full eco for the CTs. Deco understands his mission, though. He understands that he has to be the one that wins this round. So he's all over the place, all over the show. He needs to do exactly that. Gathering up once again for this B. Oh, <laughs> hit! And talk about a hit. That's a... That's a knockout punch. That's a knockout punch. Just a Tyson punch if I've ever seen one. You can't retrieve the gun, however. But a 5v3 with an AK. Actually, no, they have. That is so quick from Result. Oh. Timing. Oh, yeah. 
has actually allowed safety here for OG to get out towards the bottom of the ramp. Will they stay committed in towards B? Resort was last detected over towards Long. He's got the AK-47 now. He just needs one extra kill, and his teammates are in a really good spot to try and win this. Well, he might even get more out of it because the AWP is the first player facing. you got to favor the 8K in close quarters combat with the proactive play. And the crossing into the site. The 8K47 rings out. Moto takes down his teammate, but Resol doubling up should put this round out of the question for OG. But Moto, he needs to oh. find the answers, and he's getting spammed down. He goes to the dual bar. Red is low HP inside a cave. He's so oh. close. He's so close. But Deco starts and finishes the round. He was the one saved weapon, the only weapon worth talking about. But Resalt steps up, Deco delivers, and Aurora push forward to six. Massive 3k from Resalt, but also Deco, he lands a wall bang, Dinko. The wall bang, and then rips out his pistol. What a shot, though. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah, that was Whoa. really sick from his POV. And also the fact, like, the moment he gets the kill, he just barrels down to its ramp, picks up the AK-47, gets two kills, and despite Moto's heroics, Overkill with the Deagle as well. What a round stolen away by Aurora. And OG, ugh, I'm not going to be very happy with the way that played out. Oh my god, Nexius. Lackey is just found out instantly. It's a great opener here for OG. Is there any more where that came from, though? Resalt trying to pull it back. He's in the midst of all the chaos and start of the smokes, nearly touching with Kuto. Look at those steps. Crossing out towards the boxes, we'll toss some utility in. These OG players, and they're forced back, but a wall bang headshot from Fiku. It's a dangerous game you play there, Kenzie. And Fiku comes out on top of it. OG up two players at the start of this, and it really does feel like a save call now with OG heading into the B bomb site. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, a lot of that. A lot of that, and sometimes. Graphic scenes. It can be deadly, Dinko. It can be dangerous. And Aurora, they had no protection from it, and here we are. Round number four for OG. Hard fought, but they get it done. Hard fought. This game looks like it's going to be hard fought all the way through. It's great to see OG level up throughout the tournament and, and be able to give Aurora a great uh, fight. And level up in, in, in this series as well, right? Yeah. They look so, so just out of it on, on their map and Anubis that they just somehow rebounded back on Mirage and didn't fall through at the end when Aurora were bouncing back. And it looked like Aurora were going to just pull, pull off the, uh, the comeback. Instead, they, got, they closed it out. Result. Heavy God, if he finds anything here, it's such a common point. So he checks that first. Yeah. Just getting here for the money of Aurora. Because if Resalt saves, he could have dropped another weapon. That is looking like Lackey's going to have to play with a pistol. And obviously, he would have loved a premium weapon to play with. And obviously, he could have got that if Resol had survived. So Heavy God. Making a difference here. That's a timeout for Aurora with the tactical variety. We're going to be talking over some of the possible problems on the CT side and why they can't find su uh, consistent success. Double off. I think it's the, the Fiku B lane has been really good so far. He's been really good. Um, but, but also, like, a lot of these mid fights are kind of favoring OG, actually, a lot of the times. The double up side of coming out, I'm curious. Deco has been pretty much everywhere. Like a couple, when they do go for a heavy, the rifle into its mid, he is the the A anchor. But I wonder where the secondary op is going to be heading towards. All right. Oh, resalt. All That's right. A good headshot. Nexius out of there. He was a the player alien. previously opened up the round, but he's now dead. Fast A. And it is going to be a very hasty hit in towards this A bomb site. Molotov. Top place in default, he tosses up the utility to try and slow, but then runs into the fire himself. Lackey close quarter combat with the AWP. And Resalt with them, and the timeout seems to work here for Aurora. It's Kito and Modo in a 2v4 now at this point. And a bomb site doesn't look too safe for the Modo. Just seeing a CT crossing over towards spawn, so he's going to try and get to the temple, but the AWP of Lackey's already repositioned to watch that. And Modo dies trying to be aggressive, trying to be a little bit cheeky. Grenade blows open the smoke and Keto revealed behind it. Aurora come back after the timeout. 
And they win around with four players staying up. What a round from from Rizal, uh, getting the, the getting the early play. I think it was Nexius towards mid, spamming through the smoke, and then being so aggressive. Molotov to force the T's to, to, to respect it and not really you know, push execute under the A bomb slide and then pushing in deeper and just being such a such an agent of chaos. Also allowing Lackey to feel a little bit comfortable with the AWP. As uh, final round here, I think, uh, first half. An 8-4 scoreline, I think we're going to be reasonably happy with that. Oh, Nate blows up it. Smoke in front of Kenzie. Just behind the smoke, Nexius. Oh my Pick god. Up. Another opener for Nexius. Last time we got an opening kill, OG were able to win the round convincingly. OG deciding mid is safer. They might get through Donut. There's a heavy push from Rishal into his A main. Yes. Powerful position, but Keto at red is even better, and Norvi's caught. It looks like it's all over here, unless there's something massive from Rishal. And then Molly him as well. They consider the fact that he could be over towards A main. Think about his time. Yeah, he could buy his time, sure. But his teammates, there's a long way off, and they're still cut off by Keto. Deco. Held off by Moto. So that's an AK in close quarter combat. Deco looked like he was going to flick back for that, but Moto overruns him. Keto's still in red. Kenzie finally arrives to the party, but Keto has got the perfect timing, and the patience will pay off for him. Resalt, he's smoked out, and that is a round for OG. What a hell of a back and forth coming out from the side of Aurora and OG. This has been just so well done by OG in this round in particular. Not losing a single player as well, they don't. The result would have been towards A main, and they're going to close it out as they get to round number five. Yeah, it was actually a very competitive first half that, you know, no one really took control of the game for any period of time. It I mean, it, initially it did look like it was going to be Aurora 5-1, yeah, right? Yeah, right? big lead, sure, but uh, OG able to come back and put some authority on the game.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the second half. Aurora Gaming versus OG. A very back and forth first half, but it has resulted in a minor lead for Aurora going into the T half. There's a variety of markets and high odds awaiting you on the 1xBet app. Place your bets on the website and mobile app right now. 1xBet, good game, well paid. Indeed. But this is uh, a game that is very well played. We're going to find out if that's going to be the case here, Dane, because we have Aurora Gaming. It's going to be the smoke towards Rednecks. It's just tapping away through the smoke, hoping to find something. But it does look like it's going to be the classic A pincer move coming in. The Lurk in the form of Resalt. Oh, never mind. No, it's going to be through Donut. But it's a fake. It's just one player making a lot of noise. Remaining member is going to be funneling from the Donut position. Oh, Modo. Drops a little closer to the big box. It's Fiku first oh. on the Chulbo Redis. Moto dishes out death, and remember, Heavy got up on top of the boost, looks down upon his lowly surfs with his jewelies. Fiku and Nexius come in, and OG will clean up that pistol round, and no bomb plan for Aurora. Yeah, that was actually it was a three-pronged attack coming in from the side of uh, Aurora. Play tucked inside a red. Three donut, one A main, but good setup from OG. Just a default setup almost, Nothing, uh, something you don't see that often nowadays. Yeah, you don't really see that. You see a lot more gimmicks and pistol runs, especially ancient. On the CT side, especially, yeah, right? CT yeah. It's, it's like you, we used to have the early three B, like double cave, one B lane, uh, double donut setup. Then we had the four A and the one towards mid setup. They have like three B, two donut. There's oh. loads of different variations we've seen so far. Oh, seen. Think you're seeing him. Is it coming in, Denko? The crossbar. It's good, though. And Kido, Kido fighting oh, two. Oh, yes. That's what you like to see from Kido. Shutting down this Aurora attack in the force fight. Would have loved the bomb plant to get some extra money, but that's what Keto's getting on his MP9. Deco 1v5 ahead of him, and it's shut down here for OG. Great work. Every single player from OG stays up. Money's in the bank. I can feel it. I can feel the tide slowly. Slowly, but surely. It's time to turn the way of OG. Now, overpass up next is Aurora's map pick. Ancient, the pick of OG. Inferno. When you get deeper in the best of fives, these maps become less and less convincing. Yes, it gets messy. It gets very messy because you're heading into territory, which is usually the second band maps, right? And Inferno is a map that neither of these two teams aren't very super comfortable on if you do head to it. Lackey with a good start. Aurora never make you feel comfortable, though. Like, even when you know you're going up against barely anything. Yeah, the pistols are tough. Lacking Beacon as well has been really good. You got denied, you just have incredible raw aim. Mm -hmm. uh, not a mess of nades, but Moto will do enough to keep the threat at bay. Keto, aggressive. Now, I know it's just the pistols, but it is a 5v4. We've seen already, just today, so many rounds spiral out of control. This Lackey single-handedly trying to sell the fake of the rotate back towards B. Again, the main kind of goal in this round for Aurora is to get a bomb plant. If you can get a bomb plant, you get all the extra money in that gun round, and you get all the bells and whistles and utility. And it looks like they might get that opportunity on this A play. They might even win the round because Lackey's hit another one. Moto has to melt him. First is good, second even better, and damage done onto a third. Remember, Aurora just won a bomb plant, so that's why they're leaping into the site. They'll get those digits punched in. And that's their number one objective complete. Now they look to try and close it. At three versus three, it's going to be difficult having damaged players and weaker weapons. OG have to make sure that they make no mistakes coming back in here. Two kill from Nexus, the clear default. Nexus gets the second. And Lackey's stuck at Donut. Moto has a look over and punches a hole right through it. Lackey's Deagle, man. It he just really, walks really out, good. walks up from the smoke into an MP9 staring at him and just rips his head off. And OG now taking the lead. This was a 5-1 lead starting from Aurora. As OG were able to bring this one back. And now you can see Fiku's shining forehead looking as shiny as the uh, immediate future looks like for OG. Let's take a look at how this one's going to play out. All right, Byron coming in. Aurora and OG. All tied up here. OG with a narrow little lead. Nexius edging. Playing up close. Personal. He's not been seen, but he's been checked. Lackey will get the kill. 
And the only man advantage here for Aurora Gaming. Heavy God lying it with in the donut smoke. He's sitting in the smoke. He knows his well control of mid, and timing is everything. And Heavy God good for just to one, but his spray. There was no transfer onto the second player. That was a resalt. And now a 4v3. Man advantage still maintained. There is still the AWP in the hands of Modo inside. Oh. But the resalt edging the smoke and takes out Keto. And one by one, OG start to fall. Modo has to go big. Yeah, Modo has to go massive. There's no Modo moment for us today. Fiku left inside of Red, and soon he will be dead. Bomb planted. Money locked in again in a round that will line things up. This game has a very obscure finish. We have no idea how this is going to go. Aurora Gaming versus OG delivering all fronts on Ancient. If Aurora get through this, if they beat OG on their map pick, Overpass being the pick of Aurora might be the way to finish it in four. Famas out for Nexius. MP9 for Kiru. You can see some of the weaknesses in this OG economy right away. They're going to go out mid fast here. Lackey looking to fight out. Oh. oh, he's lost his life to Heavy God. The flash, so very blind. Heavy God, his feet, his toes getting a little bit cinched, but he's going to be happy with that, with the outcome of that particular duel. Meanwhile, Kenzie, they're going for this. No, the heavy mid lean means the A bomb site is going to be potential point of entry for them. Norway, perfect little timing to find Nexius and Heavy God at least able to trade. 3v3 bomb. Code will be punched in. They have a smoke as well to work with here due to tease. Yeah, Norway sitting in the of donut. Oh, nice shot. That Keto brought down in. Norway getting out of there. Somehow it gets across. And if he goes down, then it would have been all on to Kenzie to try and hold on. And Kenzie's dead. He's locked out. Fiku's headshot. What a round shot. from Heavy God. And Heavy God is the man to do the damage yet again. It is OG heading into the lead. Four kills for Heavy God. Yeah, another 4K. Opener and the closer. Yeah, he's got some help around him this time, though. You know, like, Moda's having a great game, too. He's up there with Heavy God. He needed to step up in mid there as well, Heavy God. It looked like that opening was going to go the way of Lackey. I think it probably would have if the flash had it connected. Ooh. But Heavy God also made the most of the situation and took him out when the opportunity arose. Nice shot from Fiku as well with the USP. Excuse me, with the USP. But uh, still going to be a buy for Aurora. This is like a tennis rally at this point. It's it so is, back and forth. It really is like a tennis rally. The best of five. Matchup that everybody has been very excited about. Curious about as well. Who is going to make it to the final? Star Sky Sports Masters. Slightly delayed uh, mid utility being deployed by Aurora, but uh, OG are like, you know what? You're going to have mid this time around. We're going to be going for the double A main yeah, push. Yeah, double A main push is huge here. And nice shot from Moto down ramp. That's restart taken out of play. The bomb making its way over That's to the A bomb. side, but this double A main push has paid off. If it was just one player, they wouldn't have been able to collect that bomb and that kill. But because Heavy God's there, they did, and he just goes into the open. He sticks around, he overstays his welcome, and Lackey evicts him. And because of Norby's positioning here, they can just head to a day. Yeah, Norby's position is so powerful. Oh, perfect. This is the back and forth continuing. 9-9 nine to nine is looking likely unless Modo his ult can strike right through red. That piece of utility is massive, actually. The big flank. Yeah, the flank has to be effective. Fiku must find success on Lackey, who is now considering this flank and now spots it out. So focus now will go back onto Modo to see if he can get in towards CT. And it's tough now for OG to see a world in which it happens Have one save. that they can't see, so they save <laughs> again into the next. So there's another back and forth. <laughs> and the back and forth eventually will favor the T side of the economy. It's just very expensive to be a CT player. And if your money's constantly being broken, shattered, taken apart, you will get to the point where it'll be too much to handle for you, and Aurora will withstand. This has just been uh Battle of attrition for both these teams. Just it reminds me of this kind of famous UFC clip. I don't watch a lot of US UFC, but you do, Dinko. Um, this is Japanese heavyweight fighter going up against uh, a Western one who's got a mustache, who kind of looks like Freddie, Mer Freddie Mercury. Is that old school UFC? Yeah, and they're just standing and just punching at each other, and your face is completely swollen up, <laughs> just like trading blows. It reminds me of that. I forgot the name of the guy. Like, massive dude. Versus Takayama. Don Firefly. 
I don't know. Maybe that might be it. If we can just click on images, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's the one. That's yeah. the one. Reroute. What's the What's the name? The uh, it's Don Fry versus Takayama. It's it's a Pride fight, so it's not. Uh, so there's on UFC. So there you go. Oh, whatever. No, it's UFC. Yeah. Oh, it's UFC. All right, go go. Pride fight. Well, this is definitely got shades of that. Yeah, it's like the bloody battered and bruised, but it's still standing, and just and just trading blows. Norway uh, still having a rough game, and Kenzie as well. Both of them just back to back maps of. Haven't seen that so far. Mm, Modo. Yeah, there we go. That's a good opener. Resolve. Fast B. He is quick, and he's coming up the ramp at this time. Penetrated by Modo's AWP, and you don't want to see that going through. And oh, Biku. He's gone through the smoke, and it's all looking good for OG. <laughs> the chaos ensuing. And another back and forth. It's OG up to 10 rounds. And this is a save gone, Stinko. Yeah. The hop and a two one, man, one rifle. Oh my lord, what am I witnessing? Oh gee, their map pick. And they're now reaching double figures first. But hey, you never feel like they're out of the woods. You know, they're going to win the next one. Yeah, yeah. I, doubt, I doubt that's going to happen because Aurora have some money still left. On a few players at least. So we'll see what kind of purchase they can get into the next round here on the T side. Yeah, they'll be able to get AKs out on the majority of players. Surely. Yeah, AKs, Galils. And a Tech 9. Absolutely. And a timeout too. as well. Yeah, because at one point, like, Aurora thinking, like, guys, like, we're winning the hard rounds. Like, why are we losing these? Right? Why are we losing just pistols? Modo, though, again, like, we keep. It's, it's, it's not hyperbole. Like, like, the fact that this guy's able to be so consistently good with the AWP. On a CT side of virtually every map I've seen so far for OG, I think it's been a fantastic find. Haven't really seen much on the on the T side. Uh, there, were, there, there have been moments, even yesterday as well, on Ancient that uh, I wouldn't say one before, but a 4K from the bomb side, like a turret. He can do it, but it's such a reliable pair of hands to entrust the the zoom banger to. Here we go. Oh, quick from Norby. The Tech Nine goes. Sprinting through and Keto is down just like that. Resold on the follow up. And just as the uh, story will go, Aurora now looking to hit back again. Blow for blow, that's the headline of this game. Oh, bomb plant secured. Aurora locking that one in in a 4v3. OG just sitting on the extremity. I realize, guys, I hate to say it, but maybe we got a save. But they, are, nope, that hasn't even crossed their mind. They're they, going for they're, this? They are going for it, strangely. Uh, I don't like it, Blood. I don't like it, Blood, and it's not worked out for them. A little bit of an awkward Momo, and that's going to end up being 10 10 and everything ripped out of the OG hands. It's just. Just why? Just felt so uncomfortable. There was a fallback. Like they could have got away. Mm. Now they got no money. So I think that's the end of the back and forth, one for one, tit for tat. Because Fiku had some extra cash, right? So they could have, they could have had four guns with the op, and someone had to deal with maybe an MP9 or something. I, I'm done. Well, instead, it looks like it's going to be eleven rounds to ten, and then they'll have one last shake of the stick. Or crack of the whip. And Heavy Guard deep in towards A main. He's ready for results, but results ready for him. I'll tell you what, this is at least more close and more exciting than the uh, the phase mouse final today. It definitely is. This is the best grand final of the day. And a best of five. And a best of five, too. And uh, more money in the line. Exactly. And, you know, best of three uh, grand finals in MR12 have become a little bit too short, I think. I, I agree. I, I still feel... Because they're always one game off the day. I, I kind of still feel like for the just normal lands, best of three is still fine. Mm. Uh, but for, like for majors, Kato's, Colognes. Kato's, Colognes only best of fives, but like at least for a major, yeah. I think it should be best of five. Maybe that change can come in in the future. Hopefully. Well, now this is do or die for OG on their map pick of Ancient. It would be quite awkward to lose both of your map picks in a best of five. You know, Aurora lost their map pick. 
But LG about to lose two of them if they can't step up here. It'll be 12 rounds for Aurora. Money will be gone for OG. And because of the back and forth, the loss bonus is only at stage two for OG. Loss bonus is at stage zero for Aurora, obviously. But they've got money. They've got plenty of it. They can buy in the next round. Even if they lose this one, they've got a buy. Ready to go. Aurora definitely in the, uh, in the driving seat right now. But that ra that decision not to save in the 3v4 does confuse me a bit. Yeah, that decision might end up costing OG this map. Oh, oh grenade is good off the wall. Standard lineup. Try and soften up Nexius. It's effective. Drops into 63 health. Aurora occupy a default currently. Two outside of B, one holding elbow, and two are uh, sort of exploring a main. You don't want to walk too far, though. Moto's waiting with a sniper. The Moto's the only reliable force here for OG. He's just been so good with the AWP. But then getting repositioned away from it. Holding to its donut. What do Aurora do? Dude, like, almost every single round we've seen of Aurora have just been fast plays. Fast plays out of fast plays out of fast plays. And sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes it works out. It's just so random. Haven't seen any properly well-constructed rounds so far. Red Room Smoke. The minute mark. They've done a good job holding on to the utility here, have the have the T's. And look at the CT's utility. Couple of smokes remaining. One for Nexus is all the way over, I believe, towards the uh, the B bombs. Sorry, the, the A bomb site. Nice smoke as well to deny any vision here for Moto. They're grouping up towards B. Keto's gonna use the final smoke that the T's CT's have. 40 seconds now. No information for the CT's. And the execute is gonna be coming in. Two smokes, Molotov, a flash, and they even have a look towards mid. Final pieces being put in place on this B bomb site. That spam nearly taking Nexus out of the round, but they go past. They check Keto. Now there's the rest of the players inside of the site. And Nexus may be low on health, but he is mighty in his hole, and he still gets at least one kill. OG stay at three apiece, and now a retake to go for this. This one is not going to be a safe call. This one shouldn't be, as they have a shot at this retake. They have a shot at redemption. Heavy God. Only one dead after that, and Moto cannot win this round. They can no longer feasibly win the retake. And Moto is off to save his weapon. OG's money is shot. Aurora up to 12 on Ancient. OG's map pick looks like it's about to go the other way. No oh, man, the decision to go for that retake in a 3v4, Dinko. I think it's going to haunt them. Seems like it as of right now. Casualties taken for the T's as well, but they're going to be happy you pointed out the money earlier on. They're going to have more than sufficient money to work with here. Will the side of Aurora and for OG, the only thing they have, the only safety net they really have is an AWP in the hands of Modo. But if Aurora are able to circumnavigate that AWP, avoid it, just neuter it, block it out, and OG are in for a wall of pain, and this could be Mount number 3 going the way of the favorites here. Oh, it's a quick shot from Lackey. Keto dead first. OG have lost the opening kill, and Moda's AWP comes over to try and be the absolute hero. And oh, Fiku's Deagle. It always finds at least one through these smokes. Norby's dead, and just like that, we're back to even numbers. OG putting up as much of a fight as they can, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be enough. Heavy Guard caught from Resalt, who is now joining the rest of the attack. The bomb on the back of Deco now being planted on default. OG on Ancient might be a short-lived affair, but suddenly a couple of kills inside of the site come in. And Moda left in a 1 versus 2 MP9 picked up. You'll get ever closer into the site. Maybe this could be everlasting. Ancient looking to be extended, but Lackey wraps around, knows he's not on that defuse. And good night, Moto. Good night, OG. Ancient goes against them. And we do see victory coming through for the side of Aurora on Ancient. A back and forth affair, but they're now 2 1 up in this best of five. God, it's got to be a little heartbreak of it for OG Digger because that was such a back and forth affair. It looked like anyone could steal it away, but if they made the decision, I'm going to keep harping on this because even when they lost that round and the falling one was a full ego, but even after that, they had an MP9, they had a pistol in play. The money never really truly recovered True. for OG because of that round. They just saved it. 
And that's uh, unfortunately uh, the way it is, you know, you will have to live with the regret here. When the game is so close and every round matters so much and you're trading blow for blow on round wins, when you get down into those little decisive moments, those are the, the decisions that can go against you and cost you the entire game. They can unravel and, the and, entire map. And that's a decision right there. Now, I'm not saying that if it saved the weaponry that they were necessarily going to win the map, right? Mm. But every round after that, if you saw, there was a full eco. After that, had the op out from Moda, which was able to save. Mm. There was never a single force, uh, full buy coming out from the side of OG after that last round. So, unlucky for OG, mm. but they only have themselves to blame for it. Yeah, well, we're going to go to a break. When we come back with this best of five, we'll continue over past the fourth map is coming right at you.
is changing, but one thing remains the same. Victories with 1x bet. Welcome back to Sky Esports Masters, powered by AMD. This could be the final time we welcome you here, because this best of five is yeah. heading to the fourth map at Aurora. Looking like the team that could get it done. They could get it done, and OG, obviously, I don't want to keep hopping on it too much, but I think OG really had a chance of closing it out there on uh, on map number three and taking the lead 2-1. But now with Aurora kind of kind of waking up at the very end of that map, it does look like Overpass should be where it ends. That's what I say. What OG have shown, they're not going to roll over and die. They've put up a quite an impressive fight, if you ask me, after getting steamrolled in the first map. Close affair in Mirage, close affair on Ancient as well, and why couldn't they do it on Overpass, right? Yeah, why couldn't they? Uh, it is the Aurora map pick. I guess the reason why would be no team has won their map pick yet. <laughs> that is true. That is true. That is exactly game. how logic, I mean, logic dictates that obviously <laughs> that means OG should be winning it. But uh, jokes aside, you know, obviously it is the map pick coming in from Aurora, right, if I'm not mistaken here. And the thing is, Aurora will be starting on the T side. I really like what he saw from Aurora on their T side and overpass. I think it's not exactly uh, Virtus Pro esque. I think I don't think anyone really plays their way, but there are elements of very, very methodical map control coming out from them. And one thing I really enjoy from Aurora is the fact that. Uh, they're, they're not afraid to be very decisive in the decision making when they get a kill towards long or if they spot like let's say an aggression coming out from the CTs towards monster towards short right they, they're very decisive they're, all right now we're going to be hitting the A bomb side or the B bomb side depending on what the situation is and their executes are set up very very quickly they're able to pounce onto the sides and one thing we know what this team can do very well on the T side they can trade very fast they can trade very efficiently very effectively and that is a problem that OG will have to solve on the fly as we go here in overpass well the problem they couldn't solve was a result standout player presented by 1x bet for this map one point uh, 0 0.94 rating uh, not uh, it's weird seeing a standout player with a, a sub 1.0 rating but it was a pretty scrappy game of counter strike it was a very back and forth affair right from from both the sides uh, I think Moto was doing a, a very good job overall like if OG had managed to clinch that map I would have given that to Moto he was getting a kill seemingly every single round with the AWP every time they were heading into his bomb side go go to how uh, you know just try to Remember what happened to B-bombs, that every time it was Aurora heading there, Moto was getting multi-kills on the multi-kills. But then they did a very good job avoiding him. And also, Resol had a lot of hero moments. There were a couple of rounds where things were looking a little bit dicey for the side of Aurora, but he had a couple of hero rounds. And uh, yeah, good to see the new... Well, I say new, it's been uh, over a month right now, the pickup coming in That's new. from Force. Yeah, it's kind of new, right? He had, a, he had a pretty solid time. And there you can take a look at it. Moto, uh, yeah, there we go. 20 kills, top fragging in the server. Really solid. And Lackey as well delivering. Lackey was looking pretty solid. And for Norway and Kenzie, it, it was a slow start again, like we saw in Mirage. But they did start to wake up uh, kind of later into that half. Yeah, uh, Heavy God had a couple of big multi-kill rounds uh, here and there. For a squad and, and Moto, as you said, it was always stable as a rock. You know, looking at the scoreboards, it actually looks a little better for OG in some departments, but the, the scoreline is what cost them. And I think the the nightmares tonight will perhaps involve that decision to go for the retake attempt rather than the save call. But uh, we'll bang on about that if they do lose this series. In fact, we're heading into Overpass in just a few moments, so we'll talk about some of the key players on this map. You know, when we talk about Overpass, you always have to mention the Alpers. Uh, Deco in particular will be a feature that we'll have to look out for. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and I think Deco is going to be way more mobile, I feel, with the AWP, right? Someone who loves taking fights, and even if he doesn't have the rifle in his hands, yeah, sorry, the, the AWP in his hands, given a, an M4 or, or, or an MP9, or even a pistol for that matter, he can find that impact, he can be in your face, very aggressive. And on the flip side, because OG should be starting on the CT side, the first thing they need to do if they want to take us to map number 5, would be stabilize the CT side economy 
as early as possible. Get that AWP into the hands of Modo, because he is going to be that turret on that A bomb side, and we've seen how good he can be. And what I especially like about Modo and how he plays at CD side op, and I think uh, the, the toilets, bathrooms, fountains, position, it's going to be uh, a showcase, a textbook showcase of what Modo can show us. It's very good at just holding these angles, getting the shot, falling back, playing it safe, staying alive, which is very important, and he's going to be playing that bomb side alongside Nexius, right? On the B bomb side, that's where for the side of Aurora, they're going to have a little bit of trouble in the form of an inform heavy god because he's going to be perched on B. Yeah, he is going to be perched on B. Heavy god playing a lot better today than we've seen him across the tournament. We've seen some better performances here and there from in recent days, but it's a very different heavy god than what we've seen on day one when they went up against Aurora, and that can only be a positive for OG. It can only, only be a positive, right? And now what we need is everyone else to kind of step up. Like, heavy god was a missing element. Despite that, they were able to run that gauntlet and make that lower bracket run, and now all they need is for Fiku and Nexus to kind of wake up. Modo has been hitting his shots as well. Kido has been very quiet as well this entire series. Every single map, I don't think he's been able to really frag out. I don't think he even got a double digits in any of these no, three six maps. No, kills on this one. Yeah, a really tough time for him, but uh, he's got to figure out the puzzle that waits in front of him. And we are getting into this map now, overpass the fourth of the best of five. Aurora should be full of confidence after picking up the map pick of OG. Both map picks of OG going the way of Aurora. Overpass at the ready. CT side start for OG, Aurora on the T side, and as always, quick shout out to one X bet. You can turn your casual viewing experience into a whole new thing. High odds for tournament matches await you on the one X bet website and mobile app. And now awaiting Nexius is a running oh, storm fast. of Aurora players coming right at him. And it's Nexius to do pretty well with that first headshot. Resalt is dead. Kito looking to try and step up for his team in the defense, but Lackey, oh, it's Lackey. He's taking that first headshot, and now Kito has been damaged up. It's looking pretty solid here for Roy. They've already gotten to the upper bomb side. Great path coming in from Kenzie and the rest of his teammates as well. The flank is on with two duallys coming in. And Norway looking to make contact here. He's doing a great job keeping them at bay. But they know where both the CDs are coming in from. And this is looking unlikely here as the last man left alive. It is going to be Modo with the duallys. Oh, Modo. With that headshot, Norvi is down and out, and Moto getting ever closer to the bomb site. Kenzie will close, and Aurora do find the first on the T side. Now, we mentioned good starts for Aurora on Anubis on the CT side. We mentioned how they can get off to a great start, even on Ancient on the CT side. Their T sides have been a little weaker than we would have liked to have seen throughout this competition at periods. So, winning the pistol, and if they can convert upon this, in which they should, because OG don't have a whole lot to play with here. And all uh, point the uh, pretty big well paint start to paint a very pretty picture uh, for I, I like the fact they've gone for the uh, they've gone for a full eco here from OG the classic the classic anti eco sorry the classic eco stack rather yeah uh, towards the counter eco, eco stack just pushing up towards long and look at Aurora immediately just going for a fast B play it's gonna be an empty bomb site and for OG probably just trying to continue just running on down towards T spawn maybe getting a kill there is a player waiting though so that's two two for Aurora. Mac 10 for Deco loves how many kills are up for grabs. Make a lot of money. And the flank of the other Mac 10 of Norvi coming in. It's important to get Norvi fragging a little bit earlier on here too because he's had slow starts on both maps. Get 3, a bucks. Frags on the board. 3,000 bucks from those SMG kills. That's actually really, really yep. good for Aurora. Not losing a single player as well. Two rounds on the T side. Again, Dinko, this is the, the opposite of, uh, of Anubis. Every round to get to the T side here, it's worth its weight in gold. And now... The op in the hands of Moto. A lot on the shoulders of the youngest member of OG. Now we gotta see how Moto can step up here on overpass. The first time they went to battle with Aurora in this tournament, Moto was in his own head. Now I'm sure feeling a lot more confident and comfortable within the team, but that is a perfect nade stack to open up the offense here. But Moto, he has the chance to plug the gap instantly. He splits apart Norway and Kenzie. In one bullet, the collateral straight through middle. Resalt, Deco, and Lackey. 3v4 ahead of him. And it looks so good. They worked the opening pick with utility. Would have been okay to lose one player, but to lose two yeah. without being able to trade the sniper, it's kind of a devastating start to this gun round for Aurora. Lackey. Saw the player. 
Flash comes on out. There was another player perched very close by towards bridge. Three players here towards the B bomb site. And this is such a good call coming out from OG. Are they going to stick around though? Meanwhile, towards A, Keto by himself just jump spotting. And here comes the contact play. Result. Closer into the bomb site. Heavy guard, an offline goal, and one that is going to work out perfectly until Deku arrives to the middle of the bomb site. Off of Modo. Made this round very uncomfortable for Aurora. He's passing tests with flying colors. It is the first CT round here for OG, and it is all thanks to Modo. Yeah. Off in his hands, didn't go three kills. Instant. And that's what we needed from the young one. And the eclipse <laughs> of two players. Modo stared right into it. The blinding shot rings out. His eyes seem completely fine after that, Dinko. Yeah. Not Aurora's, though. They're not going to be able to buy it back here, Aurora, but it's a pretty compromised purchase because they're down to majority on Leals rather than the AK-47 that they so desperately want. Kenzie, one of those players with the AK. And Deco, we talked about his op in the free game. Well, it's got the opening kill. All right. And it's looking for a second. Not making any secret about where it is at the moment. Double long setup as well. Nexus that was a bomb carrier too. Yeah. Yeah, this long setup is everything, isn't it? Nexo and Ke Nexus. Nex sorry, Nexus and Keto. Is there a flash? Oh God! It's dry from Kenzie. It's important that that one v one did go in favor of Keto, but he can't retreat to safety. He's caught by Resalt, who had already pushed up into the bathrooms, and now with a minute and five seconds left, it's a 2v4. And OG in the worst position than that of Aurora. A lot of time for Aurora to piece this together and figure out which bomb site has the least risk. Exactly. They don't necessarily have to speed things up here, right? They really don't have much control anywhere outside of bathrooms. Looks like Fiku is about to go on a bit of a mission to try and catch a couple of players. If he's able to time this perfectly, he might even get away with a multi-kill. And if he does that, once again, OG are back into this round. He stays at Divider. Norvi spams him. Fiku unrelenting, not reacting, and eventually oh. has to stand and fight himself. Norvi. Did he that smell is, him? Yeah, I, I, he must have smelt him. Fiku must be wearing a strong aftershave today. Heavy got doing his best in the truck, but it's just too heavy even for him. That's three to one for Aurora. <laughs> I, I feel bad for Fiku, man. That, that, like that, that's actually such a small play from Fiku. Yeah, it was. Because you've killed three players towards A, and even the rotation would have taken place. You don't expect the CT to push in that deep towards Divider. And Norway's like, actually, I'm just going to... Just, just going to... back and... Just going to have a little spam here at the Divider, just in case. Damn. And, and Fiku's not reacting either, because he knows, all right, maybe he'll stop spamming, and then he'll really think it's clear. Yeah. But then he just keeps <laughs> going. <laughs> <to> stop. <laughs> Good awareness from Aurora, and uh, well, it's going to be uh, at least a few upgraded pistols. Heavy guard. Man, this guy's Deagle. Oh, this guy's Deagle. This guy and his Deagle, but uh, it's not going to pan out for him. Moto and Keto left alone at 2v4 here. Aurora, it's a similar start to Ancient, where they were, what, 5-1 up on Ancient, and OG were able to close the gap and make it a competitive half. Yes. So you don't but this but whole different ball game here. Yeah, it's different on overpass. When you're winning this many T rounds so early. Yeah, you just have the so usually when you have such a early lead on the on the T side, right? And and you're able to kind of make the economy brittle for the CTs, you are allowed to go for some of these more shock and awe tactics. Some maybe a fast B play, for example, something you don't mm. really go for. And that's going to just keep bleeding out OG. And even if OG start winning the majority of the rounds after that, one or two rounds extra going the way of Aurora. They're sitting pretty. Yeah, they will be. And they're about to walk their way into this B-bomb site. Two set up. Moto in water. Keto playing from the barrels. And the utility will start to sprinkle in, but it's Kenzie's instant decapitation of Keto that has unraveled the setup. Clean. Nothing the last two players can do. It's 4-1 for Aurora. Nice and clean indeed. But money's been building with OG with that loss bonus. And... the. The only round they won, you gotta still remember, Denko, was came, came down to Deco getting the collateral kill to get the trade. Yeah, and then Moto, Moto, yeah. Uh, sorry, Moto getting the, the collateral kill with the AWP and then closing it out as well. 3k with the AWP to net the round. Then I'm gonna need. He's got the AWP back again. Something a little bit more convincing than that, however. He's gonna head in towards bathrooms. Might go for an opening pick. He's not alone. He's got some teammates with him. In fact, Moto's gonna go off to long. Deco, he was finding success with Connector Pete. He got the opening kill from here before. 
not in this position again. The door spam down. Heavy guard. Oh, just late. about dodges that AWP shot. Well, he doesn't dodge it. He just doesn't take enough damage to be felled. Damage being dealt both the sides. And yeah, heavy guard's way, way low here. That's a play from the back. Forward positioning from Nexius, though. But there is a timer on the smoke. And eventually he has to be paranoid about a potential play coming in from long as well. But this forward positioning, if a little bit later in the round, they go in for a bit of an info play, Dinko. This, this is an opportunity. He didn't swing far enough. So Kenzie won't be spotted. This is this is, this is an uncomfortable round for both the teams here. Yeah, it's not, it's not a pretty round, is it? 45 seconds at least for the tees. Look at Nexus pushing up. Yeah, this B bomb site seems like the right call for Aurora. I think information is about to be gathered by Nexus that the B site is going to be the it's prize. Go, it's going to be too late. Yeah, it is going to be too late. Fiku with love one. He's not in a position to stay committed to the bomb site. A retake is doable. And the bomb going down is certainly going to assist OG here in this matter. There's not a lot of utility. In fact, there's oh. no smokes <laughs> for Aurora. Deco having to use bullets instead to cover off some of their teammates. And Deco is, well, delivering. Oh my god, Deco. Three kills in the round. Aurora Gaming showing up in a big way. And this OG defense does not hold water. In fact, the dam is completely broken and the Aurora flood is just streaming through. Yeah, and, and even the money, it's it's overflowing, right? It, it's 5-1. It's 5-1 T-side of overpass, and you have an average of, quick math here, about $5,000 in every one of the players after the full buy coming in, Dinka. This is... Yeah. Oh, this is grim. The writing on the wall, it, it's starting to bleed. Yes, it's not good for OG. You get deeper and deeper into the map pool. The best of five will test you and how deep your map pool goes, your stamina within this Counter-Strike game, and... Four maps in. Looks like Aurora is still very match fit. And Kenzie as well has truly woken up very early in the game this time. Nine yes. and two for him. Norway as well, five and four. Impact being found by every single one. Norway's the one who, who walled Mike Fiku as well. Yes. And those are two players that were missing over the last two maps here for Aurora. They were still able to get the job done in Ancient. Probably could have got it done in Mirage if Kenzie and Norway had a better showing. And they could have had a flawless run, a flawless run of the championship here at Sky Sports Masters. One blip on the radar, one map lost. They'll be happy with that. Uh, it doesn't seem like they're going to lose this round. You never know. Nexus, Deagle. Deco gets away. Yeah. It's Fiku who does strike first. That 5-7 inside a connector catches Resalt, and Deco wasn't with him. So no trade potential on to Resalt. And here comes the play into B. It's a good attack for Aurora because no one's here really to detect it or delay for OG. So that bomb can go down comfortably. I say no one's here, but Nexius from Graffiti is somehow getting fights before the bomb is even down. And now Aurora is down two players. It's not a comfortable position by any means, but it's one that is still recoverable. Go, go. Oh, he needs to win his five. Deco goes down to any of these players. Oh, God. Deco's dead. He doesn't get a single kill. And now it's just Kenzie and Norby. There's two players we mentioned just mere moments ago that have to step up and pull off this 2v5 post plant. The retake is coming. The cavalry has arrived. But the cavalry is getting destroyed. Kenzie massacres them from the barrels. Oh, the team flash. And the time is too far gone now for Heavy God. He cannot win this, surely. Shot out to Kenzie. Norby draws the timeout. And he'll draw Heavy God out of the round. Aurora, it's not clean, but it is successful. Finally, Norway and Kenzie, Dinko. They, they, they are the heroes of the hour right there. And that was indeed very, very, very worrying indeed. Nice shots, nice attempt coming out from OG. Probably one of the more closer rounds we've had here so far on Overpass. But no cigar. Aurora, six already, Dinko. Six to the solitary one of OGs, and we see the buy coming out again. Maybe third time's a charm, Dinko, on the force buy. Yeah, it could be. Could be the charm. AWP for Modo was the only way, was the only way OG are able to win rounds here on Overpass. It has to change. There has to be something else. 
Look at this contact play from Aurora. This is the decisiveness you were talking about before this game started. The idea is presented, and Aurora commit, she and they're all see. committing. They're going right into the side. Oh, Kito oh. peeks out from Dice, and he ain't lucky twice. He's dead. And OG are on the other side of the map. Oh, they're just getting absolutely destroyed. Aurora seems done with his best of five. They seem done with this competition. Sky Esports Masters Championship almost looks like it's ready to go Aurora's way. Moto hasn't even had a chance to see anyone with his arm. And Moto's going to do what he can, and now he's really just trying to hold on to the AWP. He's seeing people, but it's all the hunt. The hunters try and bring down a big beast. If they do, it would be devastating to OG's chances. He's dead. And he is going to be overrun. Deco jumps over his scope. He's running closer to him. Moto still holds on. Moto is doing a good job here at holding on to this AWP. Nice. Some great shots. And that is some damage inflicted upon Aurora. Doesn't matter. And the AWP <laughs> saved over it. Come on, boy. Silver lightnings and all that. Look at the money. Yeah, yeah, it buddy. doesn't matter at all. <laughs> the day... Okay, he's going to stay alive. Yeah, that really does. It really doesn't matter. They got a lot of money. Sun setting. Norway and Kenzie. Whew. Nice style points from Moto though. You know, gets a gets a 4K. Yeah, I mean he's looking sharp, and Aurora have been avoiding him <laughs> the <laughs> majority of the half. The calls have been just so perfect every single time. Yeah, Moto. You you have to be frustrated, right? You're hitting your shots. You're trying to do your job, but Aurora just avoiding him like. Like me and British food. <laughs> Good idea. I say that Apollo is just gonna start. Like, Actually, no, we got a great curry. I'm like, yeah, sure, buddy. Yeah, Paula with his chicken tikka masala. Yeah. He's <laughs> doing a geoguesser over there in Stockholm. He is indeed. I was actually watching a little bit of it yesterday. It's fun. It looks it looks really cool. Yeah. You can make an esport out of anything. Confirm yeah. Overwatch. <laughs> Dead, of course. <laughs> oh, through the flames. That's been heard. Well, Kito, indeed, is going to be under a lot of pressure. In fact, it is excruciating. Resalt with a headshot that Kito cannot stand. And the nade as well. It's tickling away the Nexus. Yeah, it's a tickle. It's all right. But, man, did Aurora just seemed to have woken up. Is he going to walk into the smoke? Surely. Oh. No, no, Nexius, that's that's not it. Oh, Kenzie steps up to the mark, and Moto and Heavy God. Ooh, the Heavy God, uh, he got hit by utilities, they and there he is. The sound cue betrays him, and Moto, ah, uh, once again, didn't see anything. So, um, this is op this is an operation with a hatchet. Yeah, <laughs> this is, and they're pretty successful <laughs> at killing their patient over and over <laughs> yeah, again. Yeah, it's a hatchet to the head, straight. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know... Okay, one, fun, well, one final fun fact, because this is not fun. This is not fun for OG. There was once an operation in uh, the late 1900s in London, which had a 300% mortality. 100% mortality is when a patient dies. Yep. And there was a 300% mortality. What? Well, I don't know why they kept doing that. So there was a surgeon who uh, prided himself in being uh, the, the fastest... A murderer? <laughs> that too. Yeah. But also being the fastest surgeon uh, in... Well, in town in London, so to speak. <laughs> so while he was doing it, he was doing an amputation so quickly, without anesthesia as well, that he slashed one of the people watching the uh, the surgery while swinging his uh, his scalpel around. And in turn, firstly, the patient died while doing the amputation. The other person died as well because I think it nicked an artery or something. And because of the blood spraying and a person dying, a third person died from a heart attack while watching it. Wow, um, that's gory. But you said there was a fun fact. It's fun to me. <laughs> Here we go. Going <laughs> in once again for OG. Off again for Moto. Oh, Dinka, this is spiraling. <laughs> it is spiraling. It's uh, hello darkness, my old friend for OG. Aurora, they've had some perfect calls in this T side of overpass. They're defaulting at the moment, but they're so quick at assuming control of the map. Like, already they're up long. Already they're so deep here. Nexus gets flashed by his teammate. Nothing is coordinated right now for OG. <laughs> I 
<laughs> the only information gained by anyone there was Aurora knows this one tour is long. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's so wrong. I, I didn't know there's two on side because I someone flash for him. That's it. They have more information from that play than do the CTs. Yeah, well, actually, it's sad enough, so he goes into the fight instead and... Oh, he's dead in the bathroom. Like Elvis Presley. And well, 55 seconds left for Salt. Trying to come on out. It's a good headshot. Keto's down and out. Uh, now Heavy Guard Moto and Fiku with everything left to do, and uh, they don't have the tools for the job. They oh, really man. do not have the tools for a job. And uh, it's 9-1. Aurora. This so... Uh, what I like about this Aurora's overpass, and again, I was talking about this earlier on, right? It is so very methodical, but also so sure. quick. Yep. It's quick and methodical, which is not something which you can say for a lot it of teams. It goes through the process so quickly. So yeah. quickly, and it's almost like it's it's just ingrained in them, right? That the algorithm just you know, ticking off everything. And Fiku tucked into the corner, shaking and crying. This is not looking good. Not looking good at all. Could be an 11 1 half if Aurora keep this up. Oh, it's also even more deflating because of the, the lower bracket run OG had, man. It was but so. You've done so much to get here. So inspiring. And and, and, and you lose your first map, and then you, you bounce back on map two. You got an incredible showing in Mirage. You clinch it out. And it's, it's a back and forth yeah. affair. It's 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 like it's, it's like Tyson for the movie. Hollyfield, you know, and, and map number three. And here it's literally Prime Mike Tyson against me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. You would have wrecked him. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Just give me a gun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> That's the only way of winning against Mike Tyson. <laughs> it's true. It always reminds me of the story of Mike Tyson when he took a, a, his girlfriend and wife on a date to the zoo, and he paid the zookeeper extra money to keep the zoo open. So it was just them in a private show, and he seen uh, the gorilla enclosure. The gorillas were kind of like bullying the other gorillas, and he told the zookeeper, "I'll give you ten grand if you yes. let me go in and." <laughs> fight this gorilla. The zookeeper's like, no. <laughs> he might have been a su certain substance, I'll tell you that. No, I, think, I think that's... Also, I, I've read a fact somewhere that one out of every ten American thinks they can fight a grizzly bear, so that's there. Anyway, here we go. If OG ever want to fancy, fantasize about any of the chances here, this is where they need to strike. Double swing coming out. That's good. Nexus and Moto able to find a couple even though there was a trade from Kensi. 4v3, reload gonna be coming in, but Resolve catches Keto. Keto really didn't have to take that particular duel, that angle, especially with the Femaster. They're pushing everywhere, Dinko, and they're getting punished for Red Heavy God, at least with the reply, but it's all alone. It's Resolve's gonna find Moto, and that's the A bomb side compromised. Yeah, it's, it's a difficult round ahead for Heavy God, but it's actually one of the best looking rounds OG have had in a long time. So we'll give Heavy God a shot in the dark. He's quick on the flank, but look at this. Deco has stayed at the party. He is not... Oh my god, he's dead. Heavy Gun actually just instantly clears him. Deco hanging around party. Well, it's not gone so well for him. And Heavy God arrives late to the party. And Mahati might still have the greatest gift for OG. He's not going to actually... He can actually tuck in and play from truck here. He I could. I don't know why he's playing this he, angle. He's so low on health too. Like he's 50 health. Why? But it down, it's down to whoever reacts faster. Oh no, Resalt get in behind cover, the smoke is going to protect him, Heavy God is running out of time, and Resalt has found Sanctuary, he gets around the dice box, Heavy God has no time to win this anymore, Yeah. and the clutch goes against him, despite coming close, it is going to be 10 rounds for Aurora Gaming, 10-1 as we head into the last round of this half, Heavy God, I thought he might have it in them there, but not to be. You know how much a gorilla can bench press, Blair? A gorilla? Yeah. I think gorilla could be able to bench press about um, 1,500 kilograms. 1,810 kilograms. I was close. You were very I close. I was actually very close. close. That's pretty sick. I can bench like 80, 80. That's it. That's cool. But I'm 60, 65. So way, way over your body weight. Yeah, way over my body weight. Some call me mini gorilla. <laughs> uh, all right, here we go. I like your little fun facts. I'll tell you what's not a fun fact. Heavy God, being a barrel, alone, trying to do oh. everything. And while he will step up, it's certainly a good headshot in the right direction. OG with you some were saying? right at the end. Yeah, it's a fun fact here for OG. They've got a shot at winning this round, but never count out Deco and Kenzie in this kind of form. Deco strikes it short. Heavy God's still alive, and while he's kicking, there's always a shot, but look at Kenzie, he got right by him. Oh, Heavy God's down, and OG, not like this! No. Oh, God, no. It was so close to a second, it wouldn't have made a huge difference. That's a bomb. Now it's Nexus in a 1v1 up against Deco. This one would break their spines. This one would end them. 
And Deco. Oh, gets behind safety off the pillar, fakes the plant. Nexius is holding low HP on Deco, and thank God for OG, they do get that round right oh. at the end. But it is only two. Only two. It looks like the championship is basically handed over to Aurora now. I do want to I do want to appreciate Heavy God just you know clapping his hands and being like all right boys it's not over yet it's not over yet there's always a chance to go as long as Yeah but you know the person who's saying that in your team you're always like shut up man we'll tattoo you down <laughs> you, you don't tell to shut up to Heavy God all right no, he's, he's, a, he, he, he's a reason <laughs> you guys are still here he was back your head you're like positive asshole. positive <laughs> <laughs> positive energy yeah. he's like, he's like I don't know. I, I like having Strawny in my team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. <laughs> He's he, a positive he asshole. Uh, a rallying speech. But ladies and gentlemen, we have got a short break. When we come back, it is going to be possibly the last few moments and last few rounds here at Sky Esports Masters. Welcome back to the Sky Esports Masters, powered by AMD. This could be the last half, and looks like it will be here at Sky Esports Masters. Aurora Gaming, they're certainly looking like champions. Yeah, they just come roaring into this tournament, and even despite uh, that loss in Mirage, and what was a, a bit of a scrappy affair in Ancient, they have looked imperious indeed this entire event, Dinko. They're Looking to be back-to-back -back Sky Esports uh, champions. Yeah, from Grand Slam to Masters, it is Aurora who are just a few steps away from completing the championship run. Kito looks like he's used this uh, halftime break to go to the bathroom. He should return in a moment. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Looks like one final thank you to 1xBet for being the main partner of the event. And a reminder, there are a variety of markets and high odds awaiting you on 1xBet. Place your bets on the website and mobile app right now. 1xBet, good game, well paid. As Aurora 10-2 up. If they win the pistol here on the CT side, it should spell the end for OG. Well, let's see how this one plays out. As grim as it looks for OG, Dinka, hope dies last. Hope indeed dies last. But it's Nexus who will die first in this round at least. Lackey coming back swinging. Another headshot. He doesn't stop. He is unrelenting. And the forces of OG thinned out to just two. They'll come back Ooh. in with Keto's headshot. Norvi dead. Follow up kills up for grabs in that P250. 
Kenzie's left on seven health. Just a shadow of his former self. And a flash for Lackey. Oh, he eats that one up. He's got some help, and Lackey still wins the fight. OG not looking clean with it. And Lackey destroys them. Aurora, 11-2, winning the pistol in the second half. And OG do not get a bomb plant. You'd imagine they're going to go for the force here. They're going to throw everything they've got into it. And if they lose this force, this series, this best of five, and this tournament are over. Hope dies last day, but right now it's on a ventilator. Yeah, it's definitely and on And it's not support. looking good. Yeah, this force buys everything. And we have, and look at approaches coming in from uh, Aurora as well, right? Keep three players staying alive, three rifles out. Minimal utility as well, just utility on Lackey because of the 4K. He got a restall because of the MP9. And a fast play towards mid, heavy lean from OG. And Deco looking to take the fight. Good start from Nexius. That Deagle will perforate the head of Norvi. Deco's turn to try and pull that one back. He sees the second victim, but Moto Scout picks him off at party. And Keto just getting that one tag with a Deagle. That's all he needed. Kenzie coming up through connector, looking to connect the dots. We don't see too much on the other side of the top of the stairway just yet. OG taking their time. They know Kenzie's position. Flash is good. Moto even better, though. Oh. He's looking sharp on the scout, showing he can do it with any scoped weapon. Uh, it looks like OG are going to get a third here, but they've lost some unthinkable rounds before. Oh, the timing. The timing, very good here. Next is going to crack Lackey. Spot him out. Now it's just one. It's Resalt. And they'll go to the A bomb site, realizing it is clear. They'll leap to the plant. Moto will confirm it. Aurora, do not find 12 immediately. A pulse stinker. A pulse certainly is spotted. Whether or not it can turn into life, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, still a uh, mountain to climb with lava pouring down the sides. And uh, yeah, they need, they need everyone. They need a fellowship to pull, the one <laughs> pull this one off. And the eagles and the Gandalf. Are they coming though, Denka? Are the eagles coming? We'll find out. It's one step at a time. It's been done before. It's not impossible. It is improbable, however. Highly. Highly, highly improbable. Well, the rifle will be safe for resalt. Now for Aurora, I'd imagine uh, a force coming in here. Because oh, never mind. Everything taken out. Lovely yeah, stuff. Yeah, but you still probably imagine a force. For yeah, Aurora. it's it's gonna be double eco. They should just go for the force here. Uh, and <laughs> considering yeah, the sort of rounds they won with the pistols, yeah, why the hell not? Clean shots, though. I mean, I, I don't necessarily blame Aurora for being aggressive there. Just some really good shots coming out from OG. Yeah, some great shots from them. In particular, Moto, who actually... I feel like he got hard done by in that first half. Like, the one round where they go into him, and he actually gets a chance to take them out at the start of the round, it's yeah. a round win. And then they avoid him for pretty much the rest of the half, just with perfect calls. Moto had to save a lot. Deco, oh. good start on the scout. That's Nexius dead early. Did you see Norway? I don't think so. Oh my god, it doesn't matter no because way. their eyes are getting plucked out of their heads by Deco. And the 5 7 is still close. OG down to three players. And this would be it. This would be Not the like towel being thrown in, wouldn't it? This Not would be like the this. tap out from OG. Three players left up against the five of Aurora Gaming. And Moto goes around that corner. Deco, they just keep feeding the beast. He's got another one on the scout. And he's sticking around. Deco finally dead to Heavy God. And it doesn't look like the Deco magic is going to be enough just yet because two players on either side and Heavy God's paranoid about a flank. They know that they don't have any possession of any control outside of B, so they could have pushed. And he would be correct in assuming that. Lackey is on the prowl. If they go back, if they go back to him, that will be devastating. Lackey's going to avoid them by going down connector, and they're going to be re-aggressing up long. 30 seconds. They know there's not Kenzie. any time to get back down to the B bomb site, Kenzie's and Kenzie's in. in such a sick position, but he moved out of it! He's seen them, and now he's been spotted! He needs to get around the corner, and he knows now he can position himself to delay. 20 seconds left. Fiku coming through the site. OG need this round, otherwise it's map and tournament point for Aurora. Fiku dives through the smoke. The 5-7 will be felled and Kenzie's gone. Lackey gets close. Now detected and seen towards the site. But it will not matter as Lackey's 
It may have a banana on it, but it ain't no banana gun. It is a finding success. And Aurora with the scouts and the pistols come beating through OG. And they are now at tournament point, championship point, And OG are on the brink of collapse. Oh, just off the top of the hell in the cell, Deco. That's There's no coming back from that. They're broken in half. Yeah. Shots from Deco. Three headshots with the scout. And in the end, you kind of feel Heavy God and Fiku have done enough. But Lackey, Lackey and his goddamn pistols, Deco. Every he single so time. Good. He's so good on the pistols. The fight sevens, Deagles, give him anything. He's going to get you a shot. And how many rounds like that of Aurora won in this tournament? We've seen them do it against so many of their victims. And OG, no different today in the best of five final. OG were the only team that were able to take a map off Aurora in this competition. Otherwise, it would have been flawless all the way through. Many had them as favorites starting off this tournament, including yourself, Blood. And Aurora have not disappointed. OG come to battle in possibly the last round of the entire competition. Galil's on three, AK's on two. And a not a lot of utility. So OG go to the area of the map that is often overlooked. It is often left open. And it's long. They'll get as close to the A-bomb site as they can. But eventually Aurora will have to consider it. They will have to address it. And they use utility to do so. Well, next is respected. They don't have the opportunity to do so. They don't have the luxury to wait out utility. They have to go. And Deco on the double. Finally dead. Moto and Fiku stepping up. But it's the heavy guard connector flank. That could keep OG fighting for just a little bit longer. They don't consider it. They aren't checking for Heavy God. But he's lost the chance for the immediate kill on Resalt. He hasn't <gasps> seen him. The timing is favored. Resalt to get into safety on the A-bomb oh site. Oh my god. Heavy God has to waste time checking bathrooms. But Resalt's got long. Moto's holding for it. Comes down to timing. Will he look the right way? He will. So Resalt's dead. And Lackey now with a 1v2 ahead of him. He knows where Moto is. He doesn't know where Heavy God is. But he can sure as hell guess. He can try and figure it out. And heads back into the safety of Bank. He'll make his way down the stairs looking to deposit away the championship here for Aurora. And it's Heavy God, the talisman, the star, the messiah for the side of OG. The bomb will be planted on default. Heavy God, now position confirmed. Lackey will hear those steps and to see a little bit of the Heavy God. And Aurora will come crashing down upon OG. Aurora are the champions of the Sky Esports Masters 2024. They take the Champions Cut at $350,000. From this matchup, from the Grand Slam to the Masters, Aurora able to take the win. Now the champions, Aurora, will take to their pedestals, floating, teleporting into the matchup in a Sky Esports Masters Champions here. Aurora, they've done so much. They've done so much to deserve this. The Counter-Strike they're playing is impressive. Deco in particular, moments of just all across the board in that second half. But overall, Aurora are a team de that deserve the championship. Oh, oh. A team that deserve the title of the Master Champions. Oh yeah, absolutely they do. I mean, the fact that they were... At, um, just the fact that they kept it so clean throughout this entire tournament. And despite the fact that, you know, on map number two, we saw that we saw that loss they suffered there. We saw an ancient how back and forth it was. When it comes to overpass, I did say the T-side is really good and it showed why how wide they are considered to be a force we reckon with on this very map and a 3-1 win losing just to one map which is again a very close affair uh there in the, in the second map right there i think just impressive stuff coming out from lackey from norway from all these guys on this team and again individually i look at this team and i'm like okay where is there any weak link i don't really think so they look like a team for me who are kind of hitting their ceiling when it comes to online counter-strike especially in the region and for me now it's the lands I want to see them on lands. I want to see them play against some of the, the top 15 teams on land and see what they have in store for yeah, us Yeah, definitely. I think Aurora have that future ahead of them, especially some of these individuals are, are just looking so good. I think Deco was really stand out for me. Uh, Kenzie actually steps up a huge way here on Overpass, despite having some uh, terrible maps by his own standard throughout that best of five. To show the mentality and the tenacity to stay in it, it's, uh, it's absolutely huge. It's really huge. But also, you know, commiserations to OG. I think they had an incredible,
incredible, uh, you know, a Cinderella esque run, fairy tale run coming from the lower bracket, right? They they lost their first game to Aurora, 2 0 fashion, pretty convincingly, and then they were able to take down Ents, they took down NIP, they took down Big, they took down Bedboom to kind of set up this revenge matchup. And it looked like for a moment it might have actually happened. You go back to the ancient round where it was like a 10 10 scenario, they go, they should have potentially gone for a save instead of go for the retake, and it spirals out of control. But this could have been a 2 2 situation, it could actually have been ending on Inferno, and from there on, we don't, we can't really tell which way it would have gone, but could have, would have, should have, you know, we don't, we can't really predict how, which parallel universe they could have won it on in the end. It was just not enough, but I think there are a lot of positives that can take away for OG here. Yeah, definitely a lot of positives. It's great to have Heavy God back in the server yeah. after some time away from officials. Um, I think, obviously, yeah, just gradually got better over the tournament, so I think for the future, Heavy God is always the truth. Up um, Moto for me as well. Yeah, he Moto, might not necessarily be the truth yet for me, but I've just been very impressed with what I've seen from this young opera, right? I don't think he necessarily had the opportunity to shine in the TSM lineup. I don't even know if they still have a lineup right now, but I think he's been a really good pickup for OG. And if I'm OG, I'm keeping him right now. I'm just trying to work around him. I think he's a, uh, if, if this heavy god, you know, next year is alongside Modo, a core can remain for OG and Keto can kind of take some time and, and just cook in a kitchen with the, with these ingredients. I think that could be, this could be an OG which I might keep an eye out on. Yeah, I think so as well. And, you know, looking for the future, this, uh, this OG roster, who knows if this is the exact sort of iteration of it. We, we don't really know. OG make a lot of roster moves uh, currently, trying to figure out, you know, what kind of future they want uh, from the team. And uh, But Modo, certainly a great piece added to the team. I think he looks better than what Regali was able to put on the yeah. server for OG, at least from the small sample size of this tournament. Oh, yeah, for sure. And, and I feel like... Uh, for the side of Moto as well, his stock's definitely on the rise, right? Yeah. Like, and obviously, because e even if he, again, he's just a standard player, you know, just temporarily playing for the side of OG, if I'm not mistaken. And even if OG don't wind up going with him and to go with someone else, he's definitely going to be feeling super, super, uh, and his stock's going to be very high. There's going to be a lot of teams keeping an eye on him. So hopefully, uh, a, a good future for not just the, uh, the org as a whole, but for the players as well. Yeah, for the players as a whole, but uh, obviously $70,000 go to the second place team. That's a decent chunk yeah, of change, man. Yeah, but uh, I think Aurora coming into the tournament, everyone, well, apart from me, <laughs> I think was the favorite. I mean, I call them as favorites. I don't know. Yeah, some people call me an expert. Yeah, yeah. but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's great to see Aurora kind of get through a lot of their opponents. He only dropped one map in the whole tournament. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty impressive. Sure, a lot of the big names are here, but they're all new rosters. The likes of NIP. It's a large organization, but players are very young and it's a new team. They have only put that concoction of players together recently. And yeah. I don't know what happened to them in this tournament. I don't know either. Uh, th for, for Aurora, I remember really uh, watching them and, and working an event which, which they were featuring, which was, I believe, the event in Belgrade after Sydney. Uh, I think it was uh, the Bed Boom. If, no, it wasn't Bed Boom. I think it, it was well. something else. Something else. It was a Relog Media event uh, actually uh, happening over in Belgrade. I remember when I was. Uh, Working there, I believe they reached the semifinals. It was very impressive with, with what they were showcasing there, and they've maintained this level of. They've been on the grind, by the way. So many games of Counter Strike being played as well, and they've been on the grind, and uh, they've been, you know, making super deep runs in yes, online cups, so to speak, but against a pretty solid opposition as well. And we saw here once more uh, winning this event. So I think it's time for this team to graduate to bigger lands. I'm going to be seeing the Challenger in Melbourne very soon. Um, not necessarily a very stacked event, so to speak, but I want to see more of the, the, this team on land, but. Uh, Nonetheless, you know, uh, it is what it is. Like, they're looking really good right now. Yeah, you know what's really looking good? Seeing Heavy got back in the server, and now we've got a chance to speak with him on the sidelines with Lucifer. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the post-game interview. And now we have the runners-up of Sky Esports Masters. Heavy got OG coming in. How does it feel, Heavy God? You had an insane lower bracket run. You beat all the teams, and it was like a dream full circle run coming through. I know it was not the result that you wanted, but you had an insane run and we loved watching OG playing like this. What do you feel about it? First of all, I think after our first loss, we did an insane run. Um, and we beat every team that came to us and we played really good tiers and we showed what we're capable of. Uh, we were lacking about a little bit of practice because I was ill. And mm -hmm, yeah. So we have a uh, model I'm standing in so it's not easy but we managed to do our best even though the hard uh, circumstances and I'm happy the way we did and to also a bit sad that we lost the final we really wanted to win it yeah but, uh, this is life 
I think uh, you're on the right direction. Even in the third map, you could see you were almost close. It could have come your way as well. In the second map, they were trying to bring it. You made sure that you closed it. So, how was that second and third map for you guys? Because it was so close. I mean, the maps were intensive and not easy. Like, the games were close, except the last map. Didn't really show up, but it's fine. Um, I think the matches were intensive and all the boys doing, give, doing and giving their best. And yeah, I think we really tried our best and I'm happy. I'm, I'm actually happy, but also sad, but I'm more happy because of the process. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Yeah, we hope everything is uh, all right and gets better as soon as possible for you as well and everybody around. And I also want to ask you, how does OG feel uh, playing in Sky Esports Masters? Everybody was looking up to you and there was a little doubt. And as you said, right, Modo coming in at the last moment. So as an overall pitcher, how do you feel that coming into and being a runner up and fighting with everybody till your last fight? I think overall it's, uh, it was an exciting tournament, I would say. We showed what we can, uh, what and how we can play, mm -hmm. and like nothing uh, is over yet because it's only the beginning for us. And yeah, it was really exciting playing Sky uh, Sky Spot, and uh, happy for the opportunity, and uh, appreciate it. And yeah, we hope we can see some more other events from you. We are. We've already announced the Masters in 2025. So how, you're excited for that. The next time we see OG, it's going to be a cup. Have you got lifting it? Maybe a land. Yeah, maybe. Hopefully. I really hope so. Looking forward to it. Uh, thank you so much, Heavy God, for coming again. Congratulations, runner-up, and an insane run that you guys had. Looking forward to seeing OG in a lot more Sky Sports tournaments. And maybe the next time you lift a trophy. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Heavy God. Great to hear from Heavy God, lovely yeah. guy, and uh, good to see that he's keeping his head uh, positive. You know, smiley and faces all. You around should all. You should always remain very, very positive yeah. because uh, for Heavy God, as you said, you know, it's, it's a team that just came together. Obviously, okay, I'm gonna stop this. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a team that just came together. Obviously, they're uh, yeah. just picked up Modo. They're trying to, you know, figure out how they want to work with. They haven't really had too many games in the showdown like a month ago, right? This is the mm -hmm. first tournament they're playing as well, so. All things considered, you show you can throw in a caveat that the teams, a lot of the teams they beat were teams who were also in flux, who were also trying to rebuild themselves, but so are they, right? So a lot of positives here. I think Nexus and Fiku look very solid. Heavy God, especially now that he's feeling a little bit better and they're practicing together, they're looking good as well. And Moto has just been a great find. So uh, for OG, a team that's been, it's been easy to criticize them. I've been one of them for a long, long time, you know, uh, but hopefully... Ho hopefully, once uh, you know things subside a little bit, they're able to stabilize things and the roster. It's a team that hopefully, as Heavy God said, you know they should be hopefully picking up a land. Yeah, well, everything is kind of done with here at Sky Esports yeah. Masters. We've got through a best of five, and we've had a lot of fun along the way, Blair. What was your um, what was your main takeaways from the event? Um, I, I think just, you know, overall, uh, you know, a little unfortunate that we couldn't have this one in land was supposed to happen in Mumbai, but due to the external circumstances, it, it didn't really uh, transpire. But overall, just love the fact that, you know, we have more Counter-Strike 2 events happening, especially for me, being based out of India as well, uh, you know, having a local TO from, from my own place, you know, actually trying to do events uh, for a lot of a larger scale, so to speak. They had a land a, couple, a month ago as well. This was supposed to be a land which didn't unfortunately pan out. We just had an announcement of the Masters happening next year as well, and a few more events lined up for this year. So for me, uh, just the fact that everything ran smooth, the games happened, it was, it was a good time this year with you. You know, we made it through. That's a great thing. That's a, that's a net we positive. And also for the Counter Strike overall, uh, it was cool to see this kind of like the this rebuild of OG right and of course Aurora is showing that okay now we're ready we're, we're ready we, we're ruling the online scene right now let's play, some, let's play a few lands no. what about you my takeaway from the event is it don't is have salads to see, yeah don't have salads that's yeah. one of them but yeah well you do get a little food poisoning with that yeah but um the, the other takeaway is just the fact you know it is great to see Sky Sports Masters running an event of this scale and having more eyes of the world on the tournament because we got to work the Masters last year right in 2023 yes and uh, we, we now get to do it in 2024 but the level of teams is a lot higher way higher than last viewerships time. higher etc cetera, etc cetera. so it's all just positive moving in the right direction and heading into an open circuit in 2025 it's going to be very exciting, especially heading into that Masters tournament in summer and obviously the rest of the calendar tour that we've and, got this year. And, and I feel the one thing which you missed out in, in CSGO was just by the name Global, you know, Global Offensive. It was never really truly global as much as we wanted it to be when it comes to 
the esports side of things, right? If you look at what was happening, I am Chengdu. Like, imagine it's two big events happening simultaneously, one all the way in China and one over here, even though it is an online event happening here in India. So I think it's good for global Counter-Strike yeah. overall. You know what's great as well? Aurora taking the championship, and we get to hear their thoughts on what the, mean, the win means to them with Sam on the sidelines. Welcome back everybody to the post game interview. We have the champions with us, Aurora's Novi. How are you feeling? The champion two time from Sky Esports. Uh, feeling really good. Team played good today. We won tournament. I think Aurora has been in a very good form and everybody's been discussing about this Aurora lineup. Uh, so what do you want to tell to everybody who's watching you and now that you're winning titles a lot frequent and everybody is looking forward to seeing you a lot in LAN as well. Thank you for watching, for some support, for criticism, for everything. So, we're just trying our best. So, looking forward to play some LAN. We are looking forward to you and uh, we have also announced the Masters 2025. You were here in India once, you won the trophy on land, defeating an Indian team. This time you've defeated OG, a team a lot of people loved, a lot of fans, and you won against them. So there's going to be a lot of fans now that would have liked Aurora and now coming to 2025 Masters. How excited are you for that? Who, which teams and all would you want to see there? Uh, are we getting invited there already? already? I'm sorry? Uh, are we invited there already? This is or, Masters 24. Uh, no, for 25 I'm saying. Ah. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. I think I hope some tier 1 teams. Uh, maybe on one. Mm -hmm. uh, so just looking forward. Awesome. And now there's one question that our team did want to ask you. Uh, what other hair colors could we see coming in from you for the next event? Oh, I don't know. My teammates are... So shy. They're afraid to color their hairs right now. Oh, so... okay. Okay, yeah, <laughs> but let's see. One thing now I want to ask you, what's going to be your post-game celebration now that you have become a champion Sky Sports Masters, a major share of 350,000 US dollars. What's the plan like after this now? I don't think I can say the truth because we are planning, you know, to drink some tea together as mm -hmm. a team because we are a professional. We yes. can celebrate, we have tournament forward, so that's all. I think we're going to meet together as a team, drink some tea, that's all. I think um, keep sipping tea. Let's look forward to seeing you in a lot more tournaments, winning a lot more titles. Congratulations once again, Norvi, for becoming a two-time Sky Esports Masters Champions. Let's see what more we're going to be seeing you from, especially with Masters 2024 announced. Thank you and congratulations once again. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Ah, oh, the tea. I the love tea. tea. I yeah. love tea. Well, well, cheers. Yeah, but, masala but, chai. There yeah, because you, you know. Clink. Clink. There oh, we go. One I expect. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. It's uh. I'm not gonna drink mm, the tea. We'll save tea. that until later. Lovely. Oh, how's the tea taste? It, tea tastes, burn? it tastes like victory. It tastes like victory. Yeah. Wow. Great to see a Royal Tech Championship, Norby. I mean, jokes aside, like, you know, uh, for Norby, obviously, you know, he, he's happy as well. I, it was kind of cute when it was like, are we invited for the next one? I think they should be invited. They're, they're at the Champions. They're, they're already the champions qualified. Spot, yeah, right? exactly. So, so uh, I mean, dude, like, the uh, a massive chunk of 350k, they should 100% be buying some tea. premium tea. Premium tea, having a good time with premium tea. Well, we'll take a look at who the MVP was. It's going to be Deco, presented by One Expert. Yeah, he was looking all, like almost unplayable, even at times when we saw uh, Modo starting to wake up with the AWP. Deco was able to counter him with his op as well. Not something we see that often, right? Op to op, head to head deal, so to mm. speak. But he was coming out on top. He was looking almost unplayable. And yeah, just another piece of this uh, of this of this ba bastion that is aurora gaming because earlier on you look at his team you're like okay deco's a standard player now you look at everyone everyone's chipping and everyone looking good it's a five-headed hydra and they're coming for you yeah so we'll probably get to see some deco highlights here too i'm sure uh relive some of the action from the series deco definitely the the standout on overpass uh, and obviously for the future he's one of the players that people talk about a lot who maybe hasn't broken through that tier one level just yet but a 13-3 victory on that final map aurora couldn't have done any better really and uh deco top mid charts kenzie in behind him and uh the players are too shy to get the hair dyed blow why i don't know he's too shy right now 
Maybe uh, some confidence will build up the more they win tournaments, and maybe some tea. And maybe some tea, absolutely. And uh, yeah, I do. I do miss the uh, the Rainbow Brigade from Aurora. I particularly like it because it really pisses off Kassad. That's my favorite. Kassad was so <laughs> mad. He's like, "Why are they coloring their hair? Yeah. That's how our men do." I'm like, "With Kassad, they're boys." Yeah, Kassad's just jealous. There's no hair to color. Ex exactly. They could do the beard. That could be pretty cool. Huh? <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen, listen. I think we'll land on on Saturn before Kassad. Dies his beard or <laughs> dies anything about him. Yeah, well, maybe on his birthday, he yeah. doesn't celebrate that. Uh, we'll celebrate. take a look at uh, the map pick distribution of, of the, tournament. the tournament. A lot of ancients, we saw this ancient Anubis, like over 50%. Yeah. That's kind of nuts. Yeah, Nuke not being played, that's sad. Yeah, Nuke and Inferno, I think we played just a couple of times or once. I memory doesn't. Yeah, I think uh, twice. Vertigo, I think, was OG picking it every single time. A bit more of overpass, but honestly, I can't complain with this. I would have liked to see a little bit more Nuke, but, you know, Ancient Anubis, I enjoy watching it. Yeah, Ancient's very popular here in this tournament and probably for the future as well. Puggy Maps, we had a lot of new teams coming in here, probably trying to keep it simple. And a comfort ground of Ancient Anubis is there for a lot of teams. We just see an overpass play out at the end of this best of five. But that's what we got. Nice to see the map distribution at the end of the tournament. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice uh, nice look at how, you know, or rather which maps teams like playing. And this heads into that entire discussion when it comes to Ancient, where like a lot of teams are way more comfortable with Ancient yeah. as, a, as a decider or whatnot. Well, the other exciting thing is we got that 2025 Summer Sky Esports Masters. And they're yeah. going to be trying to get that one on man. I'm sure they absolutely will pull it off that time. And uh, exciting times for Sky Esports Masters. You mentioned what it means, you know, to have another TO operating in your home country. And obviously, it's great to have more players in the field. 2025 is going to be a, an action-packed year of Counter-Strike. Yeah, we, we, I, was touching upon the, I was touching upon the entire, you know, the, the global aspect of Counter-Strike and how today we had, you know, an event being run out of, out of India over here. And we had IM Chengdu happening over in Shanghai. And as... Uh, considering it's going to be the open, you know, open uh, season, so to speak, next year, literally an open season next year, it's going to be an interesting time for Counter Strike because we have all the big players, we have Sky yeah. Esports, we have events happening all over the world, and while it might be called Counter Strike 2, Dinko, it could truly be global now. Well, it's been a pleasure here. But once we survived again, in India. We made it through a yeah. tournament here at Sky Esports Masters, the longest, the most prestigious, and the largest prize pool yet. It's all powered by AMD, and of course, thank you to 1xBat, and thank you to you guys at home who spent the last week watching all the Counter Strike action. And we bid you a jewel. We'll see you next time for the Sky Esports Masters.
one thing remains the same. Victories with one x bet.
Look.